where's the giant man's Lee? <laughs> Hello, I everybody. Stay. Hello. How's it going? We are here to play a very fun game of golf with our our dear friend Salty DK Daniel. Hello. How's it going? It's going. Life is life, and there's so much strife, but we cringe on. That's so true. <laughs> and Perseverance Austin, is a virtue. Austin, would yeah. you would you like to would you like to tell everybody from where you were recording? Oh yeah, from uh, to quote myself, uh, circa one hour ago, uh, my layer of asbestos and concrete. So. For those of you in chat who don't know, but most of you should by now, uh, me and Marcy share an office together because we live in the same house and we're poor. So, uh, <laughs> if we didn't want the stream to sound completely like terrible and have us like both echo off of each other, we had to find out a solution of where I was going to be going for this stream. And the only option that we really had, if I didn't want to break out my... 2012 Toshiba laptop that still has Windows 8.5 on it was to go to a friend's house. Uh, but his house is in the middle of being renovated uh, right now. And uh, like this has been going on for several months and uh, basically every room in this place is a hovel. <laughs> and uh, right now I'm like shirt and socks off sweating it out uh and i'm gonna send this in general up uh, i need you to put this on screen Th this is my like r slash male living space set up oh right now my god okay. that is hold so on. amazing this holy is, crap this is terrifying okay hold on hold on let me let me save this picture uh okay yeah I'll save it there all right chat <laughs> put this to the screen. <laughs> Where? Oh no, no, no! I grabbed the wrong asset. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Look, chat. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. Caught up in yeah, my gamer it, hole. It is. I, I think I think the coolest part is that the monitor is like on top of the PC yeah. setup. You've got like yeah. one of those curved keyboards. Yeah, thankfully it's wireless because like uh, I'm already entangled like at the legs. Like I can't move my body very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this this is wonderful. Um. So, uh, before we start also, do we do we want to give some backstory on these Steam nicknames? Yeah, I want to hear Salty's, like, just, like, general, like, background with Pair of Kings real quick. Okay, so, uh, basically my Steam name is Mitchell Musso, uh, and it's been like that since, I think, like, 2017, and it's because Mitchell Musso, well-known Disney TV, uh, Disney TV actor... Uh, he starred in a hit series, Hannah Montana, but the way that I really followed his work was through the series A Pair of Kings on Disney XD. The first two seasons, I think, were peak, but then he got into a drunk driving uh, thing, and then he got fired from his own show. Uh, as all and, Disney Channel stars do. As all Disney Channel stars do. <laughs> and the thing is, is that the whole purpose of the show was that it was about a pair of twins who were kings, but the show was doing really well. So Mitchell Musso got fired, which begs the question, well, it's called Pair of Kings. Mitchell Musso was a part of the Pair of Kings. He was one of the twins. So what are they supposed to do for the third season? What they decided to do was they got uh, other actor, Adam Hicks, to be a third brother and had Mitchell Musso's <laughs> character written off of the show <laughs> by just leaving off screen. So then it's not pair of kings, it's more like triplet of kings, but there's still only two kings because Mitchell Musso's character's character was gone. And then the show just kind of like plummeted downhill after that because I hate Adam Hicks. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, uh, I 
I need to rewatch that show because I haven't seen it in like ages. But yeah, I really like Pair of Kings. Yeah, you it, should, it uh... used to be a pretty fundamental part of my personality early on YouTube, and I just kind of just it just died off because nobody cared. You should uh, you should make the long form video essay about the downfall of Pair of Kings. I, uh, Marcy, legitimately, it, it we 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 just talked about this off stream. <laughs> the way that I was like, the way that I was like, I'm so done with big projects yeah. after I finish up but, my current stuff. But. However, <laughs> for Pair of Kings, anything's possible. How, but because nobody else is gonna make that video, like, of course, there's gonna be people out there making like, what happened to iCarly five hour essay? Like, right, right. People are gonna watch that because they like iCarly. Who the hell is going to watch a Pair of Kings eight hour deep dive analysis? And and, and downfall <laughs> like what that's just gonna be for me that's just gonna be my thing so if i ever get the time yes i will i will make that essay and it will be amazing and it'll get all three views from all four pair of kings yeah. fans the fourth one's not gonna watch it because they aged out of it <laughs> they were more of a crash and burn steam guy yeah oh man don't even get me started but yeah go go on your go on your thing i don't want to completely derail and on Disney XD <laughs> TV shows. We, we, we can talk more about Pair of Kings during the game. Oh, oh I'm please. sure we will. Oh, please. I can drop some fat lore. <laughs> um, My name is No Mickey Mouse Stuff, and there's, there's not, like, a grand reason as to why. Me and Marcy were just, like, hobbling over to the Publix the other day to get food, and Marcy told me this story about her childhood where, like, one of her teachers, uh basically just like used the phrase no mickey mouse stuff which is you know like no playing no fooling uh and for some reason it just made me like real giddy like tickled pink and i just kept saying it on and off throughout the day like you would hear me like walking into the kitchen just like muttering to myself like jack nicholson from the shining like <laughs> no mickey mouse stuff <laughs> <laughs> like i'm telling my like i'm telling myself to keep it together <laughs> it became my mantra, and then we remembered that uh, the uh, hit hit room writer, director, actor Tommy Wiseau uh, constantly used that phrase on set to all of his uh, underlings before like torching them and telling them to go uh, do his dark bidding. So uh, I just combined uh, both of the uh, both of the stories into one singular powerful icon, and now here we are. Uh, I, I believe this might have, I, d I don't remember if it was the same teacher or not, but I do remember telling you about another teacher that I had that, uh, got really mad at us for whispering and laughing to each other and, uh, and like pointed very dramatically at me and said, and this bozo over here, <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, was also really funny, <laughs> but, uh, it's yeah. Oh, sorry. Some some teachers are just really, really funny individuals on complete accident. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I've had some characters in my time. Uh, I told Marcy about this one teacher I had in middle school. His name is Mr. McGonagall, and he looked like Harrison Ford, but if he had, like, all the water sucked out of him, <laughs> like, all the water sucked out of his body. And uh, he had written rules uh, that, like, you had to write down if, you like stepped out of line and it was like one through five with five being the longest and i don't remember what any of them were but i do remember that number three was the biggest infraction so if you were like caught like slouching in class or whatever he'd like throw a piece of chalk at you and go like number three five times and then he would oh double it every single time you like back sassed him or did anything wrong some kids had to turn in like 70 page papers of number three, five oh times. God. Jesus. All right, so I'm gonna yeah. hit practice so that we can uh, <laughs> yeah. get a little bit of a, yeah. a hang yeah. on what we're doing here. Oh wait, I, I'm getting practice. Are you also getting practice? I need practice, yeah. Okay, let's do a little okay, practice Okay, I run. guess you have to do it individually. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know we had to do it individually. Burger. Okay. It's uh, the little, the little My no burger. Hold on, I'm taking vitamin D3 <gasps> pills. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay yeah, yeah, you Yeah, go. yeah, I I have a little I have a little uh, propeller hat. Um So uh, I'm a little bit of a dweeb. Yeah, so yeah, click and drag. Okay. Yeah, we, okay. we'll just there's there's no pressure to perform well here. We're just getting the we're just getting the hang of it. Uh but I want to win though. I want to beat you. 
In in practice? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> God damn it, no. <laughs> See, you're losing. You're, you're you're losing your cool. I'm already Oh my god, dude. <laughs> this is this is already boating super well for me. Oh, I just got a hole in three, let's go. Alright, alright, alright. We're Okay, I, I think I already understand the game. This is pretty fun already. Man, I love mini golf games so much. I am gonna take so long to catch up with you guys. Okay. Hold don't worry about it, chat. Don't worry. We're making it. This is happening. What do you mean? I'm already lost. <laughs> Famous Sonic quote, this is happening. This is happening. Uh oh my god. Okay, fine. There. Okay, we're we're good. We're good. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. Uh also what uh what are what are, what are people saying in the chat? Um Uninspired name. I imagine Nesmi can see us unless chat specifically is being shared to the other two. Yeah, I can I can see you guys. Um I'm gonna grab this app. Yeah. Probably a good idea. I've got my phone uh like saddled up next to me in this barren plug. <laughs> Hi, hello oh, Nesmi. Uh... I've been a big fan of your work ever since Halloween Undertale video. I've always enjoyed your content. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Salty. Thank you. Oh yeah, Marcy, I'm also a big fan. <laughs> oh wow, really? Yeah, I like watching your videos. They make my brain tingle in wow, like a good way. Thanks. Yeah, Le legitimately, like I feel like this, this, this definitely take this as a high point of praise. I have had your videos playing while I have been like driving, obviously not oh watching, oh, but well, like yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> I just like listening and like like because you know a, a lot of uh, you know given that video essay content is mm. a lot of like talking mainly. Uh, I've done that. I've listened while I've been driving, while I've been grocery shopping, and it's always been uh, a very big help for my uh, shitty ass attention span. Aw, I'm so I'm so glad. Yes. All right. Good uh, shit. I think we can probably go ahead and just start the actual game now. Yes. And Let's I get also it on. have the chat now, so I'm cool. Okay, cool. Let's go. A space station. A space station. I did set it to random, so. Whoa, oh my god. Yeah, some of these maps can get a little crazy sometimes. Okay. Alright. Is it one at a time or are we just all No we just oh, we, we just go. We we're just we're free balling it. Shit. Oh, okay. That was oh, not okay. enough well, pressure. Hole in one! Wait for the, the ramp. Okay, okay. Oh. Uh oh, oh I got par. Oh. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm about there. Frothia. There we go, bogey. Pulling a Mitchell Musso with the video essay and driving. Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah, that's actually, that, that was the real reason he got fired from Pair of Kings. Yeah. He was watching a sweet H Bomber guy video. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? <laughs> uh, is it the James Somerton video? <laughs> yeah, it's the James Somerton video. Good video. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is literally Super Mario Galaxy Golf. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Birdie, which one? Uh, try, try again. Also, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that it's enabled right now. Um, while you're like moving, if you hit the left mouse click, uh, you also do like a little hop. Oh. oh. I forgot about that. It's good to know. Okay. I'm gonna I get sucked into the tube. Did not go strong enough. Yeah! There we go. I love this game! <laughs> Getting sucked oh, through Oh yeah, you did pretty good. Yeah, I'm kind of like the king of golf. Yeah, you know, if you think about it. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So it's down there. I wonder if I can just... Dang it! Oh, oh, so oh, close! Oh. Uh, it's all to this one. Fuck. Man. No. Never mind. It did not bump you. I have like severe lag, <laughs> but it's fine. 
the idea of lag in a game, in a game of golf. golf. Game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was not okay. I see. Okay. We ball. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dang it! No, I totally checked that hit. No, no. Oh. No. <laughs> Damn it! That did nothing to you. <laughs> I yes. tried to smack it to you to see what would happen, and uh, nothing happened. No, like, like I tried doing that with Salty like two rounds ago, and it just didn't do anything. Yo, shout out to this game for letting you customize your ball and give it stupid hats. No, that true. is, like, awesome. I love that. Like, really goofy with it. <laughs> Grifter's Bones, I keep hitting pedestrians because I'm too focused on watching the Quinn review his iCarly dissertation. <laughs> Oh. oh, okay. I thought okay. I was supposed to go across those. No. The oh. toxic sludge is a part of the game. Oh. Uh, Alright. Huh. Interesting. Oh, no. No, I went too far. I may have gone too far in a few places. <laughs> okay. Try, try it again. Okay. That, no, that was too this strong. Is, this is not working out for me. Yeah, where are you? I'm I'm still trying to go up, like, the green hill zone oh, okay. ramp. okay, I see. I see you now. <laughs> spectator has a, a... Spectator mode has a free cam option, and it's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's right. Help! <laughs> <laughs> Dude. It's, it's like Gmod. Hold on, I, let, me, let me look at Okay. That. Oh yeah, you can li you're literally just like roaming around the course like a little guy. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I did it. Now you just get, get, get it the No, hole. I didn't. <laughs> no. The lid. Stop, the stop lid. laughing at me in text chat. Mmm, <laughs> 12 strokes. I don't think you can... I don't think you can legally have 12 strokes. Okay, I can assume how oh. this works. Oh my god, yeah. Yep. Oh. No way! No way! Oh my god! Did you just hole get a hole-in-one? I got a hole-in-one! <laughs> oh my god! What? That's insane. Come on. Oh, I'm just getting fuck. thrown around in the torture labyrinth. Oh, I, I guess the hop isn't on because it did not do the hop when I tried to. Okay, okay. No. Escape the gravitational pull, please. Okay. Also, uh, so like... somebody in chat made a joke about the uh, officer pulling me over. Me like, oh, but you have to understand the character depth of William Afton in the FNAF movie. Um... So now I'm wondering, uh, I mean, obviously, I know what you think, Austin. Uh, what do you think about the FNAF movie, Salty? Um, I'm kind of mixed on it. I'm excited that I got a movie. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, however, I thought the movie was kind of eh. Mm -hmm. Like, I just felt like, I don't know, it... A lot of people were like, oh, I'm glad that it had it's such a focus on story. And I'm like, were you? Because the story was kind of like crap <laughs> i mean it, it really kind of <sighs> there's a lot that i like about it though i, I yeah. won't lie like i'm i'm not a complete cynic right i i think honestly like for what it was like personally i think oh jesus uh i think the story was like okay but i think it was oh my the, god i think the number one problem with the story as it is is that it's just way too long for what it is I agree. Like, the pacing I, is way off. Yeah, I'm gonna be I honest, really for, for, like, I I like FNAF lore, I think, I think it's interesting. However, I kind of wish that the first FNAF movie was a little bit lighter on story and more just about the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Because I think they did that pretty well, for the most part. I just think they could have went a little bit harder with the scares and stuff, because the first Five Nights at Freddy's movie is... Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's game is more focused on that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and I, I wish, like, that... 
this was like easier to say without people just being like, oh, you just want the whole movie to be watching cameras then? Like, no, of course not, obviously. Yeah, of course not, yeah. Wow, you were you were having a tough time of it. I was Yeah, too. no. Like, don't don't get me wrong, when I was watching that movie, I, I won't lie, even though I have complaints about it, I was like, wow, this really is like a Five Nights at Freddy's movie reel. Hmm. Like, so I was just, excited. Like, it's just fun to sit there and watch, like, even if it's not good. Yeah, which I can't really say about the Mario movie. I don't really like the Mario movie. Yeah, uh, I I thought it was more okay the first time that I saw it, and I was like, oh, I can ex like I can accept the reasons why they did this, but every time I see it afterwards, I sour on it a little more. I mean, like, it, people hate when I say this, but I, I didn't even finish the movie. <laughs> wow, really? I got halfway through, and I was like, okay, this isn't for me. <laughs> wow, this one is uh, kind of a kick in the dick, honestly. Yeah, no, I can't make this, uh, this, like, I almost said, I almost said rim job, I meant rim shot. <laughs> yeah, I think those are very different <laughs> things. Not the way I do them. <laughs> I, I will not ask you to elaborate. No. I, I also just in general, like, when it comes to, like, media and stuff that I'm not fond of, I've kind of come to recognize that, like, Sometimes things hit me differently at different times in my life. That's mm -hmm. true. Like, uh, uh, for example, Persona Five, which I'm in the middle, oh. in the midst of playing. Uh, when I first tried it, I was like, "Eh, it's not really hitting for me." And then I came back to it recently, and I was like, "Oh no, I can see why people like this." Yeah, yeah like yeah. I, I definitely want to play more. Uh, same with like Yakuza, where it didn't click with me like a couple of years ago, and then I started playing it again recently, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. I love this. I still need to play Yakuza. Wow, ran out of shots. <laughs> they were they were literally like, uh, just just stop. Yeah. Just stop trying. For all of our <laughs> sakes. Like, like every everybody in my friend group currently is like, uh, getting into Yakuza at like the same time. Uh, and all starting on like different games. Like I, I started on oh, zero. That's yeah. Uh, and a friend of mine is a uh, friend of mine. Gerber is starting on a uh, Yakuza seven. And we're both just kind of talking about like all of the different things that we're experiencing and like kind of getting us all excited about playing each other's games. It was very, very wholesome. 100. Let's let's go. Oh, the Canadian $2 from Elster with just the eyebrow raise and camera emojis. <laughs> Look, I said what I said. I'm not going to take it back. On principle. Okay. I have too much pride for that. <laughs> Galaxy does. Okay, so a guy beats up thugs in the street. I is, wish I could get into true? games. Oh, no, that's... Uh, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, to the person that said I wish I could get into games, but I lack the budget, uh, I... Suggestion... Uh, oh, so two, two things. Uh, one, I'm sure you probably mean, like, more modern games, but, like, if you really want to, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm playing through, like, some of the Dragon Quest games for the first time, and I'm, uh, playing them through sources. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna turn down the alert noise real quick, actually, because that was loud as hell. But I, I'd suggest you know, emulation isn't bad. Emulation's kind of epic. True. So if you don't have the budget, like, there's a lot of really great games that I'm sure you probably haven't checked out. Like, like again, I'm playing through Dragon Quest, uh, for the first time. And the first Dragon Quest specifically, and it's a bit archaic, but I am really liking it. So actually, uh, that reminds me, because this has been sort of a relevant subject recently, uh, what do you both think of the whole Yuzu Citrus situation? It's it's one of those things where I keep hearing kind of like conflicting and in, uh, conflicting information about it. Mm -hmm. Where like there are there are aspects of both sides that I can kind of understand. Like yeah. I think a big reason why they're going after it is because. 
one, it's an emulation thing of like their most recent console, and two, uh, like uh, apparently they were putting stuff on Patreon for it, and that's a little mm. bit yeah, eh. it's a little dicey. Yeah, because like on one hand, I'm very pro emulation, but on the other hand, like it's a it's a slippery slope sometimes. So you have to kind of there there's a lot of room of like debate, I which I understand, but in that situation, it's kind of like. Yeah, it sucks, but also, like, it's not like it's been wiped off the internet. Like, people can still very easily access it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, So honestly, I'm not really that, that angry. The worst part of the whole situation for me was the loss of uh, Citrus in particular. Um, oh, yeah. Because that's, like, as far as I understand, that's, like, really the only dedicated 3DS emulator out there, right? Yeah, currently. I think that there are a couple, but the thing is, is that they they don't really, uh, they don't perform as well as Citra, at least. Oh, yeah, it was Citra, right. I don't know why I kept saying Citrus. No, but I do agree with that. At the very least, like, like I said, like, uh, while active support will go down, uh, it's not like the emulator itself is, like, like, completely vanished. Mm -hmm. Like, there are still ways to get it. It's just a little bit less accessible than it was. Wow. As long as something's accessible, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I finally made it to a point where I actually got to stay where I was. <laughs> uh, although now I... Oh, okay, it's... Wait, where am I going? Okay, over here. I, I, will, I will say, though, gosh dang, uh, 3DSs are so fun to mod true and it's easy too it is very easy like they they have multiple like like things that you can follow to mod your 3ds online and it's great okay, okay. i've i've modded three different 3ds's already uh one was mine and two of my friends oh so you just like modded theirs for like the hell of it yeah because i was just like i i just got really interested in like uh one one of my side hobbies, especially recently, has been like really getting into like emulation and and figuring out how to mod stuff, and that was kind of like my thing for a bit was like 3ds stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do it as much now because you know, like, uh, you can only mod so many 3ds's before it starts to lose <laughs> lose interest. But there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do and games that you can get with a modded 3ds that I think is very cool. Um, I have, uh, I haven't modded a console in a while. Uh, I do have a Switch that is capable of some things, let's say. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you leave I, it on for, like, eternity. Well, yeah, that's the thing, like, I mean, basically, like, to boot it into the mode that you have to use for all that, like... It, it, it's like a whole process. Uh, so, whenever you turn the system completely off, it just boots into the regular mode. Oh. Uh, so it's like, and you have to do all that stuff over again. So it's like, it's it's not really that bad. It's just tedious. So like most of the time, uh, I just yeah. leave it on a charger because I'm like, I don't want to do all that shit all over again. <laughs> Some something I got super into. Uh, you actually reminded me. I, I really gotta. I really gotta mod my Nintendo Wii U because I have oh, not yeah. done that yet, and I feel like that you could probably do a lot of cool stuff with. Um, but I, I recently got into like emulation handheld things, like you know those little like handhelds that you can buy that yeah, you can like, yeah. mod and stuff. Uh, I got what, what was it called? Like the Retroid Pocket Three Plus. I've been like using the shit out of. I've been uh I've been seeing those around. Uh, how do you think they compare to something like a Steam Deck? Uh, it's definitely not as powerful as the Steam Deck, like whatsoever. Uh, it, like, it can struggle to run like PS2 and and mm. GameCube games. Like that that's the point in which it really struggles is those sorts of games. However, uh, it's really good for retro stuff. Mm -hmm. So like anything like NES to like PS1 uh is is really good. Uh 
And something cool that I found out is like there's that I don't I don't know how widespread it is yet or anything because I only recently got into it. But there's that retro achievements website where like you can hook it up to your emulator of choice and like you can track like achievements in each game that you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that stupid website. It's so good. <laughs> I actually now that I think about it, I had uh, back in the day. Um, this was like my first sort of experience with. Uh, like modding and stuff like this was uh, my brother gave me a flash cart for my original DS, like the clamshell gray DS. And um, and I used to like both get like actual regular DS games, but like a lot of people were making homebrew stuff for DS and uh, somebody made a Genesis emulator for DS. Oh my god! Yes! No, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it was surprisingly good. Yeah, like, the pick- I- I- if it's the one that I think you're talking about, because I also messed with that when I was younger, uh, because I also got my hands on a flash cart, uh, but yeah, no, it, like, the picture quality was really good, except for the fact that, like, obviously, uh, it cut off a little yes. bit of the screen so you, you could to, like, scroll left or right mm -hmm. if you, you kind of had to. to drag it a little bit that's how i played a bunch of like sonic rom hacks was through that <laughs> oh yeah I, i'm actually kind of surprised that i never did that now that i think about it uh i honestly just used it to play like like ristar and uh dynamite heady i think i've never really played ristar is it good it's pretty good uh there are some uh, as with a lot of Genesis games from back then, there are some regional differences, though, uh, particularly in, like, some boss designs and difficulty. Ah, okay. So, like, you know, it, you'll probably have a little bit less of a painful experience if you play the original Japanese release, but... Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this whole conversation is really fascinating to me just because, uh, I, I think out of the three of us i am the least gamer here like i honestly don't play video games very often and i'm very emulation illiterate like i know jack dick about anything to do with that so like it's basically just like techno jargon but like i'm interested i, I i'm curious about it like because i like when i was younger like i always heard about like it's not the same thing, but, like, jailbroken, like, iPhones and stuff. And I was always put under the impression that, like, if you do that, like, Steve Jobs, uh, pre-death, would come to your house and, like, tape your asshole oh, oh, yeah. shut. <laughs> yeah, I... 100% when I was a kid, I, I I got so scared about stuff like that. I'm like... I, yeah. I, I saw, like, a kid, like, I think, like elementary school or middle school being like oh yeah no i got my jailbroken iphone i play game boy games and i'm like dude that's so cool but like aren't they gonna arrest you <laughs> yeah like aren't you aren't, aren't you going into alcatraz for that like right now though <laughs> i i do remember like we we also have uh, another roommate um who did not know uh, about um how people got their Wii's bricked back in the day. And that's uh, still, like, so crazy to me. They can just, like, be like, no, your console is... It, it does not <laughs> exist now. Go buy another one. No, they're, like, still doing that, like, yeah, with like, with Switches. switches. Yeah. To this day, like, our other mutual friend, who is, funnily enough, also named Austin, like, just had that happen to their Switch, and she wasn't even, like modding it or anything like she was just like fucking around with something on pokemon and they just decided no and just like basically deleted her entire oh, like sucks. fucking hard drive in one fell swoop that sucks oh my god yeah i i get so paranoid about that kind of stuff like whenever i use uh the switch for anything like that i always uh just like turn it on airplane mode essentially Oh my god, Because yeah. I do not want uh, Nintendo's servers to be like, Hey, um, wh what, are you, what are you doing over there? What are you doing over there, bud? <laughs> are you trying to endanger the multi-billion dollar corporation who does not want to sell their own products back to you? 
the the multi billion dollar corporation is so threatened by the fact that I use my my hacked switch specifically to play an English patch of a Japanese game that I own, and that's it. Oh, uh, I wanted to share this. Uh, I I said earlier that I was getting really into like those like emulation handhelds. I currently have three different ones. One of them uh, I got as <laughs> funnily enough as like a Christmas gift. Uh, somebody got me. It's like a little like keychain thing. Mm. It's literally the size of my car keys, uh, and it. I think it's called like the RG Nano or something. It kind of looks like a little tiny Game Boy Color, and you can put like like NES, like everything up to like I think PlayStation One on it, which is pretty oh, yeah. crazy. Uh, and it runs really well. Like I'm I'm actually shocked, but it's so small that like. You literally, you you can only use like one hand on it. If you put both thumbs on it, like it gets really crowded really fast. <laughs> but one of the reasons that I really wanted to get my hands on it is because I, I found out it had a video player and I was like, can I compress all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure oh onto God. this? And fun fact, yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say... Gaming machine. <laughs> When you yeah, say I, all of it, do you mean all of it? Yes. Every episode. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> I, uh... So initially, when I when I put the episodes on, like, they, they, run, they ran like shit, and I realized, oh no, that's because of the fact that they're, like, 1080p episodes, obviously. It's not gonna run on this thing without problems. So I compressed all of them down to, like, 240p <laughs> they look like they're running on like the yeah. Game Boy Advance video player and the but you know what it works it that, works that kind of has some I, charm to it actually I'm not gonna it, lie it does yeah I it's one of those things where I'm already so used to that sort of format that I'm like okay you know what yeah the I god uh did you like have any of the Game Boy player like cards back in the day absolutely because I had like oh, yeah. a Sonic X one and a SpongeBob one, I believe. Yeah, I mostly rocked SpongeBob ones. Uh, I think I had Shrek too, and it's really impressive that they were able to get like that entire fucking movie onto like the Game Boy at the time. Like as a kid, yeah. I was like, I was really like wowed by it. Yeah, no, seriously, I agree. That's crazy. Uh, a friend of mine randomly, a friend of mine who I who at the time. I had not talked to for like a year randomly dm'd me a, a gba file on discord and was like you should load this up into an emulator and i'm like okay and i put it in and they like i don't know if it was them or a friend of theirs but they compressed all of evangelion on a <laughs> game boy advance video <laughs> and i was like how <laughs> it, it was like four separate files obviously it was a lot but i was like how did you how why though why not that's true at this point like when it comes to any project i'm just like why but also why not yeah yeah like the novelty of things is just way too fun to me uh elster with the five canadian dollars how dare you try to play an old game without giving away your organs to buy it or purchasing a shitty remake uh yeah true uh you know, you know what game that's relevant to? Silent Hill 2. Oh yeah. Because God, I, I mean, like you know, people like, say say what you will about the Silent Hill 2 remake when it comes out or whatever, but like, why is the original game not available? Yeah, I did not know it wasn't available. What no, the yeah. heck? No, no you can not. only. You, there's only two ways to play it. You can either play it on the PS2 as God intended, or you can get the Silent Hill uh, like HD collection, which is just worse in every way. It's completely redubbed, and they added like a bunch of little bits and bobs that don't help anything. But they Aww. haven't, yeah, they haven't re-released this game in like well over a decade now. Oh, that sucks. I hate when stuff like that happens. Yeah, the actually fun thing about fun, uh, fun quote unquote thing about the Silent Hill HD collection is that if I'm not mistaken, they used a build of the game for the port that was like 
not the release build. Like, it was slightly before the release build. So it has, like, a bunch of visual artifacting and, like, glitches and shit uh, that the that original game does true. not have. Yeah, no, that is true. And I remember even noticing this as, like, a kid who was playing it at 3 a.m. in, like, middle school at my friend's house. And we both got, just got tired of dealing with it. Because it, it's not only that, like, Silent Hill is sort of clunky on purpose, like, both for the horror and for uh, the design of the time. And Let's go! You making won. that any worse. I won! <laughs> I just got a terrifying ball. Yeah. I wonder if I can use it. Hold up. I got a little pirate ship. I didn't get anything. What is they this? Already, they already thought you were dripped out enough. They, they knew True. they couldn't yeah. do anything more to help you. Okay, so uh, start another one also random. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we don't get the space station. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, Candyland. Oh my God. H have, it, have either of you played... Uh, the sorry, I got distracted by the giant gingerbread man. <laughs> um, have either of you guys played uh, uh, the Candyland board game at all? Yes, I did yes. as a kid all the time. It was right next to the shoots and ladders and my top three. Who who is your who is your favorite character from that game? Because I have I have one and I want to see if you you both agree with me on this. I actually, I don't. Yeah, I can't remember them very well. Yeah, I remember what they look like. I don't remember their names. I really liked like the peppermint goblin. <laughs> yeah, I well, I was going to say candy cane lumberjack, but that works too. It, it's is is that not the peppermint goblin? Like he's the guy he's like the Paul Bunyan looking guy who cuts yeah, down no, the, no, no. the candy I, cane I just, trees. I wouldn't I wouldn't call him a goblin. <laughs> he just is kind of like a cute little guy. I want to see if I can find it, find an image of him because there's two different that they did this weird thing where like they reprinted the game and it has like a new art style and it's 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 not good. No. Um, yeah, like I I want to see what he looks like because I remember him looking like far more like rascally and not in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I I I while you're. Like having a time trying to get in there. I'm gonna look up the candy lab character. I got him. So that's that's the candy cane lumberjack. Some oh, images yeah. he looks better than others. Like this is the cute version. He gets he looks a little bit weirder in some. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think there's three different candy land art styles. Uh, that was the cutest one in my opinion. Then they made him more look more. Yes. Uh, no. This is the yeah. one that I remember. This is like yeah. I, like he's my favorite, but that's just because he he haunts me. <laughs> he's a specter. Yeah. Okay, I think was mine it? was probably like Princess Frosty. Oh. Is oh my name. god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, and this is this is the version of him from uh, the version of the game that I hate the most design wise. They made him in into, like, a Tumblr sexy man negative. Oh. Okay, hold like on. I, I, I need to I, look at this now that I've... Yeah, I hate this design this. so much. He he looks like he belongs on, like, like, a gotcha game that, like, steals my IP address. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, looks like, uh, he looks like he's from fucking, like, what's that... Like that Disney anime mobile game with the <laughs> villains. Yeah, no, like the Descendants, like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Descendants game, yeah. Oh god, it looks awful. I, I do remember Mr. Mint now, though. Now that I looked at the pictures, yeah, I, I do really Mr. like Mint. that guy's design. No, he he does look cute in yeah, the original I, ones. I I fuck I fuck with the original design uh, a lot. At least I think that's the original. That or it's the second design. I, I think it's the original. I think the one that you sent first was the original because I do remember, like, the rebrand one that you sent second was the one that I grew up with. Like, the ones that you sent first look like they belong in, like, the 70s or the 80s. That one looks like a rad, hip 90s, 2000s offshoot. Yeah. <laughs> we made Candyland cool. Yeah. God, I... Make... I... <sighs> I... Man, <laughs> why they do that to my boy? <laughs> okay. Ah, no, that. Oh wait, I can go around this. 
Did, did you guys see the like terrible decoration on top of my ball now, by the way? No, I didn't. I've been going no. too fast. What does it look like? It is a cracked egg that a little <laughs> bird is coming out of. <laughs> Hold on, I'm confused. Where am I going? Oh, oh, the, the, oh my gosh. It's there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. I, I really wish this game had like arrows or something. I know part of the point is that you're supposed to yeah. find your way, but like I was really doing loops in that like the last rungs of those space missions. Oh yeah. Those were really difficult. I was like always just like getting, you know, like too many strokes basically. You should talk okay. to your doctor about that. You know, I I wasn't <laughs> I was I was just going to let it go and fade quietly into the night and you didn't. No, you know I'd never allow you to that solace. I I know. The the texturing on like some of the candy and ice cream in this kind of reminds me of a uh, that one level from SpongeBob SquarePants the movie the oh, game. Oh yeah, that's right. Thing, where he's like in the goofy goober place. Yeah, no, you're completely right. I didn't even notice that until now. It kind of made me also think of the uh the fucking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory 2005. Oh my god. That that the, was a movie. The, is is that the one that had like uh, uh what's his face as a uh, Willy Wonka? Uh Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Johnny yeah. Depp. Yeah, that was the one I I watched first. Oh yeah, okay. Well, uh what what did you think about it at the time? Uh I thought it was pretty cool. I, I liked how I liked how freaking creepy he was. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, Willie's kind of a freak. That's a crucial yeah. part of his character. I don't love uh, the Johnny Depp Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for a few reasons, but I do think that movie, out of all of them, like does the creepiness factor of Willy Wonka the best. Like in the original, you have the uh, the boat scene. Uh, and that's so pretty, yeah, which is just like wild, but that's really it. Gene Wilder, other than that, is very much like, oh, I'm a happy-go-lucky, like, fathery guy. Johnny Depp will just, like, slaughter you on the spot and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can actually use the free cam to figure out where stuff is for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not oh, helping me, but... Yeah, this is this is a, I'm I'm spectating you now. This is a tight corner. Yeah, I was not having fun on this corner. Uh, when you guys were younger and you watched the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, did you ever imagine like in your head what it was like to be stretched like Mike TV? <laughs> no. no, but I did imagine all of the horrible things that would happen to me if I was like hanging out with the, that that group when that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who do you... <laughs> like, looking at them like, I, I would survive this situation. I would not survive this situation. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think who do you think got the worst death in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I know they, I know none of them died, but like they're, they're basically dead. Like, on the inside. <laughs> I feel I... like Mike TV, or no, 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 no. Uh, I think uh... Uh, what, what's the name of the one that got, like, inflated like a giant blueberry? Oh, yeah, inflates um, you big and round, Vruka yes. Salt. No, Vruka Salt's the one that got beaten to death by squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Violet Bogard. That's yeah, it. that's right, that's right. Uh, I can't... I Man, it, it really sucks that, like, we're never going to live to an era where Willy Wonka goes public domain. Because imagine how funny it would be <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, the day after it goes public domain, it's like, Willy Wonka-themed horror movie now in development. Oh, yeah, you know it's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, that could work, but maybe, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, when if you if you really think about it, like, it's already a horror movie. You don't need to True. give it another treatment. <laughs> I, I honestly think, though, like, uh, I mean, I think a lot of those... Uh, oh, I should have... I thought that was oh. over a hill, not over a gap. Anyway, um, I still didn't hit it hard enough. Uh, I think Augustus is the one that, like, freaks me out the most, though, just because, like, I am, like, really freaked out in particular by, like, the idea of drowning. Oh, my God, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Especially, like, not only the drowning in chocolate thing, which is already, like, way more viscous than normal, like, liquid, mm -hmm. but 
also drowning and then being sucked into a tube yeah, and then like yeah. getting stuck in that tube while you're like running out of air. That was actually like the thing I was going to say about it because I agree Augustus is the worst, but like it's less of like the drowning in chocolate thing because like I, I feel like he gets out of that quick enough. It, it's more of like the being stuck in the tube for yeah. hours on end. Oof. And then like I correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure he like gets turned into chocolate because that's like the only way they were able to help him. Yeah. Is, does uh, he? Yeah, no, I think he gets turned into chocolate and then he like he keeps eating himself, like in the Billy and Mandy episode at the end. I thought he was just covered in chocolate, but like he was just eating himself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's just maybe, eating himself anyway. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe he thinks he's made of chocolate, and then he just, like, slowly starts cannibalizing himself to the bone, trying to get every last succulent drop. I, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, like, if the Willy Wonka, like, if the Willy Wonka horror movie has to happen, like, consult me. I, I, I know how to make it worse. <laughs> I, speaking of Billy and Mandy, that was, like, my favorite... I think my favorite cartoon ever to this day. No, Billy and Mandy is so fucking oh, it's, good. It's I th great. I feel I like think... nobody really talks about it. It makes me sad. Uh, because it's yeah. such a good show. Like, I wouldn't say it's out of public consciousness, but I definitely think of all the original cartoon cartoons. Like, I, I feel like it gets less recognition because I feel like it's one of those shows where it's like everybody knows how good it is and almost feels like they don't need to speak about it further because like it's not like it left anything to be desired or anything it was just an episodic comedy true uh, i i do agree with that like it just it's it's one of those things where it's like it's not like it's not considered like a classic cartoon network show mm -hmm. because that's more like the kind of like like dexter's lab and johnny bravo sort of stuff mm -hmm. however it's kind of like in between like the retro and the newer stuff, so I feel like it just doesn't get talked about as much. Yeah. But people like it. I I definitely see that because like that was kind of in the sort of middle era of Cartoon Network, I guess, where like I I think it's one of the more notable shows of that time, but like a lot of stuff from that time just kind of goes completely undiscussed. I, yeah. I I think that was the first cartoon that really kind of like convince me of like the sort of stuff that you could get away with in cartoons where like there'd just be episodes where billy dies yeah and and like the next episode he's totally fine and you just kind of have to go with it each uh, each episode is its own contained timeline yeah <laughs> but like it's so weird because billy manny still had like a canon and lore and like uh -huh. characters that would come back but there would just straight up like i think the first episode that, like, Nurgle Jr. shows up, like, a bunch of characters die, and then they just come back. It's yeah, great. Yeah, now, now that you mention it, I think you're right. I, I think the, the episode that freaked me out the most as a kid was the one where, was it Puddin' that had, like, the rabbit that speaks to him yes, in, like, the death the wishing voice? skull. Yeah. Yes. The wishing skull episode. Oh, my God. That's, like, one of my favorite episodes of that entire show. That, like, and scared that, that... the shit out of me. <laughs> me. Me too. Me too. That entire segment, like, even looking back on it now, is just so insane. <laughs> oh, God. I, I love you, Puddin'. Do you love me? <laughs> Sometimes love hurts. I love you to death. Oh, <laughs> Iconic lines from that bunny. But uh, we all know who the best character in Billy and Mandy is. Uh, and that's Erwin. Yeah, I love Erwin. <laughs> Erwin I... has so much lore. <laughs> <laughs> I think... No, like, I wish Undertale... Uh, not Undertale. <laughs> I, wish yeah, Undertale... I wish Undertale was real. <laughs> yeah, I wish Erwin was an Undertale. Uh, I wish Underfist actually got, like the full treatment because oh, like yeah. they they actually could have really done something uh with erwin because yeah no like out of every character in the show i'd argue he's the only one with like actual like like not even just lore like he has an arc erwin has an arc <laughs> he does it's so weird to say but yeah he does like they they put so much thought into that character in a weird sense like, he's got, like, like, he's got, like, vampire and mummy blood. Like, that shit's crazy. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. 
Yeah. Which is, like, why he ended up becoming, like, the main character in that spinoff, Underfist. Which I am still very upset about. Literally the only reason that that did not get greenlight into, like, a full show is because CN Real. They really wanted to do CN Real. And it because didn't even of the... work anyway. Yeah, yeah be, be, I think there was, like, some sort of strike that was going on. Mm. Yeah, and that then... was, like, their way around it. Yeah. Oh, that Which, makes like, sense uh... when I think about it like that. Yeah, I, because I remember... all of those shows were, like were like reality TV shows. Mm -hmm. I remembered at the time being like, what the hell are they doing? Like, who wants to watch all this shit? And now that I think about that, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but that was, I'm just, I'm still so bitter because w what's really cool too is uh, the end credits of Underfist, they show a bunch of like fake title cards and stuff. Uh, and all of those quote unquote fake title cards things were like their actual ideas for like episodes and stuff for the show. Which I think is really cool looking back. Oh, man. I just want Maxwell Adams to work on more stuff. I really yeah, like Maxwell, him. Maxwell Adams can just like never catch a break. Because he had that other show that he was going to do. Uh, which was called Dead Meat. Which was like puppet based. Yeah, yeah I, I was following that. that. Yeah, and like it got kickstarted and everything. But like life just kept constantly throwing a wrench into his plans. And after a certain point like he just like was not able to like do it anymore because like he used all the money and stuff already and it just was not working out and i don't know if we're ever gonna see like it in any shape or form and it just sucks yeah no there were there was like there was so many issues uh oh my god sorry i keep missing <laughs> no and then you hit me and you make me yeah, miss me me and austin keep like b either bumping into each other or like there. barely missing this stupid goal okay there we go there you go um but yeah, no, there was, like, genuinely, like, I have heard, like, like, just following the Kickstarter and talking to people who worked on that, were, they were just like, dude, it was so good, and I'm so pissed that we couldn't make it, but uh, there was just so, there was too many issues that, like, were not even, like, anyone's fault. Like, it just, like, life just got in the way. Uh, and it sucks. Like, ugh. And what, what, what sucks, too, is, like, there, there's... I'm sure that they want to, like, release a lot of the stuff from that, but, like, due to, like, contract restrictions, they yeah. can't. Yeah. So it's I, like, ugh. I think it's also, like, obviously, I don't know for sure if this is the case, but, like, I know Maxwell Adams has talked about, like, wanting to, like, do a Billy and Mandy, like, revival, like, set in the future sort of revival, and, like, on one hand, I am very excited about, like, the prospect of it, especially if, like, he gets the band back together and really makes it into something, like, unique yeah. and cool. But I also feel bad that, like, it doesn't seem like he's able to stretch his creative muscles, like, with anything besides Billy and Mandy, because he yeah. knows that's what works. So, it's interesting that you mention that, because uh, I follow his Tumblr, and he actually talked about how his, his main idea that he pitched to Cartoon Network was, like, he wanted to do a kind of like a return special, kind of like similar to the Invader Zim one that they did with Nickelodeon. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Which I was like already like, I really like that special. So I was like, okay, I'm down for this. Uh, but Cartoon Network didn't want it. They were like, nobody knows who these characters are. And I'm like, hey, Cartoon Network, uh, did you know who controls, uh, who knows these characters or not? <laughs> you guys. You guys do. Uh, that is that is literally your responsibility. Yeah. yeah, especially because like it feels so weird now because now they're doing Checkered Past like as the lead into Adult Swim yeah. and like showing all these old shows anyway. Like if there is a time to do it, like it's now, and they're just like, mm, no, uh, don't feel like it. Yeah, no. It just ah oh, man, the Maxwell Adams disrespect. I so pissed. Yeah. Love that man to death. I had, like, the best round there that I've had in a while. Yeah, you're really slaying. <laughs> I, uh, like, completely fucked up the direction, and I thought I was just gonna get, like, reset, but then I somehow, like, got over the edge towards mm. uh, the goal. Yeah, you served ball that round. <laughs> serve some major ball no. that's like you put i'm gonna say to all my friends when we go doing mini golf <laughs> wow you serve some major ball that round dude yep. i 
I feel like this should just be like part of like the sports lexicon because like every major sport has a ball in it, right? Yeah, that's like, true. You, 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 like you just pass it around. That's like the secret like respect code where it's like, bro, you were serving ball back there. <laughs> <laughs> serving major ball. Where am I even going? Yeah, so this one's really weird. Yeah, so what I think you gotta do is like, you see that little like chocolate hill right there? You gotta like bounce off of it into the hole. Yeah, it's not oh, really clear. Okay. Yeah. I see. I, I understand now. Okay. Some, of, some of the direction on some of these candy holes is kind of... Yeah, they're getting a little more abstract. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that's, like, the thing with every, uh, like, golf with your friends map. Like, obviously, it's supposed to be for progression. It's supposed to get harder. But, like, I, I feel like they don't entirely understand the difference between, like, Hard to do is in terms of like challenging or hard as in like this is completely obtuse. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Okay, yep, just just circle in the drain. Take 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 your time. So what 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 was your guys's like favorite like cartoon when you were younger? Because uh, I, I already I already vented about mine enough. Uh, probably like. It was definitely, like, Spongebob, but, like, everybody's Spongebob. My second favorite was, like, you know, yeah, I gotta say it was Ed and Nettie. Yeah. I get that. Also, Spongebob was my second favorite. Yeah. Me and Marcy, uh, like, we are so, like, just dense. Like, in our house, like, we will just spend, like, hours doing Spongebob bits to the point where we have, like, a mental, like, not, not a swear jar, but just, like, like a... Like a day fixation, like it has been X days <laughs> since like Marcy and Austin have recited an entire Spongebob episode from memory. Like, it's not even a bit. Like, we aren't even doing like jokes. We are just like rereading the scripts in our brains. No, yeah, oh like we'll, we'll do, like we'll start a bit and then we'll just like carry on the entire episode from there. And our other roommate will be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you're not even stopping anywhere. You're just going the whole <laughs> yeah. way. <laughs> What uh? What do you think is the one like the episode that you do, that we do the most? It's probably wet painters, right? It's probably wet painters, yeah. yeah. God, this one's tough. That's the one where uh, they paint over Mr. Krabs' uh, first dollar, right? Yes. Yeah, number six, the dollar. Yeah, there's a lot of really quotable moments from that, so I get it. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder what is the most quoted spongebob episode of all time i i feel like it might be band geeks I, yeah I that was where my gut was geeks, going yeah i think uh we've talked about this uh, there are a lot of good jokes in band geeks but i feel like the the most popular ones while they are good um like miss the hidden gems under the surface uh, yeah. Because yeah. personally, my favorite joke in Band Geeks is uh, the one where the flag twirlers die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, someone correct me if I'm wrong or not. Someone in chat, like, fact check me on this. I'm pretty sure they removed that after 9 11. They did. For a time. They, they, yeah. they did for a while. Like, they just either edited it out or skipped over it. Same with the, uh, the, the joke in the episode where Squidward, uh, uh, is sneaking into the Krusty Krab to, like, get a little bite of yeah, the gas joke. Patties. And they never brought that one back, as far as they, I know. Yeah, no. they never did. There's only, like, early airing footage that exists of it, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah that's I... that's so fascinating. Like, like, fully animated deleted scenes is, like, always so fascinating to me, because it's pretty rare when it happens. Mm -hmm. Oh god, the gumballs. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. You you really just got to like feel oh. this one out and just like see what happens because like there's no way to like gauge the timing on it properly. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, we the other day too we actually found out a really interesting fun fact and Austin sort of vaguely remembered this but I didn't. Uh, the episode, I believe it's Shanghai, where they all get trapped on the Dutchman's ship, uh, and they all get, like, wishes at the end. Yeah. Um, so that was, oh, okay, I won. Cool. Dang. Good job. Good Thank shit. Thank you. Okay, uh, before I continue my story, let me go ahead and start up the random again. Okay. 
generic forest. Let's go. Yo, Let, yo! I, I, I can't believe they've added Green Hill Zone to fucking <laughs> golf with your friends. But uh, anyway, so we were watching that episode, and uh, I noticed while we were watching it that there were like a lot of points where during the patchy segments, where like he moves his mouth to say something, but like clearly he's saying something else. And I was like, mm -hmm. huh, I wonder why it's like that. Um, so I looked it up, and yeah, uh, during the first airing of the episode, it was actually done as like a viewer like vote thing where you could get your own like customized ending to the episode based on who got the wish at the end. Yeah. And so like all of Patchy's dialogue that had to be redubbed was stuff about the the voting and like vote now on your remote or whatever. Uh, and then once the episode's like first airing was done, they basically just uh, re-aired it with the Spongebob ending as the default and then re-recorded bits to just like smooth over that. Yeah, that that's also really interesting to me because I feel like that sp sort of specific stuff never gets like in DVD releases or anything. It was you uh, guys just knocked me into the hole. Thank you. <sighs> Why? Um, but yeah, I, I believe that one, thankfully, is actually like the alternate endings are on the first 100 episodes DVD set. That's so cool. Uh, and they're they're both kind of like a little dark, honestly. <laughs> Like, I, I forget what what happens in those. So uh, so Patrick's ending is that he asks for gum because he's like, oh well, if we're just gonna be trapped on the ship forever, then we at least better have minty fresh breath. Uh, and then the Dutchman eats them, and he's like, ah, minty. Uh, and then in Squidward's <laughs> ending, he wishes that he and uh, like SpongeBob and Patrick, or like he wishes that SpongeBob and Patrick never met him. And so then like. Because he's thinking like, oh, if we never met, we would never be in this situation, like that kind of stuff. Uh, so then when he gets his wish, they're all just still standing on the ship. And then Spongebob and Patrick are like, oh, hey, I, I believe we've never met before. My name is Spongebob and this is Patrick. <laughs> and then That's so funny. The, the Dutchman eats them again and you can hear them in his stomach. And Spongebob's like, you said that you're my neighbor? Well, I guess we'll have plenty of time to get to know each other. That's really funny. <laughs> God, this, oh uh... my god, I'm suffering. Yeah, yeah but... no, this is such a simple hole and I can't do it. You have to get it just, like, just right. Yeah. No hole is simple. <laughs> True. <laughs> I was I was gonna say earlier, but I, uh, we just kind of got, got away from it in the conversation, but, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the first ever video that I ever saw from you uh, was the Irwin video. Oh god, it's always that one. I I remember like just being fascinated that people could go on with a bit like this for that long. Yeah, and then that just kind of became my shtick, I guess. Going on way too long with like a really <laughs> stupid bit. And then the the best thing about having like bits like that is that um, you as the person who started it will eventually get tired of it, but other people si will not. But since the video <laughs> gets like recommended to new people all the time, it it persists on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the joke just propagates itself without your input, no matter what. Uh, can can I, I can, can I just say that that video actually was. Uh, like, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but that was uploaded for April Fool's one year. Like, it was supposed to be like, oh, it's like the same joke over and over again, get it? Like, it's stupid, it's April Fool's, haha. And then that is the video that blew up on my channel first. I and I was like, are not, you kidding me? I did not realize that, but typical YouTube moment, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I literally edited that in under a day, too. Like, compared to literally everything else I had been working on, that was, like, that had to be the one that blew up. And I was like, okay, I guess. Oh, hey. You know uh, what? I took it. I took it and I ran with it. Because uh, then shortly after that, I made a Diary of a Would-Be Kid-related video. And then yes. that also blew up. Yeah. I'm not which I was very big, happy Greg. about. <laughs> yeah. And I... Classic. Actually, because, like, I I'm thinking back on it now, because, uh, Salty, you and I, like, 
don't know each other. This is like our first time ever talking. Yes. Uh, I think I started watching you before the Thanos Irwin video came out, actually. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't even I, remember what I was making off the top of my head. I Probably like gameplay stuff or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, maybe it was after, uh, like, the fucking Irwin Impressions video, but I definitely, like, it wasn't what I knew you for. I knew you for going on, like, doing iCarly Wii speedrun with Tebow. Oh, yeah, no, oh my god, that too. I mean, that was, that was way later, though, too, because, uh, originally I was doing speedruns as a part of that community, uh, and then I thought it would be hilarious if I made, like, a Summoning Salt-type documentary about that. Yeah. Because it had happened, like, a year or two before. And I was like, okay, this is a good time to do that. And then, I have no idea how the Tebow thing happened, if I'm being completely honest. It's kind of a blur, but a friend of mine was just like, Did you know that Tebow's actor has, like, a Twitter? Like, I was like, really? And I, I got to talk to him, and he's really cool. Oh, and he, he has his own little Twitch channel that he sometimes streams to, but I don't know if it's really active anymore. He actually hit me up recently, and he was just checking in and making sure I was well, and I was like, oh, that's nice. You're nice. Uh, no, he definitely seemed like a really cool guy. So I'm going yeah. to shout this out in the chat. So uh, Rom M, who is a mutual friend of mine in Austin's, did my uh, outro music, has done music for my videos several times. A uh, very cool and talented person said that one time someone in my school changed the desktop background in all of the first floor classrooms to Thanos Irwin. That person is now one of my best friends. Thanks, Saltman. <laughs> that is so funny. I, I that love is when people so, do stuff like that. Oh my like god. That. Yeah. Okay, finally crossed the gap. This one was tricky. Yeah, no, I'm still trying to find the right amount of pressure to put on this thing. It's not working out for me. The thing that sucks is if you don't cross the gap, you're still technically on the green, so they just make you restart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, I completely forgot that I wanted to do this earlier, because, like, it, it just popped back up because oh, I said... yeah, I think yeah. I remember. I remember now. Yeah, because, yeah, uh, me and Salty uh, don't know each other. We just came together for this stream because me and Marcy thought it would be fun uh and obviously we've been talking about like our experiences and stuff like individually but uh i have to ask you uh, a question salty to get to know you better yes uh what are your top 10 hottest gaming women <laughs> okay uh do you want serious do you want me to try to seriously answer this because i probably can if i think hard enough i Honestly, like, I, I don't know you. Like, I don't know what you're serious and what you're joking is. You can tell me anything and I believe you. Well, Rouge the Bat's definitely on there. Well, yeah, of course. Of course. And that's that's also a really high tier one. I It might even be number one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking about it. I'm not. I swear it's not even a joke. Um, Listen, they. I don't know why. T to the life of me, I don't understand why they did this to this day. But they have Jiggle Physics for Rouge and they Sonic do. Adventure 2. They yeah. absolutely do. That's fucking insane. I feel like that's not brought up enough. I found... <laughs> Actually, I'll get, I'll get back to the top 10 thing when I think about it a little bit more. But I found... <laughs> when I got into Sonic Adventure 2 modding, I found that somebody made a mod I, where I think it I know has what you're a slider. About. It has a slider for, like, uh -huh. the boob physics. <laughs> so like you can slide it all the way up and it just like every step you take the recoil is like insane <laughs> like like you could hurt somebody with those yeah i'm imagining like you, like Rouge takes a step and it's like a jet engine goes off right next literally to <laughs> blows my eardrums out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like eardrums are like bleeding and it's like ah! <laughs> Oh god, I remember, I think somebody made us uh, another uh, mod where it was like a slider to make them bigger too, and I'm just like, what, what are people doing? Yeah, no, I've never heard of that one before, but do you have like a link so I can make sure? That <laughs> just to, you, you know, just to, to see how funny it is. Yeah, genuinely though, uh, I, I do know about that one. 
and I was on a call with friends, and I found both of those on the same night, and I combined them together to make, <laughs> oh like, the worst. Like, it is horrible. I'll tear with the two Canadian dollars. Horny jail. Sorry. Apologies, my bad. Yeah. I think if I had to choose one, like, off the top of my head that isn't Rouge, because literally everyone and their mom would say Rouge, uh, probably Cortana. Cortana from Halo. Like, she's up there. It's a, it's a, it's a, a bit of a basic pick, in my opinion, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I just... I get it. Yeah, me too. I, I get it. I also get the fact, because it's like, uh, what's it called? Um... I remember when I was younger and I first started playing Halo, I was like, wait a second, that woman looks kinda naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the neurons just like activate, it's like, that's the moment where I became kind of a man. It's like, wait a second, do I like girls? <laughs> I've never felt this way before. Yeah. I used to think that they were icky, but like, they're kinda cool. <laughs> uh... I actually, one of the things I do, uh, like, I won't even say shamefully, because I think everyone my age who played Halo 3 did this, uh, that was when they introduced theater mode, and, like, you could make maps and stuff on it. Oh. Yeah, uh... and, like, just, like, share them around, and, like, people would make, like, full-on, like, hentai maps out of, oh like, God. objects and stuff, objects and weapons oh in the game. God, yeah. Yeah, oh. and I- and I would look at them, and I, like, exactly the same way that I felt, like, in terms of, like, oh, Steve Jobs is gonna, like, come, like, into my house <laughs> and He's kill me in the hole and, hey, uh, to death, like, the guys from Office Space. <laughs> oh my god. These stupid conveyor belts! Yeah, this is- <laughs> Okay, there we go. There you go. Jesus. Oh man. Oh no! Wait, I still got one, one, one down. Okay, okay, I can recover from this. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> <laughs> I saw that happen in real time. I just gotta lock the fuck in. <laughs> I gotta oh focus. My God. I gotta channel all my golf skill. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, I don't like this one fucking bit. Okay, I, okay, okay. It's very hard for me to play golf well and also think about uh, women in video games <laughs> that I like. Yeah. I can't even think of women. <laughs> this was this was actually a strategy to get you to lose. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah let's go. Won. I still won somehow. By a single point. That was a, that was a close a ass game. Austin, right. can you suggest some? I don't know women. I don't know um, women. uh, run some the... by me. We can get like a feel for it. Okay. Uh, top, top, top ten. Uh, one through ten. Uh, the L-shaped Tetris block, purple, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right. we might be, <laughs> we might be on completely different sides of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me you're gonna go for the square. Everyone picks the square. No, okay, just because it's so, voluptuous. So okay, uh, this this is very interesting because okay, first off, I'm I suck at this. Uh, <laughs> five strokes. Uh, you're you're just now reminding me not to completely derail that again, but uh, when you when you both were younger mm. did you ever this is gonna sound insane but did you ever <laughs> assign gender to like things that very clearly do not have gender absolutely uh, yes as in like objects yeah like like for yeah. example right something that i did when i was a kid was i assigned numbers genders for some reason <laughs> in my brain not like knowing numbers me. yes so so like for me for me right like the number four, four is a girl. Okay. Okay. Four is a girl in my brain. Huh. I don't know why. I don't know why that's the case. You know, four I, is a girl. I don't know that I ever thought about that. Like, other objects, maybe. Like, like when I was a kid, one, two, and three, they were boys. They got in a hijink. Mm -hmm. Four was a girl. Five was a guy. Six was a girl. Seven guy. Eight, not really sure. 
Uh, and nine girl. I think I, I think I have to contest this one. Uh, I think seven is a girl. You think so? Yeah. I think can so. I? Can I? You don't have to explain your reasoning. I like, know. Of course, it's, they it's, could be. It's just a gut feeling. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I never assigned it to, like, numbers, like, I, I guess, like, not, like, inanimate, co like, concepts, but I did assign it to, like, stuff like stars and the sky and, like, the sun and the moon. Mm, well, the sun and the moon are, like, very, uh, I think those are, like, ones that a lot of people do that for. Yeah. Or at least uh, I, did. I, I think, like, jokingly, because, like, I, I assume we're talking about this very, you know, very seriously like boardroom oh, yeah. esque. like we got our hands clasped and we're like talking about our figures uh like i used to do it like jokingly to like uh like my like nerf guns and shit that i had when i was younger <laughs> oh, oh like i'm gonna girl I'm, yeah i'm gonna whip her out <laughs> I, I i i don't think i had any nerf guns uh so i wouldn't have been able to uh Assign gender to, to nerf that yeah. one. I did have super soakers, though. Yeah, I mean, super soakers are just nerf guns, but with water. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, Princess Peach. I like Princess Peach. Well, yeah. yeah prin okay, Girl who's... Yeah, who's everyone's favorite Mario princess? I assume Salty's is still just Princess Peach. Well, I I don't know because I like Daisy a lot too. Yeah, I'm so, I'm I'm a Daisy I'm, lad. I'm de definitely a Daisy gal myself. Why can't I like all Mario women uh, the same? <laughs> because it has to be a contest. That it has to be. A gun to your head. <laughs> like y y gun to your head, you're not allowed to kill yourself. Answer the fucking question. Pro probably Daisy then. Yeah. Yeah. Probably we're, Daisy. We're all we're all Daisy here. Oh, God, this I one hate is, this hole. This one Ooh, is. Oh, I hate this hole. So so bad. Oh. <laughs> Although I I would say that like close second for me is definitely Peach. Uh, I'm I like yeah. Rosalina. I think she's cute, but. I don't stereotypically. I'm not usually drawn to like very girly characters, mm -hmm. except for the fact that for some reason Peach I like, and I don't mm -hmm. really know why. Yeah, I do really like Peach. I do really like Rosalina, but like I think if I had to pick a second, like it's kind of a gray area. But like honestly, I would choose like fucking Pauline. I love the way Pauline looks. She's great. I mean, yeah, I love Pauline. Yeah. Uh, I I was gonna say like because somebody said Pauline in the chat too, but like. I mean, I don't know if I would count her as a princess, though. She's like a- she's a politician. Yeah, yeah she's- she, she's, she's the princess boss. of democracy. <laughs> she, she's girl boss, she- she slay. That is true. She is the moment. True. I'm imagining, like, a Jedi Council moment, and it's like, we allow you on this council, but we do not offer you the rank of princess. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Palpatine saying that. <laughs> We do not, we do offer not you. the rank of princess. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a really good Palpatine. Yeah. Help me again. remove the cupcakes from my easy bake oven. <laughs> oh my god. With the Canadian two dollars. Austin is a man slash person of culture. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, what else oh can I say? You recognized it before I even could. This is oh, this is rough. Yeah, the the some of these holes. On this one. Ooh, still on the green like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> still on the green, I am. <laughs> Not a very good golf player. <laughs> Good golf player you are not. <laughs> Prefer fault I do. Oh my god, that was so chunky. That that blew out the mic so hard. Too. You just like ate the microphone. <laughs> Cerveza crystal I must drink. <laughs> oh god, the Cerveza oh, crystal yeah. memes are so good. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh my gosh, what, oh, speaking of, I know we were <laughs>
Were we talking about just top 10 video game women, or is any women allowed? I, I think we can women? allow any women. We, we've gotten past that topic. Okay. Uh, Asajj Ventress from Clone Wars. Oh yeah, no, she fucking rules. I love her. I I, know I, I would let her murder Wars. me. Yeah. That's <laughs> how you know it's real. Me. Uh, I also, this is not a woman, but like, if we're talking about Clone Wars, uh, I had a crush on Cad Bane as a kid as well. That's pretty, honestly, you know, I can see it. I'm not, I'm not, like, I think Cad Bane's really cool. I'm not attracted to Cad Bane. However, uh, I don't know, like, grovelly, kind of like, like, a uh, cowboy space guy. Yeah, it, it's like, yeah, it's just like the, like the Western pastiche. She was kind of like my gateway into, like, liking Spike Spiegel later on in my life. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm Austin, I'm getting to ask your opinion later about Jake Marshall for Mace Attorney. Oh, yeah. Marshall. Uh, he's the, uh, the cowboy guy in the fifth case of the first game. Yeah, I oh, need to... Oh, the game! Oh my gosh, mm. yeah, no, I, I've never touched that before. Yeah, I need to see him again. I haven't played Ace Attorney in a very long time, which is funny. <laughs> Because I help you with the videos, and I'm just like, I'm just going off, like, gut instinct. I don't do any extra research for it or anything. <laughs> also, uh, Austin Valentwin in the chat with $5 asking, favorite One Piece woman? This is a good question. Nico Robin. It's very hard for me to answer because I feel like there's a lot of really good female characters, character design aside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, are, are we talking, I mean, like, I guess, you know, you can divide this into two categories of, like, what is your favorite from, like, a character perspective and what is just, like, the the, the monkey brain. Answer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I think, okay, so I think all of them, almost all of them are great. Uh, mm. However, I think that Nico Robin for me checks every box imaginable. Mm -hmm. I yeah, just think literally. She's a really yeah. cool character. And also Monkey Brain. No, I Except for I'm, when her, she lost all of her melanin in the Yeah, time. yeah. I was going to uh, say like with the caveat that like post time skip Robin is like completely bodied by Alabasta era Robin. Yeah, why did, like, they, why did they do such that? A, oh, the cowboy hat. Yeah, why? they were, they jacked her swag. <laughs> <laughs> they jacked her swag, and then like the the her initial post time skip outfit. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I think Where? like the thing that really bugs me about post time skip Robin too is uh, her hairstyle. It's like now to me, honestly, it is like really difficult to distinguish Robin from like Hancock. Yeah, no, we've talked about that. Like yeah. Robin literally just looks like like bootleg Hancock now. <laughs> Yeah, it it's unfortunate. I uh What what about one one piece dudes? Oh, uh Zoro, absolutely. I uh I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be different and say Ace. Oh yeah, no, Ace enough. is like like if I had to pick another one like non straw hat, absolutely Ace. Uh Ace got me questioning things about myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how much I like Ace. <laughs> Is he still making you think about it, or have you decided? <laughs> no, no, I, I think I've decided. <laughs> oh. yeah, I think uh, if if I had to pick another, like, non-straw hat girl, like, this is both personality and monkey brain, but slightly more monkey brain, just because, like, we don't see her uber often. Uh, Perona, absolutely. Perona. Oh, I get really it, cute. yep. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. Uh... As a fellow monkey brain, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think honestly, like, and I, I, I hate to like say this for like just monkey brain because I do think she is a great character, but like my monkey brain answer is Robin, and like my character answer is Nami, just because yes, I think I really I I love Nami a lot. I think Arlong Park is the first arc in One Piece that is like truly amazing. Um, I just have a lot of affection for her. Yeah, no, I get I, it. I completely agree. Uh, vis a vis like Arlong Park, and I think Nami is like even after a certain point in the narrative, like just overlooked, and mm -hmm. I really don't think she deserves that. Yeah. Why Why'd they do this to her? Yeah, like after she gets Zeus, like it's kind of it's kind of it, downhill. Kinda over. <laughs> yeah, I, 
I mean, being a Chopper fan is basically like being in hell. Yeah, yeah no. that's true. The last, like, literally the last good thing you guys got was Monster Point in Eddie's lobby. <laughs> He he did have that cool thing with a uh, queen in a uh, Wano. That's true. Where like yeah. he, he like I like the idea of him fighting somebody's disease like on the fly. I thought that was a really cool idea. But Queen was I wish that there was another character besides Queen for that because it felt like Queen was really fighting with just Sanji and not Chopper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I don't know, uh, Wano, like, I need to go, like, through it properly, because, uh, the way that I went through One Piece is very odd. Uh, when I was younger, uh, it was in Dress Rosa, and I watched literally everything, and read literally everything that there was up to, like, the middle of Dress Rosa. And then, uh, it was, like, right around when Film Gold came out, I believe. And then I was like, okay, uh, I'll stop here, and then I'll get back to it. And then I did not get back to it for over a decade. <laughs> Dang. Uh, so now I'm, like, on the road to getting back through most of it. But, like, I know everything that's going on, because, like, I'm just... I'm one of those people that, like, doesn't really care too much about spoilers, so long as I get yeah, to yeah. experience it. Uh, yeah, I, which valid, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I still, like, looked through Wano. I still, like like read is a strong word but like i i know like pretty much everything that happens in it and i generally agree i think like i think film gold is slept on i really like i, film gold I, I like I film gold so like i like film gold uh, i think if anything uh like up until film red came out it was definitely one of the best looking one of these movies mm -hmm. i agree and i also think that grand tesoro is a pretty good villain especially with how Agreed. the uh how how his his flashback is like his little flashback thing is less than a minute and it's just a bunch of like flashes but you get it you understand his motivations completely yeah. just <laughs> within under a minute and i'm like wow that was really well done i uh i also liked fuck what was her name um nami's friend from that movie yes she was she was fun i liked her I, d I think I do like her too, yeah. Um, I thought, like, I mean, obviously the the sort of, like, shared backstory stuff between them did feel a tiny bit like, oh, that kind of came out of nowhere. But, like, I, I liked it, though. It was, like, cute. yeah, True, but at this point, I'm just kind of used to the movies just kind of doing that. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. do it in film red, too. And yeah, I, they do it in film red, too. Yeah, I like yeah. Uta and a lot. Yeah, me Even too. Then, like there was a there was also Sacred Sword before that, which like gave Zoro his like Dante Devil May Cry boyfriend from another life that he forgot about. <laughs> yeah, I uh, is that the one where they go? It's like the Zoro focused movie. I haven't seen yeah, that one yet. It, I'm really it, excited it about it. Hold on, I need to actually like I'm gonna stop playing for just a second to find my review for it because there's like one very specific line from that movie that like sticks in my craw that I put for it yeah austin is a dedicated letterboxd user i tried to become a letterboxd user more because i think it'd be a fun idea but i just always fall off of it yeah yeah i i just think it's fun it like really like enunciates that like specific part of my brain where it's like here's every movie you've ever saw and now you can look back on it uh and like i don't know I, sometimes i agree like, yeah. yeah like it's easier than like making like a spreadsheet for it is all no the i i agree that's that's what originally drew me to it but i always just i have the memory of like a rat so <laughs> i i forgot to like forgot to make like a review or something when i see a movie austin you're gonna run out of time I, the time oh, you're oh okay lose. yeah no <laughs> I mean, I'm already losing. I've, I've accepted my fate. Uh, yeah, no, Zoro says this to his, like, Dante boy toy after he gets, like, coated in Nickelodeon slime in that movie. He says, You said those balls are haunting you! <laughs> yeah. which, is, which is how I feel when I'm playing this fucking game. <laughs> Where are you even trying to go right now? I'm trying to go in here, but I can't do it. Well, that's that's because that's where you came out of. Oh. You you need to go in the other direction. Uh, well, maybe if the game designers got it to fucking together. <laughs> this what is were not they my, thinking. This is not my fault. It, it's it's the developers of Golf with Your Friends 
made it to spite me. Okay, we're we're hopping around the place a lot, but now I'm, that, that I've made that joke, I have to ask the question. Uh, everybody's favorite angry video game nerd episode. So, what's interesting is I actually didn't grow up with the angry video game nerd like a lot of my friends and comrades have. Uh, so, it, it's interesting to say... But I think my favorite is probably the Earthbound one. That's okay. a little bit more recent. Yeah, I, I Actually, did no. watch that one. I thought it was pretty good. No, I can completely agree with that. Like, it is more recent, but I actually thought it was, like, very sweet. Because you very rarely get to see, like, James, like, go to a game that he not only, like, has an experience, but also that he thinks is good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, though, like... Oh god, it's it's kind of tough for me actually, um, because like uh, I think a good default obviously is like everybody loves Rob the Robot. Yeah. Wait, where am I going? Where's the hole? You have to like make like a big hop over in there. Oh wait, what? <laughs> yeah. If you okay. if you go free cam for a little bit, it's a little bit more obvious. Yeah, I, I see now. It's it's a little weird, but yeah, um, Rob the Robot's an easy default. But honestly, I think like I in terms of the ones that I've watched the most, um, I still have like a huge fondness for like all of the old Halloween special ones, like Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. um, although actually. Uh, Speaking of a more recent one, I mean, relatively more recent, it was still a while ago now. Um, his Polybius video was also really good. Yeah, uh, I actually remember, like, getting kind of freaked out by it uh, when I was younger, when it came out. Like, I think the thing about James is that, like, I feel like he's actually a very competent uh, horror director. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish he would do more stuff with it. Like, and you can also see that in his... Uh, other material that's not angry video game nerd related like that short film that he made and even a uh, board james by the end of it mm -hmm. did board james become like a horror it thing it did it did yeah at the end that's so funny i didn't know that uh it was uh it was pretty fun um and i I actually I watched a video the other day, too, where, like, it was these guys talking about his camera equipment that he used back in the day, and they were talking about, like, his ambitions of, like, he's a the type of guy who has, like, a low budget but really wants to make, like, the blockbusters of the 80s and 90s, basically, and they were like, if he just, like, made horror movies, though, he would, like, probably do way better. Yeah, no, I completely agree, because, like, I think, like, I haven't said my favorite nerd episode, but I can definitely say, like, my least favorite nerd thing in general is, unfortunately, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, like, I applaud the ambition, and I understand the reasons, like, why it is the way it is, but just, like, I, I just, like, I don't think it comes together well at all. I, I just love crappy YouTuber movies. Like, Smosh yeah. the Movie is, like, my Bible. <laughs> God, I remember Smosh the Movie. Yeah. Me? I don't... Me and my friends well. consistently reference the stupid joke where the guy who runs YouTube is named Steve YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and like every time I have an issue with uploading something or I get a copyright strike or something, they're just like, oh, dude, Steve YouTube Steve on your YouTube. ass. God. <sighs> Genuinely, to... it's just such a bad joke, but I like, I love it. It's, it's dumb. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other ones that aren't just like, the channel awesome movies that everyone like trods oh, on god like, yeah like yeah there's smosh the movie uh i guess fred the movie technically counts even though it was like made by nickelodeon i do remember yeah. the fred movies yeah. what is happening here yeah i'm not yeah. sure I'm are we supposed to okay free free cam has illuminated me okay i yeah i know what we're doing shit this okay. is such huh. like this is such like a poor way to get over there. Oh, oh my god. You <laughs> fucked me. You fucked me. You, you fucked me. Except we all the, fucked each other. Except the difference is that you deserved it and I didn't. We'll just see what the court of public opinion has to say about that. Uh, oh wait, no. I can't make any polls right Finally. now. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. 
We're going on vibe alone. No! Okay, 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 no. Uh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there we go. Seven. Yes! Eight. God. Oh, God. I don't think I'm gonna make this. No Mickey Mouse stuff. Come on. Yeah, no Mickey Mouse stuff. No Mickey Mouse stuff. Oh, no, there was so much Mickey Mouse stuff. Going, I'm Donald and you're Goofy. You're going too hard. You need a, a gentler hand. Yeah. Have you have you guys ever seen The Disaster Artist? I have. Yes, I have. What are your opinions on it? Uh, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Um there are some parts that I like cuz I owned the original book like before yeah, a yeah. movie even like happened and I read it. And I thought that like some of the embellishment with like for sort of movie effect was a little annoying. Um I I agree especially with like the like, they have to have it at the end where, like, yeah. they reconcile and shit. And I'm just like, no, Tommy kind of sucks. Yeah. No, Tommy fucked this guy over big time. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I, I find the complication of their friendship a lot more compelling than just, like, a generic, like, feel good. Like, oh, and Tommy was a great guy. Hold on, I'm just gonna... Oh, no, no, no. Do you mind no, if I can't... just, like... Uh, no, yeah. no, no. We can't be doing this again. Destroy, destroy. Yeah, uh, yeah, ret retire. Go, go back. Uh, oh, oh, I have to make a new game. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, one second. Hole in one, let's go. Um, invite only. Is what I would say if I got a hole in one. Uh, I, I have to put on the blur so that you guys can't see my friend list. Okay, let me retire real quick. Retiring. Okay, I sent both of you invites, so you should have the. Wow. Fantastic um, Joe joke. Retired. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Jojo! But, uh... I love Jojo! <sighs> but anyway, um... But yeah, like, other than that, I think it was pretty good. The only other contention I have with it is just that, you know, James Franco <laughs> exists. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Like, James Franco being in it at all is, like, my biggest issue with the Although, movie. Although, I mean, no, to agreed. be fair, uh, if you if you really needed somebody to really get in the shoes of Tommy Wiseau and play, like, just a weird, like, controlling dickhead, uh, James Franco is not a bad pull, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. I think James Franco's best movie roles are when he's, like, taking the piss out of himself. Like, uh, I actually, like, I, to say I enjoy it is, again, a strong word, but, like, This Is The End is not the worst thing he's ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. I just like the idea of, like, a movie where actors in it play themselves. Uh-huh. I yeah, think that no, there's same. a lot. I, I also like how Michael Sarah is, like, insane in that film yeah, he no. immediately gets stabbed in the chest yeah, he's like a, like the first time we see him in the movie he's like doing coke and then like they run into him in the bathroom and he's like feeding three girls capri sun <laughs> through the straw my god oh this is uh this I, is, uh, this is diabolical. diabolical yeah i i actually recently found out that michael Sarah has like kind of a a a niche uh, music career? Yes, he does. He has a, like yeah. a couple albums on Bandcamp. Yeah, I I started listening to his stuff, and I gotta say, I really really like it. Oh, I'm I'm actually kind of curious. Yeah, about this it's like it's like twee bedroom pop, but in like a cool way. Hmm. Also, uh, Spaceman Scott is in the chat and uh, said, "Sometimes when I feel bad, I'll just replay that scene where Tobey Maguire nukes James Franco's face with a pumpkin bomb in Spider Man 3. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Spider-Man Three is such a good movie. Everyone here knows this. It's it's true. And, I and I you should genuinely watch the video do. We made about it. I genuinely love that movie so much. Like uh, I think one of the lines that I've come to use in my everyday life, uh, for worse, not for better, is just like, I like being evil. It makes me feel good. <laughs> God, uh, Eddie is such a character in that movie like for all intents and purposes the movie would be so much better if venom wasn't in it but topher grace is just like eating it up every time he's on screen true <laughs> the the fucking L church scene is so <laughs> please kill peter parker dude what did he do <laughs> what do you mean kill peter parker <laughs> 
He just <laughs> did your job better than you slightly. God, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to destroy Salty DK Dan's balls and golf with friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you ended that statement with uh, in golf with friends because otherwise yeah, it would I, have completely I, different I, connotations. Yeah, I did not. I did not want him to get the wrong idea. <laughs> Now imagine, imagine you pray that and God's already on it, and then he doesn't get the last part. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't it's hear like, that last part. I'm sorry. I'm also like, I'm, I'm imagining this is like a Shenron situation where it's like I only get one wish. And it's like, well, you already kind of wasted it. You should talk faster. I I honestly would be a lot more religious if if like in like some religion that God was just like this cool dragon that granted wishes like Shenron. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Where am I going? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know, but oh. I just Do you have to, I like, just did a insane up there? crit oh. trick shot. Yeah, you teched that. I saw it. Oh my oh. god, this is insane. Yeah. Okay. I, I think you just have to like get it at the right angle. Shit. Oh, the bounce. Yeah, I wish we had the jump because then I could like just land on the ground and then jump, but it's not happening. <laughs> okay, that was too light. That was too hard. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. You sorry, I'm just uh <laughs> really liking this game. <laughs> really enjoying this round of golf with my friends. <laughs> oh, I ac I accidentally tapped and I I got another oh, finally. got another putt. Fudge. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's not going to oh, okay. I should just give up now. I Jesus I should just Christ. This might possibly be the worst hole, somehow. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh! I ran out of hole. I ran out of shots right you when You ran out of holes? <laughs> I ran out of holes! I ran out of shots. Oh. I also ran out of shots. I'm looking at the chat real quick. Uh, I get all of my coping mechanisms from Eddie Brock. Yeah. I uh, I don't. I, I, hmm. No, you were right for that. You were you had something there. Uh, also, somebody asked if God exists in Spider-Man Three. I mean, there's arguments to be made. I, I like the idea that like, not in the Spider-Man like Raimi canon, like. Just, just Spider-Man Spider -Man 3. 3. Yeah, just Spider-Man 3. Like, <laughs> Eddie's, Eddie was so angry that he manifested God into existence with his <laughs> hatred. Yeah. And he came, yeah, it comes to him in the form of Venom, so I guess in that sense, like, yeah, I guess Eddie's his own God. Wow, that, that kind of goes hard, not gonna lie. Yeah. For the longest time, I thought being homophobic meant you were just really afraid of Monster House 2006. Monster House 2006, the movie with Mitchell Musso? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mitchell Musso is in that, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he yeah, he, he he plays the main he plays the main kid. Uh, I don't remember his name. Maybe it's Greg. Well, I don't. Oh, know. I see what you have to do. Wait, what? Oh what, my, this is stupid. You have to ricochet off of the. There we go. Oh, oh that sucks. That does suck. What is up with th this map? Is like all trick shots. I actually do remember like, Monster House is a pretty good movie, and there's like a lot of memorable moments from it. But like, I think the one that I that always comes to mind is just like Mitchell Musso's character as he's like climbing the giant crane to blow the house up. It's just like. He's just like, oh, I kissed a girl. I kissed a girl on the lips. And I don't know why, like, the way he quivers about it is just really funny to me. There's something great about, like, shitty, shitty-looking motion track CG films of that era. No, I completely agree. Like, I think in Monster House's case, it actually, like, works, because it makes it more, like, uncanny. Yeah, weirdly uncanny, yeah. I, I've always thought that, like, Claymation was a really underutilized format for horror. I completely I agree. agree. Because I I think like going back and watching those old claymation Christmas specials like especially like stuff like Rudolph and uh, Santa's coming to town, it has such like a weird like the co animation quality is so twitchy and a little bit off, and I'm like why is nobody like 
in any like official like Hollywood capacity. Oh my god! Like, done anything with that? Oh my god! Did you just get a hole in one? We both. No, I, I got, I got, no, a, hole I got a hole in two. Well, I'm like going on four right now. It's okay. No, like. Five. Honestly, like, yeah, no, I completely agree about Claymation being completely underutilized in horror, because the only one that I can think of who does it, uh, fuck, their name escapes me at the moment, but, uh, they're, like, they did, like, that one, like, Simpsons Claymation horror thing, where, like, the family all get, like, oh, brutally yeah, yeah. murdered or whatever. Like, I they actually were going to make a Claymation horror movie called, uh, I think it was called Spook Train? Uh, and it got, it, it, it had sort of like a dead meat situation where it just like, it got mm. too big for, uh, its britches and couldn't get made for reasons out of the creator's control. I, I know that there is a claymation, like, horror film coming out soon, but it's not, like, specifically focused around claymation. It's focused around, like, an animator that works in claymation or something. I see. Or, yeah, so, like, there's a bunch of live-action segments, which I think is fine, but, like, something completely based around stop-motion would be great. No, I agree. There is, uh, I don't know if it's, like, Netflix or HBO, or, uh, I, not HBO, Max, sorry, whoops. Right, well... Uh, I don't know if it's Netflix or, or Max that has it, but there's, uh, a three-short film series called, like, The House or something that's like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or it's like a horror, like stop motion type thing, but it's an anthology about three different stories in one movie. Uh, I've never watched it, but I want to really bad when I get the time because there it looks really cool. So many things that I have to watch. Yeah, my backlog no. is crazy for games and like, like film and TV. Yeah, no, I completely understand. Like, I wish I had more of a backlog for games. I mentioned it earlier, but I don't play like. As much as I reasonably should, and, like, I don't know if this is a problem that you guys have, because, like, a lot of, like, you two, like, sort of make your livings off of, like, commentating on games and doing stuff with games, like, or at least, like, around them, but, like, I think the issue with, like, getting into video games with me is just that, like, the immersion, like, the actual, like, experience of playing the game, like, and the time sink that it takes to complete most of them, like, outweighs a lot of the enjoyment that I have like and I it feels weird it feels like I'm being a hypocrite about it because like like I'll watch one piece and I have like no issues or I'll read it or whatever but like I don't know something about like video games in particular the fact that it's all contingent like on you and like if you fuck up if you deal with it in a way that's suboptimal it could take you even longer it just makes it harder for me yeah I I think it's cool that there's a lot of games out there that are, like, really long because, like, if you really click with it, like, you have so much to experience. Mm -hmm. But for me at the same time, like, it can be kind of hard for me to really click with a game sometimes. So if I know going in it's going to be long as shit, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to have to take eight hours to really start clicking with this, and that kind of sucks. Yeah. I feel that uh, way about a lot of RPGs, especially, where it's like, I know that if I play this for long enough, I'll probably enjoy it, but, like, it's just such a time commitment. Yeah, it's like you have to commit time not only to play it, but to also get invested in the exactly. first place. Exactly, yeah, and not only that, but it's like, just like the basics of, like, learning a game. It's not like, for lack of a better term, it's not like plug and play like it is just like picking up a book or whatever because then you just get to read words that were made by somebody else and they do all the heavy lifting for you and all yeah. you need is like media literacy that's why uh, but, uh, visual novels are the greatest genre of games <laughs> yeah but like in like you know regular ass video games regardless of if it's an rpg or not like more often than not you have to dedicate time to like learning the mechanics and oh. getting good at the oh. game <laughs> i uh I recently got into Death Stranding and it took me really hard to latch on initially because I, I've really been trying to like in my spare time like play more games because mm. I feel like despite doing this as a job, I don't really play that many games in my spare time anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially like longer stuff that I usually just don't engage with on stream. Um, but yeah, Death Stranding is like, it's one of those games that i've always wanted to get into but i've always had a hard time getting into and i think i've finally kind of like started getting it 
It took a bit. It took like 10 hours, but I'm getting it now. <laughs> God, I, I'm having trouble with this. Yeah. Yeah, this is rough. Oh, fucking hell, dude. Fuck! I got a really nice trick shot on this earlier, too, but, like, it didn't pan out. <clears throat> that, oh. that was physically painful. Like, that tore off a kidney. Oh! I'm gonna- I'm and... about to run out of shots. Okay. No, I've run out of shots. It's over. God damn it. Yep, it's over. It's all on you. What's it? You only have one shot. Oh. No. <laughs> oh wait, what? Oh okay. Terrible ball. <laughs> well, yeah, that shot like holes like that will build up fast. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay, this one is actually like not bad at all. You say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't for me, and that's all that matters. As oh. me and Salty struggle back here in the mines, oh. toiling, <laughs> with, dripping with sweat and agony. <laughs> nice. God, I'm so freaking JoJo brained lately that like uh, my brain was like, oh man, I could do it like in part two when uh when they they launched the, the they launched the ball and it, it goes around the Coliseum because they launched the ball in just the right way. Yeah, you know, like just like in JoJo. Yeah, just like in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Two Battle Tendency. But like, why are you thinking about Part Two when we're in Egypt, which is clearly from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Three, Stardust Crusaders? Like, I for I forgot that Araki made. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I that. forgot that he created Egypt. <laughs> Pe people say that Akira Toriyama made a lot of stuff, but like, Araki made Egypt, Araki made uh, gay people. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the first ever fictional gay person, uh, and real gay person, uh, Dio Brando. Yeah. Well, no, Dio's bi. Allow, allow me to correct myself. Yeah, no, we can't have Bio Rager in here. And that's good because that means I have a chance. <laughs> True. I feel like I feel like specifically Dio leans more towards Pan. Mm hmm I just think Dio's like, hey, everybody gets some. Yeah. Everyone. And as long everybody as I one. benefit. <laughs> yeah, as long as I benefit, like, let's go. Uh, that that's pretty much his entire philosophy uh, throughout like all of the uh, all of the time when he's off screen, just having like multiple children. <laughs> yeah, dude is like I'm breeding for one purpose and one purpose only. I'm not enjoying it. I just want to fuck without anybody, you know. Also, we're going into the into this massive freaking uh, thing now. Wow! Wow, they've- Oh, there's more holes inside of the pyramid. That's a cool idea. Yeah, I like- I really like the lighting in here, actually. Oh yeah, me too. I'm digging this. It's like that really cool, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 battle map. Yeah! Where yeah. You, you- you race on the rail grinds. Rail oh, grinding. yes, yes, yes. Oh god, we need to play multiplayer Sonic Adventure 2 sometime. I think that would be- that, I think that Man. would be a really fun stream idea. I, I want I, I want to do that, but do they, let they you don't play online. No, they they I, I I've tried to do it online. You have to do like uh you have to do it through like other applications. Oh, I see. That sucks. Like like uh what's it called? Uh, I forget what it. Uh. There there's like a name for it. They have like a Steam online play you could use, but it's garbage. Mhm. Mm uh. But yeah, man, I mean, I wish I had more people near me that played Sonic Adventure yeah. 2. Uh, because yeah, I, I don't I don't know if uh, when when you played it when you were younger, mm -hmm. uh, when when me and friends played on that stage, we would use the rail grinding stuff until we got to the final room with all the big statues. Then we would jump off of the rails and then like kind of like uh, jump from statue to statue to see who could get like to the ending 
Oh, I never did like, that. Yeah, we, that we went actually. crazy on it. It was yeah. kind of just like parkouring from statue to statue, uh, and it was barely possible, but man, was it cool when you pulled it off. Oh no, you, you can pull off some like really crazy stuff with the physics in that game, if you know yeah. how to utilize it well enough. Agreed. Man, I love Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Uh, I know that I design-wise, I think Sonic Adventure 1 is the better game, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I think, Two like, the, hits different. I think the sort of like stubbier models of Dreamcast Sonic Adventure 1 are very charming. Some Something I, I can't get over the fact that they never really did again is in, in Sonic Adventure 2, they have that cool thing where uh, when you turn while running, your character tilts in either direction. And I felt like that just made running feel way cooler. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm kind of pissed that they really didn't don't do that as much. Yeah, like modern uh, Sonic, other game. like they're they're kind of ironing it out a little bit with like stuff like Frontiers, I guess. But like, I agree. Uh, but for a very long time now, like physics wise, modern Sonic to me has felt felt kind of like driving a bus. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. He just like he's he has like such a wide like turn radius. Uh, he's very like heavy, I guess. I don't know. It's a, it's a very mm. odd. Yeah, I get that. Okay. You finally got it. No, I didn't get it. That's oh, the problem. I see. Jesus. <laughs> you were right there. Yeah, but like Marcy, what you don't you like you saw the picture. Do you think it's easy to control the ball on this like cot that I'm on? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. Every time I move, the spring locks go further in my body. <laughs> Michael! Michael! Don't Mitchell. leave me here! Mitchell! <laughs> Mitchell! <laughs> Mitchell from the Muso. Oh, God. That was... Yeah, the, oh. the angles on this are a little oh. tricky. Okay, okay, okay. Hey guys, I got a I got a fantastic joke for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh what's a pirate's favorite dolphin <laughs> term? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, you got it. <laughs> that was it, that was a joke. That was the okay, sorry, I <laughs> I didn't I didn't say I would give you the punchline, I said I'd give you the joke. Okay, I <laughs> I I have this stupid joke where somebody somebody tells the first part of a joke and then I just try to start laughing really hard, but apparently I just fell right into the trap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm always thinking one step ahead and everything except golf with your friends. <laughs> okay. What does this want from here? us? What exactly is happening? Okay, I figured it out. Oh, that took me a second. Wait. Yeah, you have to go all the way over here. What? Huh? I clipped out of the map. Oh. Wait, you what? I clipped out of the map. Okay, well, I was okay. a little bit goofy. You're having a little bit of a silly, silly one. Wait, um, I think I clipped too. Or maybe? What's going on? What's oh, happening? Oh, I think I got it. Yeah, this one, okay. you have to kind of traverse a bit. Mm-hmm. This one's a little bit of a quest. Okay, that was yeah, that was no. All right, I'm I'm finding God throughout this experience. <laughs> yeah. That was still too little. That I thought that would be. Damn. I I every time I start to say something about like oh I should have like hit that harder or whatever like. I I'm realizing that all golfing terms. Or just like there's no good way to phrase any of the things I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey Marcy, for the next map, uh, can I make a request? Uh huh. Uh, can we turn on items or like whatever? The I wanna I, I wanna turn you and Salty into cheese. I hope that that does nothing but just make us look silly. Well, you no, it does. You still won. Uh, salty, well. I mean. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, 
so customize well that's all stuff classic um party i mean i guess we could probably do some of the other modes but like i'm trying to see what exactly is the items like how do you turn on the items Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where it would be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... Cause oh, I don't power! Know. Here it is. Uh, power-ups mode. Power-ups mode? Yeah, it's in settings. Settings. Wait, where's the settings? Uh, is it, it is... on the regular menu? Yeah, it's uh, on mode. You click that. Oh, okay. And then, it, yeah, it'll, set, it'll show you the settings. Oh, okay. Power ups mode. Yes. Okay. Uh, respawning once. Res I'll set it to respawning. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's do this with uh, like classic mode one more time, and then like maybe after that we can do some of the other ones for a bit. Okay, that sounds good. Oh God. No, no. not again. <laughs> not again. I, I can't do it. I'm Hold not on. I'll strong fix enough. I'll fix this. Forfeit hole. Oh no, wait, uh, that's just one round. Uh, retire. <laughs> Forfeit hole. Um, okay. So, invite, host, put up the blur again. Invite, you, invite, you. Collision on. Power-ups, respawning. Okay. Okay. Oh, haunted. This is nice. Spooky. Guys, I'm getting a little scared. It's scared. I'm actually freaking out and I'm shaking. Snap freeze? I'm... Okay, use your... What the hell is that? It, like, mm. stops you in place. Oh! Oh! That's actually very useful. Guys, I pissed in my boots a little. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Get randomized. <laughs> I really like the aesthetic of this place, though. Me too. Oh no, you turned me ovular. <laughs> Haunted house stuff in video games is the best. All oh, the floating chairs and everything. I'm just like kind of looking around now that I'm the green windows. They should put, they should put like an insane amount of lore in this game for no reason that yeah. you like you can only find Three. if you like go free cam. Somebody Whoops. in the chat just said, oh god, Salty's here, purple guy? <laughs> what, huh? PURPLE GUY! <laughs> also, uh, I'll start the Canadian $2. Get on Bed Wars, kitten, ooh woo, forgive me, what? What, what did you mean what by What do you that? mean by this? Okay. No Mickey Mouse stuff. No Mickey, no Mickey Mouse. Mouse stuff. <laughs> just the strain. I'm I'm just stretching. But that's torsion. also how we strain. All right, it's uh, it's going well so far. We're all tied. Yeah. Okay, that <laughs> I may have spoken too soon. Also, I know that uh, we we talked about this earlier, uh, and it, we're so far off topic now that I don't even know why I'm bringing this back yeah, up. I think it's because we're in a it. we're in a haunted area. But uh, something about the FNAF movie I really didn't enjoy is how they kind of forced the spring trap stuff into it. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, I think like they just felt like they had a big get with Matthew Lillard, and they wanted to use him to like the most they possibly could, but I think it would have been better suited for, like, a sequel or something. Yeah, like, I'm glad Matthew Lillard was in it, like, as, especially for setup, but the fact that, like, at the end, 
they just kind of randomly put him in the suit and it's like okay i feel like they kind of blew their load on like the cool story bits that they could have done if they just Mm -hmm. waited a bit yeah no i completely agree like i think my biggest issue with the fnaf movie like other than the pacing is that like just narratively it tries to do too much at once like Mm -hmm. it tries like like, I know they're making it for the fans, and so, like, they're trying, like, everything that's in the movie is something that a fan would know, but, like, just watching it as a film, it feels very bloated and undercooked at the same time. No, I, it feels more like, it feels more like a Five Nights, it's a movie for Five Nights at Freddy's fans that have watched all of Matt Pat's game theory videos. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it feels like to me. Which, you know, isn't necessarily bad, I think it's still fun. It just doesn't feel like Five Nights at Freddy's. It feels like Five Nights at Freddy's lore the movie, not Five Nights at Freddy's the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I completely understand what you're saying. In fact, a-, a lot of the time is that, like, I think the fact that we got the movie, like, in general is a good thing. Like, I'm glad I agree. it got out of development hell, but, like, I really wanted to see some of those, like, older versions that apparently strayed, like, a bit more away from, like, yeah. what was, like popular about the game's lore and stuff like the Gil yeah. Keenan iteration I I am very happy that they got the Muppet team to work yes. on the Absolutely. I think that was one of the coolest things to come out of that uh, and I hope that they reuse those uh, those animatronics uh, I, I hope Agreed. that they reuse the puppets because there's just so much that you can do with something like that What are we? What are we doing here? Um, I don't know where the goal is. Whoops. Uh, okay. Oh okay. shit! So you turned me into cheese. Ha, get cheesed. I'm not cheesed to meet you. Oh, okay, that's what happened. I got turned into an egg. Well, I'm a star right now. There. Yeah, I I did that. That was me. That's fucked wow, up. Wow, wow, funny Tangan reference? No, shut up. Funny Tangan shut reference? Up, shut up. <laughs> oh, there's a ghost in that one over there. Oh, wait, where? Uh, It's across from the, the ending. Oh, yeah, I see him. Very big. Very scary. Yo, shout out to King Boom Boo from Sonic Adventure 2. True. I don't know why that fucker was a boss, but he was fun. I remember that did, like, I, I, it didn't, like, scare me as a kid, but it did freak me out a little bit. Uh, just because I think, like, you know the attack that he has where, like, when he gets close enough, he starts making, like, the big fluttering, flapping noise with his mouth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, like, that was weird. I also like his voice acting a lot. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I, w- I wonder who they got to do that. Yeah, that's true. I don't know who that that was. They just uh, pulled a random guy off the street. <laughs> yeah, they they pulled somebody's baby into the studio and were like, "Okay, get all close to my." <laughs> yeah, you know that uh that video of the baby eating the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, where am I going? Oh, well, it the goal's here, I guess. So, worked out. Okay, so this is like John very, Sega. This is a John very S- strange question, uh, but like, obviously, you know, you guys know about onomatopoeia. What is your mm. like least favorite onomatopoeia? Mm. Um, I think like I don't... no. Honestly, it would have to be something that's like like the wetter sounding noises. Like yeah, the, like squelch. Oh yes, squelch. I was going to say squelch. Yeah. Anything with like a squat in it is typically bad. It's not an onomatopoeia, but one of my favorite words is like ever is like chuck. Ch- to chuck something. Chuck. Yeah, to it is chuck. pretty funny. Yeah. It's just fun to say. I I like it. Oh, oh it's neck and neck. Yeah, we're we're pretty close right now. Yeah. Okay. I just needed to get that. No, 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 please. I wanted one. I'm not even going to make it far enough to get down the stairs. Oh, God, me. Why did that sound like a Peter Griffin? Oh, God, me. Oh, Oh, God, me. Oh, God, me. (laughs) 
Lois, that is so relatable. Lois, that's literally me. <laughs> I'm Lois, he's just so like hard. me, for real. <laughs> Did you see that, like, awful uh, post? I think it was a... Uh... I forget his name. He was, like, the writer on... Uh, IDW Sonic for the uh, for the Halloween special. Yeah. Or no, not the Halloween special, but like Scrapnik Island. Um, oh no. And and he made uh, like a thing. Uh, it's like a Family Guy joke. I showed it to Austin. Oh, the the Skibbity the yes. Skibbity remix version of the Family Guy intro. Oh yes. my god, yeah. <laughs> the... I thought you were gonna say that he had a bad take, and I was like, no, oh, that's no, no, my no. goat. No, that's I, my I goat. He can't have a bad take. But yeah, that was, I, I was just like, no, you can't be doing this to me. It seems today that all your is is God in movies and uh, something else. It, no, we already used Riz. We can't use it know. again. I don't know. No, I don't I, care. I, I think it was, uh, <laughs> it seems today that all there is is skibbity and toilet and God in the Riz. <laughs> Which is just so bad. Ran out of shots. Damn. I'm ahead. I'm pulling ahead now. I'm immune deficient. I ran out of shots. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need some B12. Girl, you can feel a little prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks uh, for hitting me. This actually was advantageous. Oh, I wasn't thinking about you at all. I'm B6, I pick up sticks. I'm B7, you will take it to heaven. I'm B8, and I am great. I B9, have no I'm idea so what you guys fine. are talking about right now. It's an American Dad. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's an American Dad musical skit. Yeah. Where, where the the some of the uh, younger boy characters and Steve get into a boy band, and they call themselves Boys 12, otherwise known as B12. <laughs> Uh, and the joke is that it's like biotin. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> and also just any excuse to make Steve's voice actor, like, sing. Yeah. He's, like, very good at it. The, the, okay, may I just say, I did not expect Steve's voice actor to look the way that he does in real life. What does he look like? He's a grown-ass man. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like, what, what I about know, him but, is but so like, odd? But, like, he he's not even, like, a twink. <laughs> I thought he was going to be, like, a slender, thin dude, but he's, like, he's a chunky man. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess that is kind of odd. Like, whenever I picture, like, Steve's voice actor, I just think about, like, Scott the Waz in my brain. Have, have you, have either of you seen any footage from that new Ted series? I have, yeah. Me and uh, Marcy Clint. quote like the, yeah, quote like the, yeah, but they got him. <laughs> Steve, Steve's voice actor's in that show. He plays the dad. Oh, oh my god, okay. That's him. Huh. That's it, like, yeah. It blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, this guy's a good actor. I could not tell at all. And like, obviously, I think they pitch up his voice just a little bit, but like, dang. Mm. And he's an amazing singer. It's like, wow, holy cow. Okay. Also, somebody in the chat said, hey, also, why is the thumbnail for the stream Austin being ABAB a assigned Bart at broadcast? Uh, that's because uh, the image of Bart is inextricably tied to Austin in a way that is unavoidable and uh, cannot ever be changed anymore. Yeah, no, because, like, we we've talked about it like i don't do youtube or anything like you guys do i'm a i'm a writer i make web comics and shit so like i don't have like a personalized avatar of myself to go there so i just use bart simpson as my placeholder uh, like don't have a cow man exactly oh, oh, no. oh. oh wow that actually uh, worked out rather the well the stupid me. honey yeah i did that you're welcome I'm... <laughs> I didn't have anywhere I was going with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I put it in like the worst place for it to be. <laughs> Daddy's gone. Sorry, I keep thinking of American Dad musical yeah. skits now. <laughs> As is your right. Did you just, okay. 
That was like a different thing. I thought you like launched yourself back to the beginning. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Somebody, or yeah, Elster, uh, Marcy did make one for the podcast. That's true, I did make a doodle of Austin for the podcast, but uh, I didn't feel like drawing in for this, so. You see, if I was in your shoes, I would just keep the Bart Simpson as, like, my permanent avatar for no, literally everything. No, it is, yeah. Good. Like, I don't actually even really remember how it came about. Like, it's just a part of the brand now, and I don't, like, there's no <sighs> recourse from it. But I, nobody else is doing it like me, so. I, I think that you should recolor it to, like, Make like make it look like a like a shitty like Sonic OC. <laughs> yeah, like like lime green. Yeah, like this red is red eyes. Like yeah, sharp. this is my this is my avatar OC Glart. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Marcy has an obsession with Bart Simpson. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. I do not have an obsession with Bart Simpson. My appreciation for Bart Simpson is quite tame, actually. The only reason I keep bringing him up is specifically to make fun of Austin. Yeah. And it doesn't work, cause like you can't you can't shame my pride. Like this has already been a part of me for years. Uh, it it was it was an inevitability of us working together. Man, salty. How, can... why, why are you beefing it? Why are you having a cow on this? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm having a real cow on the. Oh my god. Damn it! I had another cow! <laughs> oh, there's a secret gingerbread man just kind of like in the rafters. Oh, interesting. My bovine. I wonder if he's. Wonderful. I wonder if that specific gingerbread man has been on every course and I just haven't seen it because there's no reason why it should be here. He followed us from the Candyland stage. Yeah. <laughs> He needs yeah. our help, and we've been ignoring him. This is the lore. This is the lore I've but been talking about. We finally found it. <laughs> also, uh, somebody asked in the chat. Um, I think in the Vast Error interview, you said you have a Bart cup that you drove a few hours just to get. Am I remembering this right? Yes, that is correct. It's called my Bart chalice. Uh, it sits above our sink at the house. Yeah, it's on display. Yeah, uh, it's literally just like a giant head of Bart that I use. Uh, like, I don't even use it unless it's for like very special occasions because it is a bitch to drink out of. But yeah, no, it's there. And I drove all the way from like lower Florida to like more central Florida to get it one time. Oh my God, I'm beefing it so hard. Your bovine fields are plentiful. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not so that much far pain. ahead of Austin, but... You're having a rough time of it, this guy. Oh! Oh. Oh. Oh, the, the I'm B11, I'm in love there. with B7. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm B11, I'm in love with B7. <laughs> you better take out your boyfriend before I fist him. <laughs> <laughs> before I fist him? <laughs> B12 make you so fine and alert, or something like that. I don't remember the exact joke. That was there. Oh, this is this is. I sh probably should have saved my words because now I'm like beefing it so hard. Ah, oh, welcome to the beef crew. <laughs> oh no! What the? F <laughs> oh my god! This Baby stupid heads? spider web thing. Oh great! I'm a peppermint patty now. The web. I really gotta use the free cam more, I think. Okay. That... I had nine strokes on the way to that hole. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you put that down there? Why would you do that? Uh, I, I don't want you to succeed. You already have like 50 million subscribers. <laughs> 50 million? <laughs> if I had 50 million, I'd be like set. I, I don't, like, I, this is something I've talked about with Marcy quite a bit, and uh, I want to know if you're of the same mind, Salty. Like, if you, like, like reach a certain threshold of popularity in your in your future, like, do you think it would be, like, if not wise, like, do you think it's desirable to just, like, completely go dark and just, like, work on shit in the background forever? What do you mean by go dark? Like... Like, you still have your socials and stuff like that, but you don't, like, post or anything unless it's, like, an update or, like, something funny. 
I mean, like, would I just be making stuff for myself? Like, I just would never post it? I mean, you would post it, but, like, you just, like, you have no obligation to, like, I don't know, like, influence or whatever the term yeah, you want to use Yeah, I mean, it. something that I would love to do uh, is just work on stuff on my own timeline and not give myself any set deadline. Like, mm. I would just like to work on stuff perpetually for as long as I think it needs to be worked on. Uh, however, we do not live in that world. Yeah. <laughs> we, have um, to, we have to eat. We have to pay bills. Yeah, I have to get shit done. Um... Uh, but what's it called? Yeah, no, I, I would probably do that. I'd probably, like, just be like, okay, cool. Now that I have enough money, I'm just gonna make whatever I want. Bye. Yeah, that's, that, that is, like, definitely a dream for me, is just to, like, do whatever I want and not have to worry about it. I, I don't get many chances to do it, but I, I really like writing for, like, stuff, uh, like, like, comics and, uh, animations. Yeah, yes. no. Uh, your, that is... uh, I remember your Knuckles comic and your Shadow comic was also really, no. really good. Dog, like, I wasn't gonna say anything about it just because, like, I didn't want to, like, gush, but, like, that Shadow comic you did is, like, really fucking good. No, please gush. I really like that comic, and I, I like talking about it. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things that I've gotten to write for. Um, no, yeah, and you I did a really, fantastic I... job. And what, what was great, too, is, like, uh... It was one of those things where I got to, like, you know, pay my two artist friends to, like, work on it, which was really nice because, uh, you know, we, we live in a world where making stuff like that is, like, you know, it's costly and it takes mm -hmm. time. So I didn't want them to work for free. Um, but yeah, no, they're, my, my two artist friends uh, that worked on that, Colin and... Uh, Claire, they're both insanely talented. Claire worked on the characters and uh, Colin worked on the backgrounds, which I feel like was an amazing, amazing choice by me because I feel like Colin especially, like, his backgrounds are fucking immaculate. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, no, like, I uh, I also worked on the Maria redesign, which I was really happy with. Yeah, I really uh, like that design a lot. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to talk about it that much. No, you're, no, you're fine. fine. Like, I like, I like hearing about this stuff. Like, it's genuinely so interesting to, like, just, like, even just, like, minute stuff. It's interesting to hear about, like, people's creative processes and, like, how they feel about the reasons why they do what they did. It's interesting. Yeah, for the Knuckles comic, my only goal was to be, like, uh, I find it kind of weird that, like, in during stuff like Sonic Heroes, Knuckles just isn't guarding the Master Emerald, so I wanted there to be some sort of explanation. Also, well, uh, tied, Austin. Yeah, no, God I damn. actually did halfway decent for once. I got fucked. <laughs> you All got right. cowed. So uh, while you while you keep talking, let me yeah. choose. Um, and for the Shadow comic, I I shit you not, I was like, man, I really want to write a Shadow thing, but I don't know what to write about. And then I was like, oh, I could like make it like maybe a conversation between Shadow and Maria. That could be kind of cool. And then the moment I came up with the ending, I was like, okay, now I have to do it. Because, man, what a gut punch of an ending. I need that. Yeah, it was really no, good. No, no, no spoilers for anyone who hasn't read the comic. It's pinned on my Tumblr if you want to check it out. So um, uh, I turned on hockey mode this time. Ooh, what is that mean? Interesting. We'll see because I don't know. Oh, we're all hockey pucks. We're all pucks, okay. Oh, it's like air hockey oh, physics. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. What? Oh, and there's a uh, there's a, a hockey goal also. Oh, that's cool. Oh, a fuck you, gingerbread man. What a lovely game this is. Okay, there we go. Is the gingerbread man like their mascot? What's going on with the I don't gingerbread know. man? There's there's definitely something going on here. But yeah, I uh I don't know why, but I I've just gotten suddenly I've gotten just such a higher appreciation for like manga and comics recently, mm -hmm. and uh I just I love that shit so much. And one one of the coolest things, uh one of the coolest things I got to do on that comic was uh thumbnailing and store and helping storyboard mm -hmm. and like one of the things that i i love about that comic is like we've tried to put a lot of thought into like eye movement for like the speech bubbles and stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think it came out pretty good 
All, all yeah, of no. my knowledge of that is based off of like Akira Toriyama uh, yeah. stuff. Because he does it so well to the point where I'm just like, I'm just basing all of my knowledge on that. No, yeah, I, I genuinely think that like in terms of actual like paneling and stuff, uh, in, in terms of readability, like Toriyama is probably one of the best absolutely doing that kind of stuff like even yeah as much as i love one piece and i think oda is pretty good at it i think like later era one piece especially has gotten like to the point where sometimes it yeah. gets really cluttered yeah i don't i don't blame i don't blame him at all like going weekly for so long uh and especially like at his age at this point like i you can't expect everything to be 100 percent mm. super thought out um but like i a lot of uh like pre time skip stuff is kind of like that where like it's it actually is very well thought out layout wise. Um, wish there wasn't a hockey guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude's giving that's me like, problems. Yeah, it's like my main issue with this so far. But yeah, no, I think the other thing with like One Piece in particular, uh, not to just like go off uh like away from Toriyama, is just that like. Unlike Dragon Ball, like, One Piece, like, late era One Piece, rather, has just, like, so much it has to show yeah. at one time. Like, because, like, there's, like, 50 million characters on screen at any given time. Like, especially towards, like, the end of various arcs. And, like, typically Dragon Ball, it, like, very much specializes in, like, one-on-one -on -one brawls. Like, that's what mm -hmm. Toriyama's best I'm at. I'm having, like, a few dudes standing around. I know he can't really talk about it because they'll kind of like ruin the mystique of One Piece at this point, but after One Piece ends, I would really love if Oda did a series of interviews about like his process and when he came up with ideas for stuff and how he keeps track of characters. Mm -hmm. Because holy shit, like the man's like a Wikipedia. Literally. He's like, he, he's his own wiki. And I'm like, how do you have so many named characters? Like cool. shout out, shout out to series that have like a shit ton of Blorbos that I like can barely follow. That's why I, I used to really like Star Wars is because there's just so many little guys. Yeah, I can see that. I never really got very into Star Wars myself, but I think that's just because like, I don't know, for some reason, like of all the like genres in terms of like genre fiction, sci-fi is like one of the hardest for me to get into sometimes. I actually am the opposite because originally I really liked sci-fi, but I didn't like fantasy. Mm. But now I'm, I'm starting to come around to fantasy because I've, I've really started uh, to latch on to Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. recently. Oh, yeah, you know, I've never actually read like the original Lord of the Rings books. Uh, I, Me neither. Yeah, I have not. I, I tried reading Fellowship. Uh, and I had a bit of a time with it, but to be fair, I tried to read it when I was in middle school, which is probably not the best time. Oh, um, yeah. I did read The Hobbit, though. I liked The Hobbit a lot. Oh, this one sucks. This sucks so bad. Uh, World Trigger is, like, the opposite of One Piece when it comes to having a lot of characters. I... So, interestingly enough, as somebody who, uh, I wasn't into manga or, like, anime for a really long time, the, the, the thing that made me really hop onto it and latch onto it was JoJo, mm -hmm. and being such a hardcore JoJo fan for ages, and then reading through all of One Piece, was, like, getting hit with, like, a, a like, a cold shower, mm -hmm. because there's so many aspects of JoJo where I'm just like, why does Araki not use these things in the world that he's established, and then Oda does that <laughs> like Oda remembers all these characters and like brings them back in kind of substantial ways uh, and it it feels like they're the anti version of each other when it comes to you know how they set up their yeah, worlds and stuff I can definitely see that uh, especially too because like you know speaking from the standpoint of somebody who really like gets in like to the nitty gritty of like the writing and stuff like that uh, a lot of the yeah. time uh, I think it's really interesting how their, like, themes tend to contrast each other a lot of the time. Because, yeah. Because, like, One Piece is very... I don't want to say, like... How do I put this? Like, it's very whimsical, but it's also, like, very, you know, like, everybody should have the freedom to do whatever they want to do as long as they're, like, not harming 
people. Other have, people, yeah, infringing mm -hmm. on other people's uh, Whereas rights. Whereas JoJo, I wouldn't say necessarily like disagrees with that notion, but JoJo has a very interesting way of looking at like how life works in terms of being like, in JoJo, a lot of the time you get the feeling that like everything kind of will just happen the way it does. Like there's very much an overhanging like feeling of this is fated to happen. Uh, the people yeah. are in these places for a reason. Even if tragic things happen to them, uh, it was just their lot in life. Yeah. It, it, but that also births a lot of really interesting character dynamics because, mm. like, while Dio as a character is like, oh my god, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I, oh. Um, oh, wait, is it fucking <laughs> me too? Oh. Uh, yeah. No. No, uh, but yeah, while Dio is like very obviously made to be like the ultimate evil character in a lot of mm -hmm. senses, a lot of his stuff in early Phantom Blood, I kind of understand because he oh, was yeah. born into such a shitty life. Yeah. Like, of course he's gonna like want to scheme and like work his way up because he feels like he does always deserved more. Mm -hmm. Um, I could totally get where that guy's coming from. But yeah, I, I do definitely think that like the most interesting that dynamic gets in my opinion is uh, the way they sort of like take that to its logical extreme with Poochie. Yeah, and I think Poochie is actually like, like I like part six quite a bit. I actually think part six is one of my favorites. Uh, but I think like Poochie is a lot of the reason why because Poochie very much like exemplifies like the the extreme of like the fate e like gravity mm -hmm. argument yeah. and like to to there's some interpretations of his goals where it's like it doesn't even necessarily feel like he's trying to do something that's like n inherently evil mm -hmm. yeah no like he's just doing what he thinks is good for the world it just so happens like what he thinks is good for the world like according to the world is inherently wrong <laughs> Yeah. Powers of Destruction. But yeah, I, I also in the really like part six. Mm, yeah, said, uh, I, I think people are way too hard about it. It, said, uh, it might sound weird, but TBH Jojo kind of has the same structure as a Greek myth. Like, it does similar stuff with fate and familial bonds. Yeah, I would agree with that. That is interesting. I actually, yeah. I actually would agree, and I, I think that that was probably definitely intentional. Mm hmm. I mean, everybody looks like they're, like, big Greek statues anyway, so. <laughs> True. Uh, so I. Where do you... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you go. Solo. No, no. I, I, uh, because I'm insane. I'm doing another rewatch of JoJo uh, recently because a friend of mine has never seen it before, uh, and they were really interested. And I was like, "Ooh, you came to the worst person to make that mm. <laughs> to, to to say that to because I will do that with I will watch that with you." Um, and we were watching Phantom Blood. Which, over time, I have grown more of an appreciation for. Uh, but I still think it's, like, obviously, like, the probably the worst out of yeah. all of them. It's because, like, it has to set the baseline for literally yeah. everything else. Like, it, it's basically just, like, it's the part of the story that, like, everything else is, like, built off the back of. And because of that, like, you can't go, like, too wild with it. Otherwise, like everything else just feels lesser by comparison. Uh, agreed. And, like, obviously, I would much rather something that starts at its worst and then gets procedurally better than the opposite. Agreed. Um, but, yeah, there, there's a really, a really, really short line where somebody says, and I never picked up on this until I watched it recently. It's in, it's in like, the first episode, like, the first chapter uh, where somebody mentions that Arena's dad is a doctor, I never clocked that before for some reason. Uh, and when I started thinking about it, I was like, oh no, that makes 100% sense why she would be in that hospital when Jonathan oh, was recuperating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because her dad is a doctor and she probably was doing time as a nurse or something. I, di I didn't even catch that. I yeah. never clocked that. And I always was just like, I don't know why she's randomly in this hospital, but I, I guess, I guess fuck it, we ball. But no, there was a legitimate reason for her to be there, which was pretty interesting that I never never clocked that before. 
I do think it is kind of interesting how there are a lot of things that like, because of how insane it is most of the time, a lot of people just kind of take for granted that like, yeah, if this thing in JoJo seems like it doesn't make sense, then like, it probably doesn't, but who cares? Whereas like, yeah. the more you look into it, the more it's like, actually like, Araki probably did think about a lot of these things. Yeah, I, I think, I think for most of the time though it feels like a rocky thinks of story first and then like logistics later yeah um, which is why something like part eight is is so disjointed in so many places i don't know if anyone here has like fully read that or not i, but... I, have, I have i have but it's been a hot minute like because i was keeping up with it as it was going along and then kind of like one piece i sort of fell off of it for a while same here up. I, I had a uh, pretty recently in the past like year or so, uh, I had a JoJo book club with a couple of friends of mine who had never read through, like they had, they'd gotten up to part six, they just never read through uh, part seven or eight. So they were like, you know what, this is a good time. We should just together read it weekly and, you know, talk about it each week. And we mm. did. Uh, and honestly, for, for something like Part 8, I, I highly recommend that if you can, like, have some sort of book club for Part 7 and Part 8, if your friends are interested. It is genuinely, I think, a really good way to kind of digest JoJo as a series. Because they're, like, those chapters for 7 and 8 are so jam-packed with so much information, it is very easy to lose track of it. Mm -hmm. But part eight especially, there's a lot of stuff I never picked up on until a friend of mine mentioned it. Where like, uh, uh what, what's her name? Like Yasuho? She's like the most like developed female character in the entire series. Yeah. And like that's including Jolene, and that's like which is something. nuts. That's saying something. Yeah. God, I love Jolene. Uh, sad. Jolene's great. Jolene is probably like, if Josuke didn't exist, she'd be my favorite. Yeah. No, I'm. 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 I'm very part four pilled. I feel like yeah. part four is, is peak JoJo We're in so many areas. Around here. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, though I do have to ask uh, about part six because it's like my favorite question because it's so fucking dumb, but some people take it incredibly seriously. Uh, where do you guys stand on the whole? Uh, why didn't Jotaro use Starfinger against Fuji? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, every time that, like, stuff like that's brought up, I'm just like, I don't know, probably didn't think about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he like... He probably got too anxious, and he, he panicked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, because the thing is, like, you know, we can, we can make jokes about, like, oh, why didn't character do optimal thing in the plot or whatever, but, like, as, as far as, like, an actual person goes, like, you know, he's in a stressful situation, his daughter and himself are about to be, like, killed, the world is literally, like, fucking melting around him like i don't think he's going to have like the exact best thoughts at any given uh, yeah, time i completely yeah. agree uh and like it's like in the same school of thought as like well Jorno was in was in florida while part six was happening why didn't he simply use gold experience requiem and end the whole thing it's like because that doesn't make for a compelling narrative whatsoever <laughs> yeah i mean like because because here's the thing like you know part six has a very specific like end point and theme in terms of like how it wants to get there and if you just had like Jorno show up out of nowhere and be like oh uh no and then kill Pucci then like the, the <laughs> entire ending of the story does not exist like I I totally agree but man that little tiny like that little tiny blurb that Araki felt he needed to add in the volume release that was like, I don't know, maybe maybe Jorno's in Florida too with the other sons. And I'm like, fuck you, man. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. Why'd you have to tell me that? Because now I expect it to happen. Yeah. I actually think, like, I don't know if this is something you agree is an issue with, like, parts. Uh, I, I guess it's really just part five, I guess, now that I think about it. But, like, I, I think my issue with it is that, like, even though there are, like, tenuous ties, is that, like, Part 5 and to, like, a lesser extent Part 6, even though, like, Jotaro's a major part of it, is that I feel it's very, like, in some regards disconnected from, like, the rest of the greater, like, series. Yeah, I mean, I think at the very least, the way the Part 6 is connected is feels, like, organic enough where yeah. I'm like, okay, like, the idea that Jolene is the daughter of Jotaro and Poochie like was one of the only people that knew Dio to a certain level 
So to like have that feud be brought into the modern day was a cool idea. Um, however, yeah, uh, part five especially, I feel like uh, I know why Araki didn't want to do it, but I feel like there was just no exploration of like, oh, Jorno's the son of Dio. No, I. It's one of my major issues with part five, uh, and like I understand that like. Koichi's there at the beginning, and I understand, like, logically why Josuke shouldn't be there, because then you would just have, like, two uber-powerful, like, healing stands, and it would just, like, make tension non-existent, but, like, the fact that there is, like, pretty much nothing from, like, the rest of the Joestar bloodline throughout Part 5 has always been something that's been, like, very, like, upsetting to me. <laughs> I feel like Part 6 really, like, it, it, it kind of sucks that Part 6 was, like, the ending of that original canon of stories because i feel like there could have been ways to do that that kind of celebrated everything a little bit more mm -hmm. the fact that characters like josuke never show up again makes me so sad yeah especially because like i think it would have been really cool to like see josuke like i don't know like grow up a bit more and like see what he's like when he's older the way we had with like joseph and jotaro yeah Okay, I now I have to ask because I guess you have to be the tiebreaker for us because uh, I am a part five enjoyer. Okay, uh, you won that one, by the way. Good job. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm I slayed, I slayed. You, 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 you really, really balled. Yeah, you really. Uh, I got I got ball. mad. <laughs> you I got, got mad huge hole. ball. I got mad hole in that round. <laughs> you got hole in ball. But uh. Yeah, so I'm a I'm a bit of a part five enjoyer. Um, Austin is a bit of a part five hater. Okay. Uh, so where where do you lie so in this paradigm? I have a very interesting perspective on this because it shifted a bit over time. Oh no, no. Uh, no when no. I first when I first read the manga, I hated it. Mm, hold I on, gonna, I thought I'm not gonna make yeah, yeah. this one again. <laughs> uh, when I first read the manga, I hated it. But I'm going to be real. I think it was because uh, the scans at the time, like I got into Jojo when the fan community was just kind of like getting back up in America. So uh, there were no official uh, releases available for the part five manga. There was only really shitty scans. Uh, and I read the shitty scans initially and I really didn't like it. I think, I think after I finished reading part four, I was like, fuck, part four was so good. There's no way he's going to make it better. And I was like, yep, nope, part five is not part four, and I don't like it. Um, but when the anime came out, that's when I started really liking it. Mm. Because I feel like the anime fixed a lot of the issues that I had with it initially. Plus, again, I was reading really shitty scans, so, like, that tends to happen sometimes. Um, let me join back in. Uh... There we go. So yeah, like I think the anime personally like enhanced it a lot for me, especially because they went crazy hard with the animation. No, they season. did absolutely. I I do think it is more enjoyable in the anime, like all told. Uh, I think like though this has always been the thing with with JoJo. Uh, I feel like Part Five like still like very much leans on the whole like sort of <laughs> i'm sorry hold on we're playing basketball now yes. yeah uh, oh also, my god i'm not sure how this works yeah, do, how do we jump okay uh, it's click. left mouse button yeah left mouse button yeah oh, it's okay. it's interesting um but go on uh fuck what was i saying oh yeah i was saying uh i i feel like part five like more <laughs> than prior parts or rather more than part four uh really leans a little too heavy into the whole like monster of the week sort of dynamic and i, I, I think it gets it gets a, for me like the like lack of like an overarching story like up until like dapio sort of comes in and just like Jorno being like oh i want to be want to be gangsta like it's it, it feels it, it a little feels, too little <laughs> it feels a little bit unfocused when they're going from place to place mm -hmm. uh, especially because like in part 4 like, yes, there are chunks of that story where it is unfocused and they don't really have, like, uh, a goal that they're working towards. But the way, th the reason that it works compared to part five when, like, they don't, like, necessarily have, like, a specific going thing going on in, in a given arc. Like, uh, 
I think the reason part four works is because it, it has Morio as a base. Exactly. Yeah, and like, even agree. if there's no like grand goal that they're working towards in a given arc, you're still exploring the town and you're getting to learn more about it. Um, I just slammed that dunk so hard. I, uh, I'm sucking so bad at this. Like, I'm just not getting it. And, and I'm going to be honest, like... To go from to go from a setting like Morio that was so interesting and that could be explored with each arc in a different way, and like have really fun callbacks like every other arc, uh, to go from that to like just Italy, yeah, it, it, and it's they kind it, of they weak. go to one place like one real world place every week. It's like okay, it's a lot less interesting. Oh, yeah, you were having a time with this one. Yeah, no, I keep Ooh. forgetting it's. I keep forgetting it's not space, and I keep no, hitting space. No Mickey Mouse stuff. There was Copious a lot of Mickey amounts Mouse of Mickey Mouse, Mouse stuff. And also the way the part five is like written, uh, and like how the setting works is they can't really have any returning villains at all. Yeah, yeah. Like even in part three, they had characters like Whole Horse that could come back, but compared to that. Part 5 doesn't really have any, like, characters that, like, show up and are like, Ooh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna be a recurring... a recurring threat or something. Yeah, they all just uh, kind of, like, get killed. Yeah, yeah, they get murked, which I think is cool. I think... I like how serious Part 5 is in comparison to something like 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and to a lesser extent, 3. Because 3 was still serious, but they had a lot more comedic moments. Yeah. Um... I like the, the drastic shift in tone. You you could tell that Araki wanted to experiment with that a little bit more and like changing that part to part, which I like. Um, but yeah, no, like, I just oh man, part four is just so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is I think, just kind um, of the ideal to me. Yeah. I think. Oh, sorry. No, you go. No, no, no. You go. You go. You go. Okay, so I was just gonna say, like, I think my other major issues with part five that, like, really keep me from enjoying it as much as I do some of the other parts is that, uh, I guess it's sort of twofold. Like, I am someone who doesn't really, like, enjoy the ending too much. Not even because of, like, how it's set up. Uh, I, I think the setup of, like, oh, you're fighting over this one thing and they will get, that will give you the super ultra mega power up to make you super boss is, like, yeah like interesting i just feel like it could have been executed in a bit of a cleaner way personally uh i think my real issue with part five is diavolo himself uh yeah i think king uh, i think king crimson is a fan fucking tastic stand i think it's cool as hell but i think diavolo is just sort of like when you get down to him and like boil him down to the essentials he's just kind of mentally when you, Ill, when you bad boil guy. him yeah. When you boil him down, <laughs> his when skin I get peeling him, off. When I get him to his hot stuff, by which I mean his bones. Yeah, I mean, and it's weird too because uh, I feel like Kira as a character was explored a lot more than Diavolo was, and I yeah. feel like I feel like Araki wanted to explore Diavolo more, but even when he did, the stuff that he added, like I don't know, it just didn't. It didn't make me that interested in him like he's like oh what he was like a virgin birth or something yeah, yeah. and does not explain <laughs> and he has split personalities which is never really touched on why maybe because like he wants to be so secretive that like he's developed this secondary personality that is literally a different person mm -hmm. so he can exist without his identity you know being a factor and, you know, I, obviously, that's not to talk about how, like, a split personality disorder is presented in the manga. I feel like having the villain character have a split personality is a little bit yeah. problematic in some senses. Yeah. Yeah, as much as I like Diavolo as a villain and, and Do Dopio as a concept, it's, it's clear that, like, Rocky didn't really know that much about how that stuff works. Yeah. I, I honestly think, like... The most interesting thing about Diablo as a villain to me is the fact just that like there's so much emphasis in part five placed upon the like the unit of like the family of the like group that you position yourself with. Um, 
And, like, Diablo's fatal flaw as a character is that he is just so isolated from everyone that, like, he cannot stand to, like, be known or, like, he even wants to kill his own family just because he's, like, so determined to be um, completely unknown to everybody. Yeah, I I like the idea of that, but also somebody mentioned in the, in the live chat that, like, uh, all of the backstory stuff for Diavolo isn't real. It's in-universe misinformation. I don't know about that because it's told in, like... It's not, like, a thing where, like, the characters find it out. Like, it's right, told by, like, like the, narrator, the narrator. yeah. Which, is, it would be weird if that was misinformation. I like the idea of it being misinformation. Yeah. I just don't know if it is. Though, I kind of, like, personally... I kind of feel like that would also just, like, go to, like, further lesson... Uh, Diavolo in my mind, because like, yeah, if we have like nothing, the Joker. Yeah, like he has literally nothing to nothing base him off character, of, yeah. no real character to go off of. Like, I don't know. I think that would make him weaker rather than stronger. Like, cool concept. I still want a story though. Yeah, I, 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 I one of the many reasons that I like Kira is that like, for some reason, and I guess Araki kind of did this with Diavolo a little bit too. But there's just like an entire arc or two. Where Kira is just the character that we follow. Yeah, mm. I think that actually really helped him in the long run. Because, like, like, yeah, the straight not... cat stuff and, uh, like, literally just about everything with the Kawajiri family in general is really good. I, I think he has such a great introduction in that arc with Shigechi where, like, he is the protagonist of that arc. Like, mm. we're following him and we want him to succeed, but we don't want him to succeed because like he's a good guy we want him to succeed because that means that shigechi won't be murdered <laughs> yeah like that is like Finally. such a cool way to like get the audience invested in a character because it's clear like oh this guy's like he's gonna murder this kid i really hope that he doesn't have to <laughs> <laughs> oh shigechi yeah the w character yeah w wouldn't wouldn't you know when you know Shigechi, uh, Araki, one of Araki's favorite characters that he's ever made. You really? Are you kidding? Is yes. that like actually something you No, said? that that's actually uh, in it. He 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 made like a top ten favorite characters list. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, but he made a top ten favorite characters list, and Shigechi was like above Dio. What the? That fuck? is so fucking funny. <laughs> Does he, like, give explanations why, or does he just list them? No, he, he just lists them and has, like, a little blurb on, like, what he likes about them. Uh, but it's... I really hope I'm... I really hope I'm right about it being above Dio. I'm pretty sure it was. The basketball is surprisingly hard. I'm getting used to it, weirdly. Yeah, I'm slowly but surely kind of getting to it after sucking for so long. Rocky's favorite JoJo characters. His his number one favorite character is actually Josuke. Wow, which, like he, that's based. based he thinks like us, based. so that means he's good. So his list is number number ten is Dio, number oh, nine is Shigechi. <laughs> awesome. Uh, number eight is Jotaro. Number seven is Mista. Number six is Joseph. Um. Number five is Giorno. Number four is Diavolo. Weird. Um, number three is Bruno, based. Uh, number two is Kira. And number one is Josuke. Yeah, that's... Hon he's honestly, pretty good that. list. Pretty yeah, good list. I, I was actually also going to mention vis-a-vis, -vis, like, part five talk. Uh, I feel like uh, part five is also just, like, really... Like, the best elements of part five are through, like, the rest of a... Uh, Fuck, it's not La Squadra. What what's their what's their name? I forget. Uh which which characters are you talking about? Like, like which grouping? Like, like the main like the main character, like Giorno's faction. It's oh, not Oh, Passion. Oh, Passion. Yeah, Passion. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. rest of pa like the rest of Passion is like like really carries it cuz I love all, all of them for mm -hmm. the most part. Same. Oh, and and lest lest we forget uh the complete ball drop that was Fugo as a character. Yeah, Fugo yeah. is like the only one other than Jorno and, <laughs> like, that I'm like, uh. I I will say I did bring it up in the JoJo Iceberg video that I I've, I've been editing and working on, mm -hmm. but uh 
in that series, I, I bring up that whole Fugo thing, where like the in in the in like world explanation, like in real life explanation for it was just like, yeah, I was gonna have him like potentially b betray the group, but. He didn't want to go through with it. Everybody thinks this, it was a power imbalance thing where like, oh, Fugo's stand is too powerful. That was not it. I don't think that Araki worries about a stand being too powerful. I mean, just like I think King Crimson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I don't like if if I don't think Araki worries about a stand being too powerful in a fight. I think because, you know, he's a creative writer. He can write around anything. Uh I think he's proven that at this point. But he apparently was just in a very dark place when part five was being written and the last thing that he wanted to do was to have like his characters who were a family that he really liked like fight amongst themselves in that way or like have a family member betray another family member which i can kind of understand mm. he like, was just like from That's a just writing too standpoint sad. i don't like it L literally he was like i don't want my comfort characters to feel bad <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like literally, part five fashion is like his comfort characters at the time. Uh, so I just found that very interesting that his idea was like, I'll just write him out. Yeah, which like I understand in terms of like, like the reasons why he did it. But uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but like just like reading it as it is, it's just like man, yeah. Fuego really just kind of got like left at the dock. <laughs> yeah, and it, it always it always irked me because in the manga he's like never referenced ever again. It's only in the anime where they have like that little slight thing with Naracha's thing at the end. Yeah, where like you can see him for a little bit. God, God, God bless the people that work on the the anime. They they really just they pull everything together just a little bit more yeah, seamlessly. I really appreciate it. Actually, now I need to ask, like, aside from, obviously, well, I mean, Austin, your answer wouldn't be Giorno anyway, but, uh, but like, what member other than Giorno is your favorite in Passion? Well, it's definitely not Giorno because I feel like Giorno is probably one of the worst JoJo's, in yeah, my opinion. No, I completely agree. <laughs> Which sucks because I think he is cool in concept, just in practice he's kind of, like, very flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's very much um, a character where it's like, he is, he's action driven, but, like, he kind of just lets things happen around him. Yeah, and he's also really not even the main character of Part 5 a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, in, in, in stuff like Part 3, like, yeah, there's a bunch of arcs where Jotaro just isn't around or something, but, like, <laughs> Giorno particularly takes kind of a backseat until Bruno bites it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think it's probably got to be, like, Bruno. Yeah. I feel like Bruno is one of the most developed characters in that entire part. Yeah. I think for me it's like tie but like three way tie between uh Bruno I don't know what I just did, but I glitched out the game. I was out of bounds and I just kept clicking the jump button and I got I clipped back into bounds. And so. you still managed to hit me. Yeah. Uh but yeah, like three way tie between like Bruno, Mista, and Abaccio. Yeah, I I I have started to like Abaccio more and more. Like, over yeah. time. He, much like the wine he drinks, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. I agree. I, I... think, uh, I also, th I just love how dedicated he is to Bruno. I'm like, yeah. literally, yeah. literally mommy and daddy energy. True. Um, I think, like, definitely, like, Bruno is up there for me. I think because he's also kind of the leader, I guess, like, I'll choose another one, too, just to make it, like, a little bit more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think probably my favorite me. other than that would probably be Narancha. I was going to say Mista for me then. Yeah, I, I like Narancha. I like Narancha a lot, but I feel like Mista is just such a fucking like. He, he feels like the Polnareff of the part. True. Too. Like, I agree. He's a real goofball. He's got some really cool moments. Uh, almost none of his. <laughs> almost none of his bullets hit the opponent. It usually just hits him again somehow. <laughs> he shoots himself more than he does other people. You know, which is I just, pretty funny. I just thought of this, and I don't know, like, how you guys would feel about it, but, like, it just came to me. It came to me in a dream. Uh, <laughs> Mista is kind of, like, the anti-Usopp, if you think about it. Huh. Now, what, what do you, like, like, as a marksman? Or, like, like, what do you mean by that? 
I guess like because as I'm a curious. marksman. I guess like as a marksman. I think their personalities are also just like similar but different uh, as well. I'm not Ex really. Sh yeah, Except I'm not like yeah. M Mista's less of a coward. He's more yeah. of like the opposite. Yeah, no, he's like very anything. like he's very bullheaded. Whereas Usopp is like not a coward. Like he is confident where it counts. Uh, but like yeah, he will go out of his way to like lie and deceive to like get his way out of it. If, if there's one thing about Araki's uh, character writing that I actually really enjoy, is when he decides to add in really weird details about a character, mm -hmm. like how Meast is just afraid of the number four. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's, like, I love that shit. Like, how Josuke gets mad when people insult his hair. And he actually has a character reason for it that, like, reinforces his, like, character traits and stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah, no, I think, like, Araki is, like, probably one of the masters when it comes to, like, just little tiny, like, character details. Because like, I feel like that's really how you, like, create a character. Like, obviously, like, a lot of people yeah. come into making a character by thinking of, like, a general, like, plot outline or just like various traits for them but i think a character is really defined and you don't really like start making them until you think about like the little details like what, what's agree, their favorite yeah. food like what is their what do they do in their like spare time like how do they yeah. style their hair in the morning another another really cool thing about josuke that got like kind of more fleshed out in the anime adaptation is uh in the manga, like during that arc where the the origami guy shows up, it's established that he always bites his lip when he gets anxious or scared, mm -hmm. uh, and that's only brought up in the manga, like in that arc. However, in the anime, like if you watch it, they're so w the anime crew in part four is so weirdly detailed with that shit. Where there is a bunch of scenarios where you'll see Josuke reacting to something in the anime, and he's always biting his lip. It's great. <laughs> It's, it's one of those details I really like. You know, I don't think I ever noticed that before, but yeah. that is really cool. Also, uh, like, again, part four is amazing. The part four anime adaptation, I don't know what the anime crew was on yeah. at the time. There are so many tiny details and consistencies. Like, everybody knows how, like, uh, there is that scene during the Red Hot Chili Pepper fight where you see Kira Yoshikage like on screen for like a, a second in the background. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but he's actually, you can find him a, in a bunch more different scenes like throughout the part. Like it's not just that one moment. Yeah, like uh, the one that comes to my mind is just like the one like couple little shots of him in the uh, original opening before they switched to Chase. Yeah, like, oh my God. Like those things too. Oh man, and I like that that was out. That was also an, an Iraqi idea because uh, he talked in a in an interview about how like he had asked the anime team to insert Kira like in the background in more scenes because at the time when he was writing he didn't really have the idea of Kira until you know closer to when he was introduced so he never got to do something like that but he always regretted not being able to. Uh, so you know they did that a bunch. Yeah, and also, no. uh, shout out to uh, Araki for making an actual map of Morio that is, like, consistent. Like, where characters are standing in scenes, you can see in the background, like, you can see Cinderella, like, the the makeup place, like, in the background of shots as early as, like, like episode mm. five. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, this basketball is, uh, <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. I think this should be the last time we do basketball. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't think we're going to do I, basketball. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I love basketball. Oh, it's a basketball. Oh, it's a baseball. Sorry, by the way, for JoJo posting super no, hard no, on no. the stream. But... No, it's we're, fine. Like, it's something we all have in common. Might we're just, we're just here to hang out anyway. But yeah, I when, when I first got into that series, I was fucking insufferable. <laughs> because none of my, my, no, my no, no one I knew watched it so I was just like hey you know it'd be so crazy like, if, if, JoJo's if you guys watch Jojo and that that just became my personality for a while is, is being like hey if you want an anime wreck I got one for you <laughs> <laughs> like a back alley dealer <laughs> yeah again though that was like uh, the first anime that I really clicked with and watched long term was Jojo before that I think the only anime that I really watched was uh, one called Kanichi the Mightiest Disciple oh I remember that 
I've never heard yeah. of that. What's that about? Uh, it is. I, I think it's classified as a shonen. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm but it's sure just you could about. Call it a shonen. It's like it's set in the real world. It follows a kid named Kenichi who wants to learn martial arts, uh, and you will not believe what this guy does. He <laughs> learns martial arts. No way. Yeah, and he gets into all sorts of shonen hijinks where like he has to fight his bullies, but his bullies also know martial arts, and then it gets higher stakes because he gets involved with like fighting gangs and stuff like that and he has five different teachers and he's kind of like the avatar where it's like instead of learning all four elements he's learning all five t different types of martial arts and combining them into like his own fighting style mm. um, it's actually really cool though it's a really cool idea the show was ass but like <laughs> i watched it it sucks but you know good idea yeah I, I i it has it has some moments that i really really like but it also has like the most like generic anime tropes of all time where like mm -hmm. Kenichi has like a girl that he has a crush on that like uh, also knows martial arts and like works uh, at the same dojo that he goes to uh and also she has big boob with a flap yeah i'm sure they're real normal about it too yeah and she has to wear a skin tight purple bodysuit yeah, for her uh, training uh, a skin tight purple bodysuit with like like holes so that the boobs are separate for some reason, oh which doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah, it it do be like that. Yeah. Damn it! Also, God, this giant fucking sea monster over here. Waggling. Yeah, I want to get to the sea monster. Uh, Moonlit Lady, I'm currently working on a project with a decent amount of characters, and I'm curious on what you guys think makes a character likable in a fan base. Uh, well, in a fan base, <laughs> yeah, there are several genuinely, ways you can answer this question. Like, genuinely speaking, as someone who has a lot of experience with this, uh, you don't get to choose. Uh, like, so, like, obviously there are traits that are going to be appealing to specific kinds of people, like your Tumblr sexy men and stuff like that. But, like, the thing about making a likable character, I, I think more often than not, is to just, like, make sure that they are well-rounded and have, like, a variety of, like, interests and concepts to, uh, to interact with that you can, like, milk some good ideas off of. And, like, if you if you're able to do that, like... The actual, like, traits and identity of the character will just kind of come naturally and people will start to like them for one reason or another. I, I think flawed characters are always the best, comparatively to not flawed characters. I agree. Because they also just create more specific scenarios that would only happen with them. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Can this sea monster stop swiping me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I um, I think I... the other uh, really good thing about flawed characters mm -hmm. uh, is just that um, typically, like, they will make scenarios, like, y you kind of said, all right, like, they will make scenarios that only they can be in, but they will also fuck up scenarios that only they can fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But that also makes them 100% more interesting than, like, yeah. any other sorts of, like, perfect characters or anything. Uh, like, one of my favorite things about, like, a character like All Might from, uh, My Hero Academia is that, you know, it might not be a character flaw, like, that causes issues that he's in control of, but he has that timer when he can become, like, superhero All Might compared to little weak twink. Congratulations, by the way. Yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, Yet let's, again. Let's change mode. Um, uh, what is it? Let's but, go back uh, to classic, uh, I think. Okay. One of my favorite little tidbits about, like, how do you make a character that people latch onto is from uh, Toby Fox. Because, <laughs> and I think everybody here knows fucking Toby Fox, Undertale, Deltarune, oh, obviously. Yeah. I, I needs no introduction. But when Deltarune Chapter 2 came out and everybody latched onto Spamton, like, super hard, he said, I think on Twitter or, like, in an interview or in some sort of documentation, he was like, so initially, when we put Spamton in the game, all of the playtesters fucking hated him. Yeah. And like, we were seriously considering like 
changing him or like removing him in some way or like making him even more optional but we decided against it just kind of based on off of a whim and then to see the entire internet latch on to this guy that pretty much every playtester despised is so funny because yeah. you really can't like you can try your best to design a likable character but and there are ways of doing it it's just you're not always in control of that you know yeah yeah, because I, uh, honestly, I would say that, like, I think a character's incidental traits that, like, people gravitate toward individually are way more interesting for that reason, because you can really tell when a character is made specifically, like, kind of with that factory mindset of, like, I have to give them as many, like, marketably <laughs> likable traits as possible, uh, because then it just kind of starts to feel like, oh, they were made yeah. specifically yeah. to get this demographic. <laughs> like made in a test tube in order mm. to attract the most like people yeah. who like that specific genre trope or whatever it is some sometimes the the mark of a, a character that's like super likable is just that they were made authentically and it's it's a in a in authenticality that only you can provide mm -hmm. as a yeah, creator literally because like spammed in is basically just like it's just toby fox's humor yeah like condensed into like a little fucking gremlin man. Yeah, I maintain this I like writing principle. I think like no matter what you make, uh, whether you try to avoid it or otherwise, your character is going to be in some way representative of you. Uh, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't matter like whether that's like a thing about yourself that like you hate or that you hate to see or like you just like really love. Uh, like it's going to come out no matter what and so i think that should be something that is embraced rather than hidden because a lot of people like will try and like go to great lengths to make their characters like not like them because they think it's getting them out of their comfort zone or whatever but i think the opposite is typically yeah. way more effective i i agree and that also brings me to the idea of like a lot of people say write what you know but when they're saying that like don't think about it like oh write like write like only positive things like mm -hmm. If you have, like, really negative experiences in your life, you can draw from those, too. Mm -hmm. You can also, like, kind of, like, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, what are, what are aspects of me that I feel, like, anxious about or, like, that I don't like? And you can use those to kind of form characters as well. Yeah. In fact, I think, like, a lot of, like, fantastic characters come from, like, fears, phobias, and, like, I don't know, bad experiences that you can't really get anywhere but on the page like yeah i can't think of a great example off the top of my head but i feel like it just creates something investing because like you are the one who knows how this affects you and so you can like you know just speak your truth about it i mean like you know we talked about him a lot but look at someone like Araki, where like <laughs> for part seven he literally put his own fetish into one of his characters yeah and people constantly still talk about it because it it doesn't it it's not only just like a really funny moment but like it's just that extra little bit of like oh man he just like me for real except I don't have that fetish and that's a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> like I I'm so I'm so much more drawn to Johnny as a character knowing that he's kind of a fucking freak. True. What was no, it I completely again? agree. Uh, he it, the fetish was a Rocky has this weird fetish for like bug bites. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, especially like mosquito bites. So like when when like uh people have like a, a bug bites them and they have a bump on their skin, especially if you do that thing where you can take your nail and you can make like a little X mark mm -hmm. on it. He just randomly was like, Okay, I'm gonna have Johnny and Gyro have a have their like last discussion together their last major discussion where they decide hey we're gonna share secrets with each other and gyro is like oh no my secret is that my name's not actually gyro it's caesar and johnny is like i fucking love edward <laughs> when people, when people get bug bites oh fuck Jar was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? i thought we were keeping this simple but <laughs> <laughs> holy shit what are you on about? <laughs> what? Wait, where did the... Where did the oh. Damn Pharaoh's curse. 
Yeah, what is going on here? I found it. The Pharaoh's curse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to expel it. Have you read JoJo fan fictions? No, but I have read JoJo fan doujins, not porn ones. Yeah. I need to clarify that. There's a uh, no, doujin doesn't I had to necessarily do mean you. porn. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I accidentally. Marcy had to read a <laughs> Jotaro, uh, Jotaro X Kakyo and horse porn doujin on accident. Whoopsies. <laughs> I genuinely forgot iceberg, that. Yeah, yeah I. Again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it, it, it made for funny content. That's all that matters. It did, yeah. But, um... Yeah, no, like, I, I a lot... Of, oh, look, it's the gingerbread guy again. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's there again. He must be, like, the mascot or something. He's on a little journey. Um, But, yeah, uh, well, what's it called? Uh, A lot of people think that the term doujin is specifically reserved for porn but there's yeah, a lot no. of like fan doujin that's just like it's basically just like manga fan or manga or comic fan fiction mm -hmm. uh and there, there's a couple really good jojo ones that i really like some of them translated some of them not some of them i just have to appreciate the art for what they are uh and there's 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 like a doujin series where i think the first one was basically it's like it's like a chibi kakyoin in part three and that's the whole joke like the entire the entirety of the part it's just like a chibi kakyoin and everybody else is like big and muscle muscly <laughs> and that's it and there's there's another one that's also like chibi dio and like chibi jotaro that i really like and of course there's that really well-known one that i see get circled around every yeah. once in a while where it's like uh jolene goes to morio as a kid yes 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 i really like yeah, that one yeah no i remember that one because didn't they, like, I mean, I, I don't know if it was necessarily inspired by that, but I know they literally put, like, Kid Jolene in uh, Eyes of Heaven. In Eyes of Heaven, yeah. I was very thankful because uh, I got Jolene's VA to talk yes. about that for the iceberg, which was really cool. Kira is a very talented, cool person. Kira is insanely talented and insanely cool. I, that is also not the first time that I've worked with her on a JoJo thing. Uh, like, ages ago, uh, we we did JoJo fan projects together, and I oh, had her yeah. voice Jolene a couple of times, and I still get comments of people being like, wow, dude, that Jolene voice is so close to the Netflix one. Yeah, that, and I'm like, it, well, it sure see. is, bud. It sure is close to the official English dub. You're right. Yeah, it, it it's... It, is sad that Eyes of Heaven is kind of like a bad game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really like the concept of Eyes of Heaven. Uh, don't like playing it. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of anime tie-in games are kind yeah. of like that, though, which yeah. sucks. And it, it's uh, so... We never get, like, like uh, JoJo games that have their own story like that, so it makes me so sad that it's mm. not a better game. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think the best JoJo game is probably that, like, 90s fighting game. <laughs> Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heritage it, for the Future rocks. Yeah. It does. Uh, I, I pl I've I been playing it on and off on, like, my little handheld thing, but uh, I also really like All-Star Battle, but that just mm. might just be me. I like All-Star Battle. Well, I think no, it has I've a really good like mix of... Much. I think it has a really good mix of, like, fan service stuff and actually kind of fun mechanics and gameplay. I like how they integrated a lot of the stands into, like, combat. Like, Okuyasu has this thing where he can actually erase spacing, so he's like an anti-zoner. I, I like that idea a lot. Mm. But yeah, a lot of anime games, sadly, kind of suck. Unless you're Dragon Ball. Yeah. Then all of your games pretty much shred. <laughs> yeah. I have so many fond memories playing, like, fucking Budokai with the boys on PS2 back in the day. Yeah, I, uh, my first Dragon Ball experience was through uh, Budokai 2. I believe, or Budokai Tenkaichi, what, whatever is the side, the side, uh, the 2D fighting, the 2.5D fighting game mm -hmm. one. It covers like uh, the Saiyan Saga all the way up to uh, the Cell Saga, which is where I thought the story ended yeah. for a very long time. A lot of people would think that it should. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, to some, in some aspects, it kind of, it kind of did yeah. for a bit. 
I I enjoy the Boo Saga, uh, but it's definitely not my favorite. I, I'm going to be real, like, uh, as much as I love Dragon Ball, I've never really watched it or read it in full. Really? I, I watched through the entire original Dragon Ball and I mm. loved it. Uh, and then I started watching Kai while I was in college because I never, like I said, I never watched through all of it. And I stopped somewhere during the Frieza saga. I think I got distracted by exams at the time or something. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it, I never really experienced it in full. And I, I feel really weird saying that because I do really like Dragon Ball. Well, uh, uh, you know, now's the perfect time. Uh, yeah. it, it sadly is. Uh, I have the first volume of the manga like on my shelf, or not the first volume, but uh, Viz Viz has these things called like what are they called? Like Viz oh, Bigs. Oh, Viz Bigs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they have like this really, really nice paper quality to them. And I've been thinking about collecting Dragon Ball through those, mm-hmm. uh, and just like start reading it because I have the first Viz Big edition of the original Dragon Ball, and it is. Ooh, it is nice to read. Mm-hmm. It's it's very nice in the hands. It's uh, got good paper quality, uh, despite being so big. Because that's one of my biggest problems with omnibus releases is usually the paper quality sucks. Yeah, like they have these one piece thick ones where like the yeah. paper quality is like it, it's like it's, newspaper. Yeah, it's flimsier than like a receipt. Uh, I uh, actually own a couple of those. Yeah, we have a couple of them in the library. Uh, but I own the single volumes of, like, volumes 1 through, like, 92. So, uh... Mm-hmm. We okay, do not, where... uh, display the big ones. <laughs> okay, where is the... Oh my god, it's up there? How do I even... Wait, yeah, where... Oh, okay. Jesus, what am I... <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, what are we supposed to do here, exactly? I think we I have guess... to go around the back. Yeah. Oh. Huh? What just oh. happened to me? But yeah, I, given, you know, the recent news about Toriyama, I've, I've really been considering going through, like, his entire catalog, finally. Like, mm-hmm. starting with some of his, like, you know, early stuff and then into Arale. Uh... Oh, yeah, into uh, Dr. Slump. Yeah, Dr. Slump. I, I meant to say Dr. Slump, but I was thinking, like, oh, Raleigh. Uh, ooh, another another way uh, I originally experienced original Dragon Ball. Uh, similarly to uh, the Budokai games, which is how I experienced Z primarily, because I, I just couldn't catch it on TV or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I experienced the original Dragon Ball through a game called uh, Dragon Ball Origins on uh, DS. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that vaguely. I can't speak on the first Origins game, but I played through the second one, and it is one of my favorite Dragon Ball games. It is so underrated. I hear huh. nobody talk about it. Uh, mostly mostly because uh, the first Origins games is entirely touchscreen controls, and I hate that. I see. I'm very, like, if you force me to use the gimmick of your system to play the game, I'm not going to like it unless, like... It's like something like Rhythm Heaven or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Origins 2 has like like actual button controls and uh, it it is so cool. Uh, it also has some like very convincing additions to the story that I thought were in the original uh, but aren't at all. Like uh, there's there's a very interesting surprise boss fight with uh, Tao Pai Pai or whatever ah. his name is. Ge- mm. General Tao? Yeah, Tao Pai Pai, General Tao, both of them. Both are right. Um, he, obviously, you know, he's he's a major antagonist in, in Dragon Ball for a while. Uh, but then he, you know, once he gets defeated, you never hear from him again uh, until some filler content in Z, I think. Yeah. Uh, or, or or maybe he's in one of the one of the tournaments, maybe? I don't remember. I know that his, like, brother trains Tien or something. I or maybe I'm just making guy. that up. Or, yeah. Or yeah, it's been a while since I read original yeah. Dragon Ball. Like I said, I need to catch I need to like go back and read it again. Or I watched it so I would read it for the first time. But mm. uh, I, would, I would generally recommend reading the manga. It's it's very good. Yeah, I, I hear you know the mo- I, I wanna I wanna see the thing that was so formative for mm. so many creators, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh I feel like I'm kinda missing out. Um but 
Yeah, no, in Dragon Ball Origins 2, uh, during that segment of Dragon Ball story where they they have that small tournament with all of, like, the monster characters, uh, and Goku's dad is, like, or, or grandfather is back for a little bit, mm. uh, they actually have a fight with uh, Tao Pai Pai because he gets brought back for oh. some reason, and you have to fight him as, like, an extra secret boss. It's like, I didn't even know it was filler until i watched the original series no that's like a fun it, idea though yeah and and what's cool too is like the the game is kind of like an overhead like uh an overhead zelda like game mm -hmm. but during the tau pai 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 specifically it just becomes budokai <laughs> where it just becomes a 2d fighter out of nowhere and it's great honestly amazing game if anyone's interested please check it out yeah i'll have to give that a look see no, that sounds like fun. It also has a lot of surprising extra content and like bonus stuff, which yeah. I always love in games. Like, in if any game has just a bunch of like secret extra stuff, like WarioWare has that. Like all mm. the games, you can get, you can unlock so many different things. I miss games having like a ton of bonus content. Like that. yeah, same. That yeah, isn't just like DLC. Like yeah. honestly, even uh. Like, old licensed games, like, when they would have, like, trailers and stuff for other, like, media at the time was nice. I agree. Ah, uh, yes, the the Spongebob battle for Bikini Bottom, like, having yeah. trailers for, like, a Fairly Odd Parents game or you, something. You know what's so crazy? That was one of the first things I thought of when we said bonus content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though it's not, like, that good of bonus content, it's just still a thing, I guess. Yeah, like, I mean, something's better than nothing. Usually. You're telling me that I can unlock a trailer for a game I'm not going to play? <laughs> this <Awesome>. is awesome! <laughs> uh, uh, I remember I'm they, to they did that in like Crash Bandicoot stuff with Spyro a lot, too. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of, like, a lot of cross stuff with Crash and Spyro, but never really, like, a game besides that GBA one that, like, yeah, nobody really likes. The, like, cross dual release, which is, like, it was honestly such a cool idea. Uh, I really wish they took more care of it. Yeah. <laughs> what an amazing idea. Let's put it on GBA and make it not play like any of the games that people yeah. like. Let's make it bad. <laughs> yeah, I, let's make it shit. I remember uh, like when it was coming out, uh, they had like McDonald's, like Tiger Electronics for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I used to own, like, a shit ton of those. Uh, they apparently go for a pretty penny these days. Uh, but this is also just me kind of segueing into uh, Vis -a Vis, like, Tiger Electronics. Do you guys remember those, like, old, really badly animated Sonic commercials? Yeah. <laughs> for the Tiger them. Electronics. Rogue. <laughs> Shadow, Shadow Basketball. <laughs> Shadow Basketball. Oh, so amazing. They look so horrifying. I know. And like most of them didn't even look finished. Yo, shout out shout out to uh one of I I I streamed a bunch of like Sonic fan games for like uh Sage, which is like uh like a a game expo for like Sonic and Sonic like games and just and indie games in general. Good job once again. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh but there was an absolute mad lad who made a Sonic Tiger Electronics games emulator. Oh my god. I was like, I genuinely don't think I know of anybody who is interested in this, but I'm so glad that somebody made it. Yeah, I mean, like, Sonic fans are, I think, probably one of the most dedicated in terms of just, like, preserving stuff overall for the series seriously i am so i'm always so impressed by that also i i really dig the music track for this stage yeah it's giving good vibes yeah sort of chanty though honestly i'm not sure if i can hear it like uber well with the audio setup i have it kind of just mm. sounds like they're going this <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's any chanting. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's just what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a lot uh, of like, long synths. 
Okay, I can hear it like a little bit more now. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel this way. I, I was talking about how I was getting into Dragon Quest earlier, but I think some of my favorite gaming experiences recently have been getting into retro stuff that I've never touched before. And at the same time, using like if i ever get stuck using like an official guide and then like watching a documentary on how the game was made and stuff like that mm -hmm. no yeah, i'm just absolutely. I, I love i love hearing like i love getting into something and then getting to like absorb the latter half of content that i've never touched yeah. with it before oh no yeah like no, uh one of the big things, like, anytime I get really into something, like, one of the first things I do after I finish it is, like, go look up, like, everything about how it was made that's available. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out TV Tropes. True. TV Tropes and fan wikis are, like, my life. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always just, it's fun. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jetpack? What, huh? The, the fucking this... What? This golf game is going kind of insane. <laughs> Why can't all golf games just have this stupid shit in them? I think I think there's like some indie game that's like mini golf, but like every single course has a different gimmick. Mm. No. God bless indie devs. Oh, Elster uh, asked, "Am I going to play Kikonia?" Uh, yes, eventually. I'm just like, right now, I'm kind of putting it off a little bit, because even though I love Ryukishi, I love his writing, I'm sure it'll be really good. Uh, because it's on hiatus, and I don't know when it's going to get another installment, I'm just like, I'm almost kind of like, if I read it now, and it's still incomplete, then I'm gonna, like, be suffering while waiting for the next one. Oh, also, shout out, I played Earthbound for the first time recently. Oh, hell yeah. Great game. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic game. Great game, and so much cool information is archived out there about it, so I'm so happy. <laughs> God. Uh, uh, do, you think you're, uh, do you think you're ever going to get around to Mother 3? I actually started Mother 3, and you know what's so weird? Mm. I may have burned myself out on Mother because I played the first one, like the NES one, and then Earthbound. Uh... I loved both of them. Even though Earthbound was a little bit of a grind uh, to get through in some places because some of the stuff is a little bit vague because it's just a game of that time. Uh, interestingly, I played Mother 3 first ages ago. Uh, I never got to finish it because my save data got corrupted. Oh, that's um, so fucked. Yeah. So I picked it back up again and I kind of just fell off of it. I think it's because I just like I spammed Mother content for a mm. while. And I needed to take a little you, bit of a break. Yeah, you need like a little bit of a breather to yeah. sort of digest the other ones. I also think that like, even though like obviously Mother 1 and 2 are kind of linear games, Mother 1 a little bit less because it's more open. Uh, it's so interesting going into like Mother 3 and how linear it feels, mm -hmm. at least initially. So that kind of like weirdly... The, the heavier focus on a coherent story actually kind of put me off initially. Huh. Interesting. I I know. It's it's very strange. I'm, my opinions are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I kind of get it, though. Like, mm -hmm. just because if you're, if you're doing, like, one type of thing for so long, it's kind of like, oh, God, okay, I need a break. You really yeah. just need to give yourself a moment to yeah. relieve Mother yourself. Three's, Mother 3 is obviously, like, most likely a masterpiece based off how everybody talks about it, but I just need a little bit of a... Which is why I hopped onto Dragon Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was like, I need more classic RPGs to fill my brain. Who, who turned me into a peppermint patty? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. You're the reason why everything bad is happening. Yes, if you ever have to ask that question, yes. <laughs> Oh, oh god. This, uh, this black hole is not... Oh, also, uh, for, for the person that says they want to get into more video games but they don't have money, uh, as much as I, like, kind of despise Epic Games, something I'll give them credit for is they do have that free weekly game stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just love any free stuff that I can get. True. Like, th through that, like, they, they actually gave out, like, Death Stranding once they gave out uh, uh, GTA 5 was one of the biggest ones they did 
They gave it out for like, I think like three days or something. Uh, I got all of the Bioshock games from that. Damn. They sometimes like out of nowhere just have some crazy picks, especially when it's like New Year's or like Christmas. They go crazy with that stuff. So like make an Epic Games account if you don't have one already and just kind of check in every week. Right now they're they're putting out a bunch of like good indie games to or interesting indie games. I don't know if they're good. I haven't played them, but okay. uh... yeah, oh, yeah. Almost every Fallout game they've they've also released. I have Fallout from that too. Somebody, where's the person? Oh yeah, salty. Have you considered the classic Yik a postmodern RPG? <laughs> I own Yik. <laughs> I have never played so it. Sorry. I just needed to have it in my catalog. I mean, every time I hear about it, I'm just like, I need to play this one day. Yeah. Credit where it's I... due to them for like actually updating the game significantly, though. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... Yeah. Good on them. I was gonna say, like, regardless of how the it, like originally panned out, like they actively listened to criticism and tried their best to like make the game better, like every few months or so. It's pretty insane. I'm also glad that, like, for as much as it's shit on, it seems like people really do have a fondness for for it. Like, in, in a similar way to, like, the Star Wars prequels, where, like, is it a good game? Probably not. Is it pretty fucking funny? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to uh, play Yik Royal 5 Royals, see how much they fixed. I, <laughs> I, I have a mutual of mine that, that voiced a character in that game. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I forget what they said about it. They were just like, they said something really fucking funny. Oh man, I wish I could remember. But I, I think they were like, yeah, no, my audio quality for recordings in that game was like horrible, but they were fine with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know what character they were. It's like a blonde character. Oh, they played, um, was that? I don't remember his name, but his like, his character trait is that like, He's like constantly on the verge of suicide. I think. Yeah, I maybe. Was that? But like his, his uh, mic quality is so much worse. Than was that? Else's. Was that Yuri of Wind? Yeah, it was Yuri of Wind. That's right. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> that shit is so funny. Oh my god. God, where am I going? I would love to voice in an RPG. Oh, same. even if it was absolutely garbage, like I feel like that's so, such yeah. an interesting thing. Yeah, one of the best things about video game voice acting, to me in particular, actually, is just like, even if you are in like a shitty game, there's like no, like that's not on you. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I've I've heard some pretty fucking good performances in like the worst games ever. And also, some of the worst voice acting performances in some of the best games I've ever played. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, like, you really just get to make it your own. Yeah. Like, sh a shout out to uh, House of the House of the Dead series for some of my favorite voice acting oh, in any God, video game yeah. ever. And by favorite, I don't mean good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really funny. Like, please, please, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out, uh, check out the cutscenes for House of the Dead 2. Especially the final boss. The final boss has, like, a weird... I don't... I don't know if it's, like, a lisp or something, but it's, like, mm. it's obviously making it very hard for them to say their lines. God. And they're trying to sound intimidating, they're like, Here I am! I am here! I am the Emperor! You sound like, uh, like, like a film cow video character or something. <laughs> Man, oh my god, I love film cow so much. Same. Uh, Jason Steele, what a guy. I, I got friends together to watch Detective Heart of America when it first came out. Oh man, I still need to see that. It's, it's really funny. God bless film cow. I genuinely think, like... I mean, I know it's it's kind of got, like, some, like, of the time sort of, like, meme humor to it, uh, but, like, I genuinely think, like, Charlie the Unicorn is, like, really good, especially by the end of it. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah. No, I, I agree. 
You know, funnily enough, uh, Charlie the Unicorn was one of the reasons I named my dog uh, Charlie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I just I I remember I watched uh, I watched those videos around that time when I first got my dog, and uh, that and I also really liked Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when I was mm. younger. So, oh, uh, so I was like, around. yeah, all loops back around, full circle, just like a golf ball. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, true, golf balls are round. They they do you know, be doing that until we change them. <laughs> yeah, until we change them. Like oh that. my god. Jesus. What is going on? I just on? realized I haven't been using power-ups this entire game. I mean, that might be why you're fucking winning, because, like, I'm just focused on getting these. Yeah, they are a little out of the way sometimes. Oh my god. <laughs> why would you do this to me? We all did the same thing. Oh, that's so messed up. I got teleported back to the start of the freaking course, no. too. Why would you do this? Why? Who's putting honey in the tube? <laughs> that oh, was, that uh, was me. Yeah, that was not me. Okay, there you go. Man, all these portals got me thinking about the hit video game Portal by Valve. True. Uh, speaking of good video games, uh, I, I honestly feel like my appreciation for Portal just, like, grows more and more over the mm -hmm. years. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, like, games, like, we, we talked about how, like, there's so many games we want to get into that, like, require such a big commitment, and Portal was not one of them no. for me. Portal no, is absolutely a, not. a game that I can pretty much, like, pick up and play almost any day. And it's such a short experience, too, that's, like... It, it's so good all the way through. Yeah. Like, I, I really do not feel like there's a lull at any point. No. no it is, it's almost, in some ways, I, I regard it as, like, a perfect video game. Yeah. And I think it's also a really good argument for, like, shorter games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Also, GLaDOS, my beloved. Yeah. Uh, hot video game women. GLaDOS She's up there. is on there, yeah. Also, one of a, a really good example of a game that got a sequel that I, I think, you know, while it is longer and has a lot more shit going on, I still think it's just as good. But that just might be me. I feel like some people probably have different opinions on it. Mm. But yeah, I, I really like Portal 2. Yeah, I, I love Portal 2. It's one of probably like one of my all time favorite games. I remember there was some insane Twitter thread I saw on, on Twitter that was like, how can people like Portal 2? It has so much, like, lol random XD internet humor in it. And I'm like, dude, it made lol XD random internet humor. Yeah. It was it was the originator. And, like, the thing about it is I still think a majority of the humor in Portal 2 is funny. Agreed, yeah. yeah. Like, sure, there may be, like, a couple lines here and there that are, like, more non sequitur than others. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's kind of, you know, like random xd but like i don't know i think for the most part they're still they still hold up really well shout out to one of my favorite stupid gags in any video game the part where he kills you yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like the music track the achievement and the title drop at the same time <laughs> this is the part where i kill you this uh, is the part where he kills us steven merchant killed it as we know he did uh, I also One of my think... favorite Steve Merchant uh, uh, roles. Yeah, he also, uh, funnily enough, uh, he killed it in Logan, uh, too. I was not expecting to see him in that movie. <laughs> I didn't even know he was in Logan. I, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, I forget what exact character uh, that he plays, but he plays, like, a bit X-Men part, and he's just, like, he's fucking fantastic in it. Holy shit, he's an X-Man? Yeah. Well, now, uh, now I gotta know. Yeah, now I need to know. I'm like, no. is this a comics character that he played? Because, I'm, like... No, I believe it is. Uh, I just can't remember the name. Uh, but, like, Logan, I think, is probably one of the best comic book movies ever made. Like, it's fantastic. It's on my list. I, I got, like... I don't know what was going on with me in, like, 2023, but, like, early 2023, I just started, like, 
marathoning a shit ton of superhero movies and I, I watched like all the original X-Men films and like first class and shit and I had a really good time even though you know the first class movies kind of fall off after the first yeah. one <laughs> yeah uh, I like Days of Futures Past well enough but it's definitely a bit of a downgrade uh, and then Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix are just we don't we don't talk about that <laughs> yeah uh, I'm trying to think it I, d I just really like how like what what's the name of the actor that plays Magneto in like the first class movies? Uh, I really like him. Uh god, it's not Ian Malcolm. I'm thinking about the guy from Jurassic Park. Uh It's okay. Ian something. Yeah, though those scenes where he like hunts down Nazis to kill them is like, "Oh my god, uh, this goes so crazy." God, I love movies. True. <laughs> Uh, also, before I forget, somebody, uh, Snubmoth in chat, <laughs> asked us to comment our thoughts about Homestuck. So, I guess... I'm ready I... To, I don't know if I'm ready to tell Salty about what I do for a living. <laughs> no, you got it. You got to say it, Austin. You have to. Okay. No. I make... Uh... I'm not even gonna say like this is a oh, humble brag. Like I, I genuinely make like one of the most popular Homestuck fandom things ever. Ooh, yep. interesting. What is it? Uh, it's called Vast Error. It's a web comic. Interesting. I I have a friend of mine who's like extremely into Homestuck. I, I'm I'm sure they probably would recognize that. Oh, are uh, are they the same person who uh, played Vriska in Friendlock? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they follow me on Twitter. I okay. realized that after I watched it. That's hilarious. Okay, that's so cool. Yeah, no, I, so literally every Homestuck thing that I know about is through is through her and my friend Joe. Uh, they both have been my literal only exposure to Homestuck besides me reading, like, the first, like, I don't know, couple, like, the first batch of pages before the world, like, gets destroyed or something. Ah, uh, yes, I've, yes. I've tried so hard to get into it. I just, like, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, I feel like eventually I am going to read all of Homestuck, but it's just not right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of those things, like I mentioned earlier, where I was, like, I was, like, uh, sometimes media has to hit me at the right time. Mm -hmm. And that feels like one of those. Yeah, no, I think Homestuck is very much, like, in some regards, like, you had to be there sort of thing because yeah. like homestuck definitely still exists it definitely still has made its mark it's still doing things to this day but like you will never really get to like relive like the heyday of like 2010 to like 2013 and that's like i i feel like being involved in that age like very much like enhanced the material for a lot of people yeah also somebody asked uh isn't homestuck gone forever because flash died uh, no. no, that's not no. necessarily how stuff works. However, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, they, they, I believe, oh, it's the gingerbread guy again. Oh, yeah. Uh, they He's reformatted the website, I know. It's not, like, the same, but I know that they, like, reformatted it to, so that it works on, like, modern, like, browsers. But there's also, I think, the unofficial Homestuck collection or something that you can get yes. on itch.io. Uh, that, yeah, I know the developer for that, Bamba. She's a cool guy. Yeah, like I, I downloaded that just to like, kind of like check it out because uh, you know friends of mine had recommended it, and it is really well put together. No, it is and, extremely and, thorough. Yeah, and in like has like little like achievement. It has like an achievement system and stuff. Like that's really fun and cool. Yeah, um, and, it, and it catalogs like everything that uh, Andrew Hussey's made, like other than Homestuck as yeah. well. And I just like I think that's super neat because yeah, a lot of that was sort of either scrubbed or lost in the transition uh, from Flash to HTML5. And uh, yeah, I I especially like uh, like I said, I I've never really gotten into Homestuck, but that has not stopped me from like randomly splicing in Homestuck jokes into videos, uh, oh, yeah. or like just random images of Homestuck characters to have people be like, "Does Derek know about Homestuck?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Ah, no." I just, I just like how the characters look a lot of the time. I mean, Especially yeah. when people make, like, troll sonas of characters that already exist. Like, yeah. in, 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 like, an ancient vlog video of mine, we mentioned Family Guy, and 
like normally I'd put a picture of Family Guy on the screen or something, but instead I put like Family Guy MS Paint troll edit that I found on like my computer in like early 2000s. Love that stuff. But yeah, don't have much experience with Homestuck yet other than uh, randomly putting it in my videos for no reason other than the fact that my friends read it and talk to me about it. You should uh, do, I can't remember what streamer did this. It was a popular streamer, I know, but I don't remember think... specifically who it was. A member of Vine Sauce, I think, yes. read all of it, Where it was, on I stream. Think you're, you're was yeah, like, I think you're donate money and I will bro. read more pages. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if, if I really get ever down bad for money, which I don't know, I might be soon, but we'll see. <laughs> that I will, I will one hundred percent do that. I'm not even joking. Uh, I'll, I'll do a subathon, but for reading Homestuck. I think people would like that. Yeah. I know, you... I know for a fact. There's a pretty huge chunk of people that watch my stuff that would definitely cause issues for me. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever get around to doing that, you should like, I don't know, maybe make it like a joint thing, and then get like. Because there's a shit ton of characters in Homestuck. Oh my god, yeah. But the only thing is, is that, like, I... Uh, organizing stuff for stuff like Friendlock was already, like, yeah. uh, torture. You actually literally torture us. <laughs> but uh, we pulled it off. I just don't know. I would definitely not be able to get people to stay on stream with me mm -hmm. for the entire time to read stuff. They'd probably definitely hop in because the idea of reading Homestuck for an audience is just hilarious. Um, I have pondered doing it myself at some point just because I think, uh, you know, since obviously I'm already reading something that's really long for an audience of voicing every character. I mean, why not? Yeah, I mean, you, like, you also have a very good voice for reading things, Marcy. You, I, you I do. Think. Which is also why I like watching your videos, because it's very easy for me to listen to. I appreciate that. And yeah, they don't call it Nazumi VA for nothing. <laughs> oh man, shout out to when I first made a YouTube channel and I was considering putting VA in the title. Uh huh. And I was just like, ah, eh, no. <laughs> Because, like, everybody was doing it when I when I made a channel. Like, all my internet friends were like, Ah, uh, yes, I am also VA. VA, VA, VA. And now and I'm it's like, kind yeah. of like, uh, people don't really yeah. do it as much anymore. Not really, no. It kind of stopped being a thing for, for a lot of people. The funny thing is, like, when I did it for my channel name, honestly, I didn't, like, <laughs> anticipate that the channel was... I mean, obviously, like, most people, like, I didn't anticipate that really anybody was gonna watch me or anything. Um, and so when I chose it, it was just kind of a, like, off-the-cuff kind of like, yeah, whatever, I'm sure this works well enough. Uh, and now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have constantly pondered renaming my YouTube channel. But I feel like it's too late for me to do so. Yeah, I mean, at this point, yeah. probably. <laughs> Especially now, because, like, I've seen you have, like, people who are, like, I don't know, like, basically just, like, riffing on your name and making alternate yeah. sonas of yourself. Yeah, the only, there was a, one other streamer I know that, like, got renamed themselves and it actually worked out. Or actually two, but I don't know the other one. I, I think, uh, what's the name? Like, Ethan something? He did, like, that thing with Markiplier. Oh, uh, Crank Gameplays. Yeah, Crank Gameplays. He literally just renamed himself to just his name, and mm. it worked. Yeah, I think, like, if you're going to rename your YouTube channel, like, that's the best way to do it. Exactly, yeah. I completely yeah. Agree. Because it's at least somewhat recognizable if you've already sort of, like, told people what it is. Yeah, I think my, my biggest issue is that my name is, like, fucking whack, and it has too many letters. And no spaces. So there's been a lot of people that have come into my comments and been like, Salty Dan, I love your videos. And I'm like, you forgot the letters in the middle, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and a lot of people, there, there's been so many people that have come to me and been like, dude, I did not realize that your name was Salty DK Dan. I just thought it was Salty Dan. And I just didn't see the two letters in the middle for some reason. <laughs> And I'm just like, honestly, should I just rename myself to Salty Dan? Because a lot of people already seem to think that that's what my name is. Makes you sound like a pirate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, unfortunately, I the reason my name is the way that it is is because I ran into the very same issue that a lot of people do, 
when they make a username in that I made my username when I was really young. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was for it was for my first online account, which was Xbox Live. Uh, and literally, the reason it hit, it's named the way it is is because Xbox Live had a little tip that was like, try integrating stuff about you or stuff that you like into your username. And I'm like, well, I like salty foods. My initials are DK. And I have an OC named Dan. Okay, I'll do that. I, I'm going to be honest, for the longest time... I just kind of like assumed that DK was like, oh yeah, he really likes Donkey Kong. Yeah, I also thought that for a while. <laughs> when when I was a kid, my initials uh, did lead people to think that like, oh, D D DK like Donkey Kong. And like called me Donkey Kong like in elementary school. <laughs> Until they realized that it wasn't really that funny of a joke and then they stopped. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I'm not a big Donkey Kong fan. I don't really, I'm not a really big Donkey Kong country guy. Um, also somebody asked me the, why, like how I came up with mine and, uh, I've, I've talked about it before, but I, I can mention it again briefly. Um, so for me, it's just because a lot of my like fledgling voice acting experience online was for doing, uh, Sonic for fan projects. Like I've voiced Sonic in a lot of things. Uh, so, you know, in... In all of the Japanese dubs of Sonic games, uh, the word that they use for hedgehog is Hare Nezumi. And I was like, oh, Nezumi VA, because I voice Sonic in a lot of things. There you go. That is so interesting, because I always assumed that Nezumi was just the name of a character that you liked. No, uh, although uh, I do know some characters that have that name, and uh, not many of them are characters that I like, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Also, shout shout out shout out to me for saying Nezumi wrong in every time that I've referenced you in a video. Then, <laughs> I think I said Nezumi I instead mean, like, of Nezumi. Yeah, it, it, it's it's whatever. Like it, it's the same thing. I guess uh, just for posterity, uh, I actually had the exact opposite problem to uh, to Salty. Uh, I went through a bunch of different names uh, when I was younger because I was just like never like satisfied with it like my xbox live username my very first one was just my name and then my fucking zip code <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. the exact opposite of what you should be doing doxing yeah no I, I, do I was like doxing myself as a kid and i didn't even know it uh that's so funny and then uh for a while when i was popular on tumblr uh, I went by the name Soup Muncher, and I didn't have a real reason for- Soup Muncher! <laughs> I didn't have a real reason for why I called myself that, other than, like, I thought the idea of chewing soup was funny. Uh, and then, these days I go by Ostinato, which is literally just, like, a nickname that I was, like, given by random kids when I was younger. I was like, yeah, that sounds alright. <laughs> and then I just stuck with it. Yeah, I, uh... I feel like I am capable of creating, like, such better ideas for usernames when I don't have, like... When I don't think about how, like, that's gonna be my brand for, like, mm -hmm. years. Yeah, forever! Yeah, like, I don't want to change my name now because everybody knows me as such. But, like, if I have to come up with stupid usernames like Mitchell Musso or, like... I started reading the manga for D. Grayman recently, so in my my server with a bunch of friends of mine, I renamed myself to D's Gray Mans. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like, I like think stupid that's... shit like that. I love coming up with. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's just like a rite of passage, uh, in a lot of regards. Like, yeah, I love coming up with like stupid discord nicknames or like steam aliases and stuff. Actually, uh, I'm curious now, uh, if I, I don't know if I should put them on blast like this, <laughs> but, uh, so our mutual friend that we uh, record uh, our Higurashi podcast with that uh, is the owner of the home that Austin is in right now um, sent me yesterday, like yesterday, was like, hey, I have like a two page list of like p potential funny Steam nicknames. I want to yeah. know which one you think is the best of these. And, um, yeah, no, he gave me the same one, like, earlier today, and I gave him my top ten. Uh, yeah, let me... Do you wanna, I'm do not you gonna, wanna say yours real quick? I'm not gonna read off the full list, I'm just gonna, like, pick the, like, some of the funnier, funnier ones. 
Um, summoning Jutsu Ketamine Gorilla. Um, Ronald Baby Girl Reagan. Oh my god. Uh, what are what are what are the other ones? Uh, yeah, hold on. I I got I got like a top ten list here that uh doesn't contain only contains one that you already <laughs> said. Northrop Grumman Estrogen Pills was another yeah. one. Um, also. Uh, egg death behind the Wawa dumpster. Yeah. Uh, uh, Takaria no, with Goku in it. Uh, no, uh, Elster, this is not Tyson, by the way. Tyson lives with us. Yeah. Uh, just the Fent, please. Yeah. Uh, the, the author's thinly veiled piss fetish. Uh, <laughs> George W. Bush's shit ass paintings. Radioactive MILF. <laughs> Anthony Boy Mod Fantano. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! Oh my god! <laughs> what? How do you even come up with that? Oh my god! Yeah. We, me and uh, me and him also like very frequently uh, do like partner Steam names uh, quite a bit of the time uh, yeah, because yeah. we play we play TF2 a lot and I can't go on TF2 as myself because people actively recognize me on there. Uh, so uh, our last one was that we did like. We picked our favorite Pokemon and then just like picked a place that was like near us and then just like smashed them together. So like mine was like Snorlax from Meguiar's and then his was like Sand Slash that lives under the I-95. <laughs> What's in Power of Destruction? This could be an indie band name also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember some of the other ones that we did. Uh, I think uh, we did one where I was like Joe Liberal and he was Jerry Mander. Um. There we go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. This oh my one, god. This one is really difficult. I got it in two. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Oh, did you guys get into the giant hole? I didn't get in there. Yeah, I got in there. What the fuck? I got in there first. You're gonna have to go for sloppy thirds. Man. There we go. Oh my god. Oh my oh god. My oh my god. <laughs> Joseph Joestar on a very <laughs> subdued day. <laughs> God, now I'm just like. I mean, he thinking... does. Oh, he sorry. does say. Uh, Joseph Jostar does say, "Oh my God!" really quietly during uh, the baby arc. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. He's like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, oh. I'm thinking again about. So Austin, I, I, I guess we need to mention this because I made a tweet with this joke format that like unexpectedly blew up, but uh, we had a bit going for a while. Where we just like took like random bits of SpongeBob where like things would go wrong or whatever in like the original episodes and then we would just like riff on it and like make it like oh the the, the situation's fine actually. So like, you know, the bit where like the flying Dutchman's like, oh you know, oh I'll give you this if you sell SpongeBob to me for sixty two cents and then instead of him being like, Oh yeah, okay, he's like, No, that's okay, SpongeBob's a valuable employee and I like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very mature of you, Krabs. I'll just see myself out. Uh, yeah, and then I posted one which did not get as much traction, uh, where it was like, uh, the scene in, uh, Bubble Buddy where he's, like, standing outside the porta potty. He's like, my friend's in there. And originally the guy's like, congratulations. And it's just like, wow, you're a really supportive friend, SpongeBob. We need more people in the community like you. <laughs> I love that shit so much. Have, have have either of you seen that clip where it's like, like that guy walks into the SpongeBob clip and he's like, yeah, yes, Squidward, you really fucked up this time. <laughs> I don't think I, I've ever seen this. I can't yeah. believe that I shared a night of passion with you. <laughs> Fuck off. Guy Not who is cool writing Squidward. a self-insert Squidward fanfiction. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite SpongeBob memes now. 
I have not seen that, but I want uh, to I'll desperately. see if I can find it. Not cool, Squidward. Don't do that again. <laughs> Not cool, Squidward. Don't say that again. <laughs> Know, knowing me and how much I use Tumblr these days, I, it's probably like pretty high on my liked tweet, uh, liked a post list because I just barely log in at this point. Uh -huh. oh. I'm already getting my ass beaten golf. It's fine. I can take a moment. <laughs> I'm trying to like trick shot this and I just like can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, this is not working. Also, shout out to the people that keep making these these like weird SpongeBob comics. Oh yeah, I I think I know the ones you're talking about. Uh, are you, like, the really squished-looking ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going into labor! He pulled the pregnancy if, card already! <laughs> if he switches to the cardboard manufacturing topic, we might just clutch this. <laughs> and guess who was right? It's near the top of my legs uh... on Tumblr, of course. All right, let's Part, uh, yeah, it, it's very good. I would definitely recommend playing it on stream. Yeah, okay, hold on. Let me, uh, let me get this. Also, uh, this, this picture of Spider-Man and Doctor Doom I found. Okay, hold up. Save, save video. Okay, let me, uh, drag it into stream. <laughs> It should be copyright friendly because the clip just freezes pretty soon after it starts. Way to go, Squidward. You ruined his favorite fucking holiday. You know, there is audio. And for what? Because he fucking bothered you at work? I thought you were fucking different. When we kissed that night, I thought it was showing on the on the thing. Now I wish we never even did it. hearing it. In the and I wish we didn't do oh, that other it's stuff because either. I am playing Even it. it at the time it felt on stream. Really yeah, bright. yeah. And I've been thinking about it a lot. Now I wish we didn't. You do could it. always do like a window capture. Sure. Okay, well, I, I I got I got the video played. I, I guess I I will see it for myself later. Yeah, it's one of my favorite videos. Because the idea of somebody making themselves into like a self-insert on something, <laughs> but like with like a crappy green screen, it's just, it's so funny. I remember one comic where Patrick describes how starfish eat their prey and it ends with Spongebob being paralyzed by him and eaten? What? Yeah, I, I've seen that actually. That's like a pretty popular like Spongebob like creepypasta thing. Which is just a very funny sentence to say. <laughs> yeah, Squidward suicide. Absolute classic. Uh, I have something embarrassing to say about Squidward suicide. Uh huh. What's that? Uh, it was one of the first creepypastas that I ever found, and I was actually kind of like, ooh, it's kind of spooky and fucked up. <laughs> no, I, I actually was the same. Uh, I was very easily spooked as a wee lad, and, like, I knew that it wasn't real or anything, and I had nothing to, like, think about, but, like, I don't know, just, like, the idea of it was just, like, why would they do that to him? <laughs> yeah, no, like, okay, but mine's even dumber, because I was, like, a freshman in high school, <laughs> and I was, like, I was, like, wow, this is pretty creepy. I can't believe they'd actually make an episode like this. <laughs> like, me, me, oh my God. because I, I also... I had never gotten into creepy pasta, so like I just found that on a whim, and I just was like, "Oh, this must be real." Like, oh man, I can't believe an episode like this exists. Like, same thing with uh, what's it called, uh, uh, the Lavender Town Syndrome. Yes. Yeah, and I yeah. I found that, and it was presented like it was real. So I was like, "Well, nobody would have a reason to lie about this, so it must be true." I think like the, it's so funny. Like I hear stories like this 
uh, from like peers about like these types of creepy pastas like from around that time, and like they didn't work on me because I believe I am like slightly older than both of you. Uh, I'm like four years old. How old are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm turning 28 this year. Oh, you're a lot ah, younger okay, than me. Yeah. I'm 53. Yeah, right. I'm, tr I'm I'm currently like like seven. <laughs> Yo, how's no, no. second grade going for you? You getting those animal crackers? <laughs> yeah, no, that shit goes so hard. God, okay, Mallow actually, Mars, fuck yeah. That actually does make me think of, of a legitimate question because I'm curious about this. I think this says a lot yeah. about who uh, people are as a person. Um, did you prefer like regular animal crackers growing up or did you prefer the frosted ones? Of the Fro frosted ones. Frosted ones. Mm -hmm. I can't eat that, that normal shit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I didn't like the iced ones, though. Those were, like, a little bit too much. Yeah. How about Dunkaroos? I did not have Dunkaroos as a kid. Yeah, but they got him. <laughs> yeah, but they got him. <laughs> yeah, they got him. I liked them, too. Shared his Dunkaroos. Good guy. <laughs> no, I, uh... I forget. I mean, like, I guess they were kind of like Dunkaroos, but, like, I had the little, like, plastic tray things that had, like, the Oreo sticks with the icing. Oh! Uh, uh, really... yeah. Do you guys really remember, good. uh, do you guys remember, like, the cookie straws? Like, cookie cereal straws? Yeah! yeah. Those that fucked. shit ruled! Why do they not make those anymore? I mean, they probably do. I just yeah. probably don't look for them. Yeah. That and, uh, I believe they were called Grips? With a Z? I feel like I remember uh, the name of this. Yeah. They were like little like Keebler cookies and like Cheez-Its and stuff, but they were like really small. Congratulations to no Mickey Mouse stuff. Oh wow, I actually you really, won. You really did mm. no Mickey Mouse stuff that round. I think it's yeah. very funny that the moment I actually like stop focusing on trying to do like halfway well in the game to just not hold everyone up also, is the time I win. Austin, I, I, I meant to mention it earlier when Higurashi got brought up, but is your profile picture on Discord that guy from Higurashi? Oh, Keiichi. Yeah. 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 His name is, uh, yeah, his name is Keiichi Maibara, and when we read him uh, aloud during our Higurashi nights, I make him sound like Aaron from Game Grumps. Yeah, I I, I played, well, ho hopefully with less of the N-word, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that one just got you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, that like really tickled my fancy. I, I just like when I make myself laugh for once. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, oh, what's it called? Oh. Uh, I only watched a couple of episodes of the Higurashi anime. Yeah, sorry, sorry to everybody in the chat who did not know that that was a thing. Uh, that Eagle Raptor has said that several times. Yeah. It's it's kind it of a, I'm sorry. It's kind of a thing. It's, it's a, kind of a thing. He has a storied career. <laughs> I I I'm glad that he's better now. Yeah, like good uh, on him. For for the record, uh, for the record, he doesn't say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just clarify. <laughs> like I don't know. I I like I understand where people are coming from. It's like, eh, we should give people, you know, like time to change and be yeah. uh, whatever but like it kind of sounds when people do that it kind of sounds like, it's like well this guy doesn't run over people with this car anymore <laughs> yeah yeah i'm just like i'm at this point i'm just like okay if you're gonna gonna continue existing in my peripherals i'm glad that you don't do that sort of stuff anymore you know yeah but uh but, but anyway anyway about us away from <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoopsies. Who is this? I'm confused. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. This is only for us to know and for you yeah, to never find out. It's for classic game grumpers. Hello. What is going on in this one? But yeah, you you said you had just seen like a couple episodes of the anime, I think you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've only seen a couple of episodes of the anime. <laughs> Sorry for... <laughs> Yeah, Sorry no, for bringing the room real, down for a minute. Don't worry My about bad. it. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, like uh, I think the anime is decent. Um, I, I hear that it does change some stuff or like oh, uh, yeah, bridges like some stuff. 
it is it is significantly abridged from the source material like, yeah, to the point no. where I would say it actively like if you're watching it in a vacuum like <laughs> all you know is the anime then it's fine but if you yeah. have read the visual novel and then go back and watch the anime again you're like oh this sucks <laughs> yeah no oh like, interesting for for comparison like reading one uh like arc of Higurashi will typically take you anywhere from like 12 to 25 hours or some shit mm -hmm. uh yeah, and you got 24 episodes to condense that down. Uh, they can't really do that super well. Yeah, like, the first arc of Higurashi takes anywhere from, like, 10 to 12 hours to read, and the anime version is four episodes. Wow. Yeah. It, they cut out a lot. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's much more of a slow burn, too, which is, is, like... It's it, that's interesting because one of the reasons I stopped watching the anime is because I was like, oh, it's taking a little bit too long to. I'm, yeah. I'm just very confused mm. for a very long period. Well, that's to be fair too. That is kind of one of the things about the series is you are supposed to be confused for a while because it is yeah. sort of like a it is like a sort of supernatural horror, but it is kind of also like a mystery where they're seeding things along the way. So like. While at one point you'll be like, I have no idea what's going on with this bit. Like later you'll find out a piece of information that you'll be like, Oh wait, that explains that thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh my god. This is like a propros of nothing, or rather like taking us back to like the earlier conversation. I swear it's the last thing I have to say about Ego Raptor. <laughs> oh uh... my god. <laughs> Uh, but I actually just remembered, uh, we were talking about Xbox Live earlier, uh, and when oh, I was yeah. a kid, I actually, I, I, like, on a whim, like, I think I watched some Game Grumps footage, and I found out his Xbox Live gamer tag, and I just, like, friended him, and he accepted me for some reason. <laughs> and so I just, like, had him on my friends list, and I think I tried to send him, like, messages, like, during Game Grumps. <laughs> that is so funny. Because, <laughs> like, that was all the way back in, like, what, like... 20 like 2010 something like that uh i was like not even 12. <laughs> mm. which is it, it's just really funny to like think that like some random person sends you uh, an xbox live request and you're like yeah okay yeah I, maybe he just like applauded the effort of me searching it out <laughs> she's like you know what that's kind of awesome it's gonna feature you in my next compilation <laughs> I, I hope it's not the one that you should use. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're done. Me when there's a low hanging fruit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Listen, sorry. Marcy, I'm sorry. The low hanging fruit is just too appetizing. I know, we had to, we had to do it. <laughs> wow. This, this one is kind of like, what? Huh? Yeah. What? You know, it's it's so interesting not to continue that discussion, but uh, when I was younger, being like a really, a really big Game Grumps fan because they were kind of my introduction to like the concept of Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember specifically being like, "Oh man, this Ross guy, I don't like him. <laughs> I don't, I think he's annoying." And now I'm just like, Ross is kind of like my favorite dude from that Yo, entire yeah. group. Ross, Ross is so fucking cool. He's um, really cool. Like, I I really like his work. I like his art style. Uh, I like everything he's doing on YouTube right now. It's very cool. Yeah, I. It's funny. I actually knew of Ross like before Game Grumps, and the only reason I did is because he featured in an Ed's World episode. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah, he's in a uh, Hammer and Fail uh, Part Two. I think he's just like a cameo, but I remember uh, his name because I was uh, big into Newgrounds at the time, and so I like seeked him out because I was curious because I was yeah. a big Ed's World head. Speaking of Newgrounds, uh, when I was younger, Newgrounds was like I, I was introduced to Newgrounds before like something like YouTube, same, which was very interesting uh, because like I just never knew oh you could use the internet to post stuff like this that's cool really trying not to go into the inferno right now yeah it's it's difficult why did they put a conveyor belt there these sick fucks um but yeah uh one of the obviously like one of the top ones that i learned uh on newgrounds was super mario bros z 
Yeah. Yeah, a classic. Speaking of, uh, we speaking don't of talk people, about the guy who made it. Speaking no, of we're not gonna said questionable we, things online. Yeah, we don't talk about Alvin Earthworm or whatever his name is. Yeah, he, I, he was literally just like saying some stupid shit on Twitter like not yeah. 24 hours ago. Hatsune Miku made Super Mario Bros. <laughs> I, I had to control myself because normally I just love quote tweeting that with some stupid comment, <laughs> but I was like, I don't even want to give him any sort oh, of attention. No, yeah. It just, it because d dude's already irrelevant because he just doesn't do anything anymore. So yeah. it's like, okay. It's like, sure, dude, be racist. Whatever. Right. Nobody cares. <laughs> God. It, like... Nobody's gonna be like, you know who really convinced me to be a part of the far right? Uh, <laughs> right, Elvin Alvin Earthworm, Earthworm. Creator, creator of Super Mario Bros. Z. You know, I, no. I, was, I was on the fence until now, but... Yeah, wait, I really like when you made Mario punch Sonic, so I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> like, when when Metal Sonic freaking said, I'll crush you, I'm like, oh man, my I... Entire, I hate, my entire I, political I, ideology changed. That's all I, I, I'm not gonna say what I was thinking, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's uh, like when I when I heard Metal Sonic say "I'll crush you," I was like, "Man, abortion really is wrong." Yeah, that that's better. <laughs> that's better than what I was going to say. Uh, you know who will turn people into uh, into alt right chuds? Uh, Hot Diggity Demon. He, he's good at that. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Newgrounds, people, it's yeah. it's so interesting how like. Newgrounds has has formed two different like online presences. Either you're a massive chud or you're extremely based, and I feel like there's no in between. Uh, like you know the like the two paths meme with like the dark castle. <laughs> yeah. And, like... <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's actually like it's funny for some reason because uh fun uh I was I don't know why I was gonna say that like you know this uh I used to like be a brony when it was very uh like new and fresh like in the early 2010s yeah yeah uh and obviously you know when you're a brony in like the early 2010s you you're watching like the hot diggity demon pony top mob movies <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i was just like curious about them because i haven't seen them in like several thousand yeah, like he, several he, years let me guess the... they've aged horribly yeah, yeah no they aged like fucking spoiled milk in the hot sun what yeah, no, uh, he the... like he was like i'm i'm morbidly curious to see how poorly these aged and then he was like but i'm not going to do it by myself i'm gonna force you to watch them with me uh, yeah. and it was one of the most unpleasant experiences i have had in recent memory <laughs> incredible i yeah one one of the first Newgrounds uh, things that I ever watched was a series called Bowser's Kingdom, uh, where it's literally it I've was literally just I it's not really that popular. I see. Uh, it it was very niche, but I thought like wow this must be viral because it's so cool. It was it was a sprite animation series that was basically just like adult regular show but with like Koopa Troopa and Goomba before regular show was like a thing. It was just like a Koopa Troopa and a Goomba just like talking shit and uh, living in Mushroom Kingdom and being like, dude, don't you think it's weird that like Mario eats mushrooms and shit? It's like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like oh kind of like stoner-ish like, conversations. Like or something, dude. Yeah, and I was like, wow, this is like the best written thing I've ever watched. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, what the check uh, check said? I think it was actually referenced in Super Mario Brothers Z Episode Seven. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. That's actually how I found out about Super Mario Bros. Z's because I found out that it was referenced in that, like the Koopa Troopa and Goomba from Bowser's Kingdom show up very briefly before they get like annihilated by like, like Metal Sonic or something. Oh. Uh, uh, okay. There we go. So yeah, I I wonder whatever happened to the guy that made that. I I don't know anything about him or whatever he made. Yeah, I don't know. After yeah, no. that, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't even heard of this one. Yeah, th there's so many Newgrounds people where I'm just like I watch their stuff once and I'm like, man, I wonder what they're doing now. Probably yeah. not going down the all right pipeline or anything like that. <laughs> oh, oh no. My <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the people who I I didn't watch him on Check. Newgrounds, okay. but I knew of him. Uh. Was actually a uh, Christopher Neosi. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. The, the, the you mean guy. Mr. Yick? 
<laughs> yeah, Mr. Yick. Uh, and it's really funny because we were talking about Kira Buckland earlier, uh, and I actually found Kira Buckland through like the old uh, Brawl, Brawl Taunts video. Yeah. yeah, that's the good shit. Yeah, I think DDD and his Taunts. big gay dance. Yeah, and like it, it's really funny because like this was after like all of the quote unquote allegations he did them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> quote unquote <laughs> allegations that he one hundred percent did and can be backed up with yeah. facts. Uh, he actually, uh, like, out of the blue, I don't know if someone recommended it to him or whatever, but he actually, like, commented on, like, a vast error flash on YouTube, and he was oh, talking, yeah. he, like, he, like, waxed poetic about it, and I was, like, really taken aback by, like, the fact that he is just, like, doing this now? It's, <laughs> it's, it's not my story to tell, but I do have a friend who had an interaction with him. I won't say who it was, but, like, they're basically asking him, like, hey, like, what how do you like how do you like become a voice actor and stuff like that it seems like a very interesting profession and he was just an asshole about it. yeah no like that's, that's like, pretty much yeah, he was basically just like don't even bother yeah don't even don't even pursue it and it's like what that yeah that's you, pretty you, much... could be, you could be like you could be like you know like oh like here are the reasons why you might not want to do it but he was like no you're you just you're, you're not gonna get anywhere you're sorry not gonna get anywhere. you're gonna try. fail yeah don't <laughs> even try you're gonna fail uh but yeah, like I, I basically I simplified the story, but that was basically what he said the entire time, and it was very much like, okay, wow, okay, all right. Um, it's I'm really funny. Think... Oh no, oh. no, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, I think like that pretty much like every uh, Chris Neosi like story boils down to that. Uh, but I am the one that I like very vividly remember. It's not like a personal anecdote. I'm pretty sure it was in like a doc. Uh, back in the day when it was like first coming out because there were multiple attempts but like this one isn't even like bad because it's not like i don't know like sexual assault or anything like really terrible like they included a story about him like going to a museum with a bunch of other people and they talk about how he had like a sandwich <laughs> And he eat, and he just spends like the entire museum trip eating, eating the, sandwich the same real, sandwich. Yeah, like eating the same sandwich like really loudly on purpose, <laughs> just to be a dick. That's okay. That's just <laughs> fucking funny. But, uh, I one of my one of my favorite like obviously we don't have to keep talking about this, but I think mm. one of my favorite Chris Neosi fumbles of all time is when all of this horrible shit came out. But also, he had that he had that job where he was going to voice fucking what like Byleth. Byleth, oh, yeah, yeah. And, Fire Emblem. And dude had it in the bag. The only reason he got fired was because he broke NDA to brag about it. Yep. Dude was gonna be in Smash Bros. and he fumbled it. How do you how do you pull that off? I mean, like, I, you know, I get, like, that getting voice acting opportunities is very exciting and you want to yeah, talk to course. people. But, like, if, if, if it's literally the difference between, like, being in Smash and then, like, getting blacklisted from any Nintendo project ever, then, like, what are you doing? I would, like, if I somehow fumbled the bag of being in Smash Bros and all I had to do was keep my mouth shut... I feel like I would have got made fun of it for the rest of my life. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that is the you biggest <laughs> bag fumble of all time. <laughs> Man, I, I love the internet. I do. Yeah. It's, it's it's a it's a horrible horrible place with horrible horrible people. But man, does it have some funny stories? Oh yeah. I actually hmm, okay. Uh, I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, like the like. Okay, wait, hold on. Um, should I say this? I, I was gonna bring up a person, but I feel like maybe like despite the fact that there are some funny stories about this person, it gets a little too dark where it ends. Yeah, no, it, so, it's, it's very okay not to bring. Yeah, so maybe I, I shouldn't. I have a feeling like you know I might know who you might be referencing because I, there's a couple of different cases of that. Yeah, I, but there I is will, a very famous case of that. I will clarify who I meant, and then I will request that we not continue to talk of course, about yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, I was talking about Lotax. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Yeah. Oh, I won. I won. Great. But yeah, we we don't need to keep discussing controversial figures. I'm yeah, sorry, we, I we I furled into this. We got a bit of. We, 
we we just have some uh we have some funny stories we have some things to say but uh yeah let's move let's move on yeah okay. let's move on uh let's let's do the worms map i guess yes it's the wor worms <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely decimated your <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. G gotta go into the worms hole. I wish I'd... this was real. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish the worms worms mini golf was real. I wish the worms yeah. were real, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I actually had to dissect a worm in uh my uh honors biology class in high school. They're gross on the inside. They're so small oh, that's so, though, Eddie. Right? Just... That's so sad, but they're so pink and funny. I know, yeah. Like, honestly, you like, like I, I'm sorry, this is gonna sound gross, but like, you literally like, yeah, you peel into the inside of them and you see their organs, and they kind of just look like, like Play-Doh. <laughs> you, you are genuinely making my brain really confused right now because uh, I'm thinking about how when I was a kid, I used to see worms, like on the pavement all the time. Mm. But as an adult, I have not seen a worm on the pavement in like ages. Yeah, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a worm, period. Remember what they took from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the liberal agenda is taking our worms away. Yeah. <laughs> where, where am I supposed to go here? What? Oh, oh it's, it's a, you gotta get the jetpack. It's jetpack time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's jetpack time. Yeah, it's um, jetpack time. I'm thinking it's jetpack time. Okay, uh, okay. Oh yeah, I'm thinking I'm back and it's jetpack time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but yeah, no, like, it's one of those situations where it's like the bird, like uh, oh yeah, no, like birds aren't real; they're made by the government type they're of thing. Right. Where I'm just like, like how? Hold on, I haven't seen a worm in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Yo, why did you gunk up the hole? Uh, I did that on purpose, to spite you. Well, it didn't and work. It, it made it, you take it... one more. Shaq, do you think it's because of climate change? <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, <laughs> because, like, I could believe that. I mean, maybe. Maybe. I could believe that. God, I mean, I... there's a lot of things you could chalk up to climate change. I do, I, I do remember dissecting a frog when I was in middle school. That was an experience. You see, I got out <laughs> of doing it. I actually, like, pretended to be sick. And that, like, no, it wasn't that I pretended to be sick. I thought it was, like, morally un- I pretended it was, like, morally unconscionable to dissect a frog, so this I didn't is, have to yeah, do it. Yeah, um, this is against my religious beliefs. Yeah. I just, I just want to point out the check is probably right. It's probably because I don't go outside as much. I mean, yeah, that's also true. Because I work a job, and that requires me to be inside, like, a lot. God, um... What was oh I man, imagine say? editing in the great outdoors. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> in the middle of the woods, like, editing a Five Nights at Freddy's Let's Play. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this wind? Yeah, the wind's a little bit, uh, interesting. Okay, there we go. To go? Question mark. Okay. Uh, no, what I was gonna say, cause I I remembered, cause we were talking about worms and we were talking about dis dissection. Then I brought up frogs and we brought up the pavement. <laughs> um, oh wait, and it wasn't a frog. Never mind. This is irrelevant. Anyway, um, no, I I have a story from when I was a kid, uh, where. It was like when I was in elementary school, I used to live on the same street as one of my friends and we would like, like I would walk over to her house to uh, like, like we would play on her trampoline or whatever. Oh, oh I sick. forgot it's left mouse button, right? Not space. Um, Trampolines are awesome. But yeah, so uh, one of those times where I was over at her place, like, cause you know, whenever we finished, like I, I would walk back home and she would walk with me. Um, and we saw a lizard on the road, and... Oh, sick. Lizards are awesome. I don't remember which one of us it was. I think it might have been me, but don't quote me on that. I don't remember. Um, but one of us, I mean, you know, we're shithead kids. Uh, we were like, hey, I dare you to step on it. 
Oh. And um, oh no. And one of us did, and then we. I mean, I don't know what we expected to happen. <laughs> uh, but did, we, did it die? Yes. Uh, and, oh. Yeah. And we and we saw the like. But here's the thing: we saw its heart. Oh. And, and, how hard did you step on him? <laughs> I don't know. And like oh, it was like we both so we both like erupted into like the most terrified shriek and like ran the opposite direction. Jesus Christ. Damn, I w I was very much not a kid like that. I was very much like I was scared of lizards. No, I like Honestly, I don't think either of us thought the other would do it. It was just kind of a like, well, uh, you said I dare you, so now I have to. Jesus, wow, that's crazy. I mean, like, obviously, like, shithead kid moment, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Marcy, I mean, like, we, we chat, had like, to have been like. You about this right now? No, 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 we literally had to have been like five or six years old. Yeah, like, that's one of those things that, like, after you do it, it scars you so bad that you're like, oh no, now I'm I'm normal. You no, know, yeah, <laughs> like literally that experience, like when the, when I saw that, I was like, wow. I, I value life more. <laughs> yeah, very much like uh, like I've I've had moments like that when I was a kid where like something like that happened, but not because of a decision I made. It's usually because of like some insane scenario that happens. Uh, oh man, animals are crazy. Yeah, no. Yeah. Nature. I don't know whose idea it was to make animals, but stop it. There's too many. <laughs> well, uh, you see, if we keep going the way we are now, uh, there will less, be less. Yeah. There will be less. Some may yeah. say even none. You know, I don't really have any like fuck ass like animal stories. Uh, all of uh, I'm pretty sure like all the problems uh, that I had as like a kid were like self created. Well, uh, yeah. well, but like, like, like it wasn't even like I guess out of like curiosity. It was just me being a stupid idiot. Uh, this is like not on the subject of animals, but it is on the subject of like being a dumb kid. Uh, so you guys know uh, the hit 2006 classic Garfield the Tale Two Kitties, right? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Oh, I so, think you, I remember you telling me about. Yeah, this. I think I've told. I think I've told you this story. It's a good but, uh, story, though. To tell it. Yeah, I think I think Salty should hear it. Um, Please, by all means. So, uh, yeah, Garfield Tale of Two Kitties. Loved that movie as a kid. I was a big Garfield fan. I collected Garfield merch. Uh, oh my god! Including oh, I the got lead some. cups. Yeah, the lead cups. Especially uh, the lead cups. Yeah, we have those in our house. They're on display. <laughs> I was gonna say, hopefully you're about to say display and not active use. <laughs> no, no, I have the Shrek cup for that. Um, but yeah, so I used to like watching that a lot when I was a kid, and uh, I would stay at my cousin's a lot when I was younger because like uh, my mom worked for a living, and so I had to go to like after school care, and my aunt was the first one that like got off, so she would like pick us up along with my cousins. And, you know, we would just, like, go back home and we would start watching some stuff together. And so one day we, like, put on Garfield Tale of Two Kitties. And uh, if you know Garfield Tale of Two Kitties, there's that scene where they do uh, moving on up. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they, like, all dance together. And, like, Garfield's, like, talking about, like, all, like, the privileges of, like, high British society that he gets to have now. And, uh, you know, young me, like, was just, like, as soon as he hears it, it's like, I gotta get up and dance! And so, uh, I like grab my cousin, and uh, there's a scene near the end of the moving on up segment, like, when Garfield does like a spin. And so like, I take my cousin, who's significantly like smaller than me, she's like eight, and I'm like 10. Oh no. Uh, uh, like, uh, we do we do the spin, and I like twirl her around, and I like, let her go. And I think I do it, like, lightly, but I didn't, and I throw her so hard, her, like, head hits, like, the wooden <gasps> arm of a recliner, <laughs> oh my God. and it, like, completely fractures her skull. Jesus! <laughs> and, uh, like, she's bleeding all over the place, and I'm losing my fucking mind, and I actually, like, 
I was like, the sick thing is, is that like, I was worried about her well-being, but like, it eventually shifted into like, how am I gonna be worried about out? her well? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it shifted away from like worried about her well-being and into like, I gotta go, I gotta run and hide. I'm going to jail for this. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had a scenario like that where, like, I've caused somebody pain in that sort of sense. But I do have a much shorter story. When I was a kid, uh, my my sister, who was much younger than me, had, like, a little blanket. And I guess I was, like, we got into some sort of tug of war with it. And she had the amazing idea to, while she was, like, pulling on her end, to put it in her mouth. <laughs> And then try to tug like like a dog or something, oh, and no. her front teeth just went flying out. Yep, that's what I was yeah. afraid was gonna happen. Yeah, so that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, um, God, <laughs> really messed up at the time, but man, <laughs> but was it funny looking back. Yeah, funny in retrospect. <laughs> no, th there are a lot of things like that in childhood. I think where you're like at the time, you're like that, that's one of the most horrifying things I've ever experienced. But looking back on it, it's just like oh, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess in, like, the same vein of, like, fuck-ass, like, kid stuff, uh, <laughs> fuck-ass. Yeah, that, that's just the word, that's just the term I'm using for it now. Uh, yeah, they were, they were baby teeth, check. Just, did just you, clarifying. Did you guys ever get into, like, like, a any, like, actual fights, like, as a kid? Uh, oh my god, I have a couple of fight stories, yeah. I, I only yeah. have one fight story, and it is one that I've actually told in a video before. Uh, where it was the, like, little Sonic Extreme tie-in book was at one of our after-school program libraries, and I checked it out, uh, before this kid who was, like, behind me in the line that wanted to get it, and he was like, I was planning to get that, and I was like being a stupid kid, and I was like, "Well, too bad, I got it first. And then, I, then he threw me to the ground and punched me in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like remarkably similar to one of my two like major fight stories, because I actually uh, also had like a book checkout story. Uh, it was silent reading time during third grade, and I got the SpongeBob picture book. And this kid, uh, I think his name was Julian, was like just like making a huge altercation about it and i was really looking at him like bro are you talking during silent reading time <laughs> uh and like he just like would start grabbing the book uh and eventually i just like beat him down and the worst part was that it was during a field trip day too so we both got sent to the principal's office and I had to sit there for the rest of the day <laughs> Damn, you just ruined that kid's field trip. I, I did, and I wasn't sad about it. I did not regret my actions. Damn, Damn. You, you really pondered that one for so long and you just immediately got blown up. Okay. Guys, it's okay. So, what are, what are your fight stories, Salty? Um... I'm trying to think because there, there's a couple. Um... I think the most, like, big one that happened was, like, a, a bully of mine, like, decided that they were going to be an asshole to me on, like, the worst day that I had at school once in middle school. And I don't know what happened, in, like, in my little monkey brain at the time, but I was like, I'm about to cause problems and make it everybody else's issues, actually. <laughs> uh, where I had just a really bad day at school. I think I was picked on by a bunch of people. My middle school fucking sucked. Oh, same. Um, yeah. And what ended up happening was I got on the bus and like there two of my two of my bullies were on the bus. Uh, and what what happened was one of them decided that like I sat alone because I, I wanted to you know not be near anyone. I was very sad that day. Uh, and he sat next to me and just started pushing me up against the side of the bus and like hurting me mm. uh and the second bully who was this much smaller kid and was kind of like a sidekick type person <laughs> yeah, they're like little tony I, they're goon yeah, literally little tony energy where he's like yeah yeah get him get him <laughs> like he, he literally would yeah, never bully anyone unless there was another person already doing it in which case he would become their little sidekick that's <laughs> so funny so yeah. he joined up with the bully and he also was pushing the bully helping push him against the inside of the the bus 
And I just, like, I guess had, like, a mental breakdown <laughs> because I, like, went Super Saiyan, got up, started <laughs> screaming, and then just, like, my fist started flying like crazy. And I kicked the shit out of him. You're like, it did the, the like, Hokuto no Ken, like, ah, ta, 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 ta. Literally, <laughs> like, blind fists, like, ah, ta, 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 like, just, like, like, my fists together just punching the shit out of him. And apparently it happened, like, I... I must have like blacked out or something during it because apparently it went on for like a minute. Oh my uh, God. Because literally shortly after I I just like got out of that funk and I I was like crying, and the principal was there like grabbing my ass off the bus. <laughs> and the coolest thing about that is that I don't uh, like I was so embarrassed because I was like crying and I was so sad. After that, I was like, oh no, my life is over. I got into a fight at school. Obviously, it's not. Uh, especially because I was doing it in self-defense. So, like, mm. there's only so much you can do. Um, but I don't know who started it. But somebody decided that they were going to start a rumor that I, like, kicked his ass. <laughs> and nobody bothered me for the rest of middle school. It was amazing. Damn. Literally, the next day... Like, everybody was talking about it and asking me about it because, like, this bully was, like, very well known throughout the school. So you go uh, from, like, you know, somebody that, like, gets sort of bullied on a semi-regular basis to, like, everybody's just like, okay, okay. No, le legitimately, that's what happened. It was crazy. And that was also, like, the first time that I really understood how fucking crazy rumors can be and, mm -hmm. like, changing the tides of stuff. Um, but, yeah, so after that... After that rumor like spread like crazy, I had no. I I just want to clarify, I had no hand in that rumor at all. It just happened. Uh, I didn't really say anything about it, but everybody was asking me, and I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna pretend like yeah, that happened. I'm not gonna focus on it. I'm just gonna kind of go along with it. Mm. Uh, and it got to the point where the bully came up to me and he's like, uh, hey man, uh, I don't know if you know about these rumors that are going on around right now, but can you maybe say that? you didn't beat the shit out of me because you didn't really you just kind of punched me a bunch and screamed and i was like and i i felt really badass for this and i don't think i've ever felt this high ever again in my life but i was like i mean yeah you're totally true dude i, I really didn't beat you up i just punched you a bunch however it's what the people think you know like and, i and can't who control am I that to contest? who am i to contest what people have to say and That's I know, really I know it sounds, I know it sounds like an and an everybody claps sort of moment, but I'm I'm sure I sounded much more like like I don't know, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I I distinctly remember being like I don't know, man. Like it's what people think. I can't really control it, I guess. But I'll try. I literally was like, I'll try my best, but I don't know, man. Yeah. Because even I felt bad. I was like, wow, his reputation got, like, shattered overnight by, like, the nerdy kid who wanted to sit in the back of the bus alone. <laughs> but, um... Uh... And, you know, what's, what's even funnier about that story in retrospect is, like, obviously, like, my middle school experience was a thousand times better after that because all of my little dork friends, like worshipped me for a bit they were like dude you fucking kicked you ass. Kick guy's ass you kicked that guy's ass and I'm like oh, I yeah, like Sonic it's, it's nothing <laughs> Yeah, I just basically like became back. Super Sonic. Yeah, yeah. You know. I, just, I just remembered my hero, Dark Spine Sonic from Sonic and the Secret Rings, and I took care of business. Yeah, basically, I just channeled my Super Saiyan uh, Dark 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 Spine Sonic. Uh, uh, Jutsu, Jutsu <laughs> Deluxe. Uh, but the, the craziest thing about that story is, you know, obviously middle school came and went, and I went to high school, and I went into a high school that was like like a completely different environment like with people i didn't know like a lot of my friends went to the same high school after middle school and i i didn't i went to a completely different school yeah, okay. uh so like nobody knew who i was there so i kind of had to start from scratch uh socially which which definitely sucked but it was like i don't know it was kind of nice because mm. uh, i didn't have to worry about all that shit but the reason i bring it up is because i actually met my, my bully on on a chance Oh on a chance God. encounter at the park, I was going for a walk with a with a friend of mine, uh, and he was just kind of hanging out, playing the guitar, just like 
like you know doing one of those things where like you know like people will play the guitar and they'll have like a hat that you can put tips in and stuff mm -hmm. he was doing that and i wasn't going to talk to him but he recognized me he was like dude what's going on how have you been and i'm like yeah you know it's going good like we were pretty cordial all things considered and i was like well i guess this is nice we can kind of get off on like a a good note with stuff like this i i feel pretty good about this uh, even though he sucked mm. but before i left again this is gonna sound like an everybody clapped a moment but i swear to god it happened he brought up that specific rumor again <laughs> And he was like, but you know, you didn't like, it wasn't like a fight. Like, you, you know that you didn't win like, like, a fight against me, right? And I'm, I'm like, doing all these still years. holding on to yeah, this. Still holding on to it. I was just like, dude, it's been fucking years. I don't even interact with you anymore. And, and I basically was like, dude, I don't know what you want me to tell you. People thought I won the fight, so I don't care. And that was it. That was the last little bit. But yeah, that's my major fight story because... That's when I discovered that uh, lies can be cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, nothing bad ever happens. Nothing when you bad lie. ever happens when you lie. You only yeah. succeed. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you let other people lie for you and not give them proper information. Oh my god. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I actually remembered one, which is not like a real fight story i'll tell my other real fight story after this one just because like it's a lot shorter and it's very similar to salty's but uh mm. i actually had an almost fight in like fifth grade uh there was this kid uh his name was chance he was like a new student in class but he like immediately was like all right i'm gonna be top dog i'm gonna show everybody who's boss and he like started like a little like grade school hierarchy under his foot and, you know, I was not a well-liked person. Uh, I had autism and ADHD at, like, 10 years old. So, like, of course I was going to be ostracized. Uh, but, like, you know, eventually I just got, like, tired of his shit. And so I write him, like, a long, like, note. Like, a, a long <laughs> note. like in A strongly short. worded letter. A strongly, strongly worded letter. But, like, I tell him, it's like, you know, like, I'm tired of your shit, like, Let's settle this. Let's meet by the flagpole after school. We'll duke it out. Oh my uh, god. And honestly, honestly, if I heard this as a kid, I'd be like, whoa, badass. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. And so, like, I do that, and, like, it's under. Like, he gives me, like, a nod, like, at lunch or whatever. He's like, understood. <laughs> 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 and, uh. Understood. I'll see you at the flagpole, <laughs> nerd. Yeah. yeah, and then like after that, uh, I just go home. I do not meet him at the flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, uh, you know, I come to school. Like I'm very cool about oh. it, and he's just like, "Hey, man, why didn't you show up at the flagpole? I thought you wanted to duke it out." And I, I, I like point blank, like I look at him. And I tell him, like, and this is gonna sound far cooler than what I actually probably said, but it was something to the effect too. I just did what you do to me every single day. I wasted your time. <laughs> oh, that's fucking cool. And then I, <laughs> and then I just like walked away. He didn't fuck with me again after that. I think he kind of respected it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a fucking, what a fucking amazing play. I would have never thought to do something like that, but that's yeah. so funny. No, I yeah. remember you telling me this story for the first time, and, like, I lost it when you said that. <laughs> yeah, like, I, in retrospect, I really don't think it's, like, very cool at all, but, like... It, I think, I think grader, for a kid, that's insanely yeah. badass. That is such a cool play that I wish I did. Oh I, I I think the mo the the closest to quote-unquote mind games that I ever played with, like, people who bullied me was when I had multiple bullies and I just had the idea of like, why don't I just like, <laughs> this is gonna sound really fucked up, but bear with me. <laughs> I was like, what if I just like, <laughs> true, but <laughs> what if I just convince them that like, they hate each other? <laughs> <laughs> what if I spread a false narrative that that this person said this about this person and then this person said this about this person and it did work. 
my god. Because kids are really stupid. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was too. It didn't always work, but when it did, oh boy, it was great. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of like <laughs> psychologically fucked with people by convincing them that other people <laughs> hated them. <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, it was fucked up, I'll say it was, but man, I mean, it got a little bit of heat off of me. I still got the shit beaten out of me, uh, but... <laughs> Well, not always. It was mostly just verbal abuse. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> I won't make it sound cooler than it is. It was mostly just verbal abuse, but. No, yeah, that was, uh, that was yeah. the majority of my bullying in school. It was just like people yeah. saying like a ton of shithead things, and then like also, like, you know, like when people like get like a nickname going on you or something, and then everybody joins in on it, kind of thing, like that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I only got like physically abused as a kid like once. Uh, and this leads into, like, my final fight story. Ooh. Uh... Final fight. Yeah, the final fight! My final battle of wits! Uh, it was not with wits. Uh, I used my fists, but we'll get to that. Uh... Like, yeah, I was in Boy Scouts for a time, because, you know, every, like... Like, 11, 12-year-old boy, like, thinks they want to go into Boy Scouts until they actually realize what you have to do in it, and then you never want to touch it again. I had to carve uh, soap the first time I was there, I think, and oh, then I was yeah. like, this shit sucks. No, yeah, like, several of the worst experiences of my life, uh, like, as a kid, were at Boy Scouts. And, uh, yeah, uh, the bullying, like, the rampant bullying from, like, the older, like, troop leaders or whatever was, like, one of them. And, uh, there were three kids, uh, they were all, like, slightly older than me, but they were still teenagers. They were, like, 14, 16, and, like, 15, so, like... A de escalating order with the oldest one as like the head guy. And like, basically, like, not to get like too deep into it because it's really not interesting, but like, yeah, they would like pick on me and they would like, I don't know, like punch me in the arm and whatever. And like, this was like a constant at like troop meetings and stuff. And I just sort of had to take it. Like, for a very long time, I was just like, all right, I'm gonna be the bigger man. I'll just like do, I'll just like, d like, take it. It's fine. Uh, that happened until we went to, like, our, like, summer camp. Like, our sleepaway, like, week-long, you're in the woods, uh, like, in, like, fucking cabins and stuff. Like, sleepaway camp. Uh, it eventually, like, got Oh, wait, so... did we do this one, by the way? Yeah, we did. Did we? Uh, oh, yeah, no, we did, I remember. I, this I thought for a second that we hadn't, but I was wrong. Oh, but, do you uh, want to just, like, keep doing it? <laughs> well, since we're already yeah. so here's the it? thing. We- we ran out of maps. Oh. oh! We went through all of them. Wow. Insane. Which, by uh, the way, I- I- not to interrupt your story, like, you can keep- No, going. no, you're uh, fine. I- I just wanted to say real quick, uh, whenever you feel yourself getting to the point where you're like, Okay, I- I think I'm good, guys. Then, like, just- yeah. just let us know where- How- how about this? No how plan. about we go to the end of- we- we go to the end of this- this, uh, map. Mm. And yeah, then we can I call it. I think that sounds perfectly fine. Yeah, I assume we'd be going to, to like to because like we completed the then. game and we got some we got some good laughs. Mm, yeah, I completely. But agree. I do want to hear the end of this story. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, like summer sleepaway camp. Uh, it like eventually got to like such a point. Like the, I don't know what it was like. Summer camp in particular, like really got like the testosterone raging in these guys. So they were like going at it harder than usual. And I don't remember what exactly set it off, but we were in the mess hall uh, at the Boy Scout camp. And this was a summer sleepaway camp with, like, several other troops. Like, it wasn't just us, like, hanging out over here. So this was, like, a multinational, like, Boy Scout event. Uh, and I think, like, one of the guys, like tries to like start like a food fight with me or like steal my food or something like that and i don't know what it was maybe it was just because i was having a miserable time in general but like that was like the last straw to me and so like i do like instigate it like i get up and like i go over to him and like the cronies that he has he like sitting next to him and i like basically like almost like pull him out of like the like lunch table and then, like, him and his, like, buddies, they, like, back off for a second. 
Like they're almost kind of like shocked about what I'm doing. I cannot make it into this fucking thing. Uh, and like, it seems like the, the main guy, the 16 year old is like going to start something like, but I, before he's like able to like get a swing in or like the adults are able to come in, uh, I literally like, like pounce on him like a fucking like cheetah, like a tiger, like, and I like slam him like head first to the mess hall tile. And uh, have you guys ever seen like a Christmas story? Uh, I once a very I long haven't time ago. I haven't seen it, but I've seen a lot of advertisements for it on a di Christmas DVD I had. Yeah, there was like there's a scene where like the main character in a Christmas story like gets to his bully and like just like goes like th the best word I can think of is like feral. Like he's like e like fucking like screaming his lungs out and just like beating him without knowing what he's doing but i was like in this like fwig state where it's like i had him like by like the roots of the hair and i wasn't punching him i was just like picking up his head and sending it like into the mess hall floor like back Jeez. of the skull first oh my god yeah uh, like uh and it's funny uh because i Hardcore. already told yeah, i already told a story about a skull fracture but uh I, I absolutely fractured his skull. Like, uh, they could see his brain. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to mention, but during my, my fight story with the, the bus thing, I, 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 uh, they cracked my ribs. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh. Ugh. So that shit was that sounds, crazy. That sounds extraordinarily painful. Oh yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> I mean, I, as, as you've just described, I just... I, I must have went Christmas story on their ass. Yeah. <laughs> you you went full Ralphie. I went full <laughs> full <laughs> you never go full Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all I can think of is Rowley from Diary of Women Kids when I think of yeah. that. <laughs> Don't call me. Don't come yeah. by my house. Don't come by my house. Put I it think done. I <laughs> I think it would be really funny if, like, we just ended the stream and, like, I I've said it a few times, like, me and Derek have never talked to each other before this happened. I don't even know if I should, like, call you that. I've just, like, retained no, it No, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Like, uh, I'm down for anybody to call me anything but Shirley. Ha 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 ha. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Salty, Dan, or Derek. I prefer Derek just because it's my name. Yeah. People, I like when people call me my name. Crazy, I know. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah I, I did want to clarify. I couldn't remember, yeah. actually, if you didn't yeah, want people saying your name, so that's why I had No, it no, no, no. But... Yeah, that's no, why I was a little more like, to, yeah. Was... To, to, to clarify, yeah, it's, uh, like, on the tier list of what people call me, lowest is Dan, second is Salty, and main is, like, Derek. So Derek or Salty works perfectly fine okay. for me. Okay. Um... Well, yeah, I forgot what I was going Oh yeah, I think I I think I was saying like I think I had like a dream once, like after we decided that we were gonna do this stream. That was basically like we've never talked before, but like I imagined like in a dream that we did this stream once. And then like the stream ended and and like Derek basically just gave me like the diary of a wimpy kid like rally like don't call me. Don't, <laughs> don't come my by my, my house. Don't, don't come by done. my Don't come by my house, Austin. Please We're don't. Done. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be kind of insane. It's like, dude, I had such a great stream. I'm outside your house. <laughs> I'm headed there. Right now. Someone, dude, someone let's keep the party going. <laughs> Do you hear that knock on your window? That's me. <laughs> someone in chat. Uh, it's like, I guess the power scaling uh, of the stream guests of right now is uh, Austin, specifically middle school Austin, Derek, and Marcy. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that's probably fair. Yeah, uh... You you guys really shouldn't fuck with me. I'm multiversal. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I have always wiki. wanted I have always wanted to do stupid power scaling videos. Like th there's this video idea I had uh where I wanted to get a bunch of friends together and like have a a children's Halloween Halloween costume tournament where I would just have like randomly organized like like you know like children's Halloween costumes always have the preview image of like a, a kid that's wearing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, it would just be pictures of those kids, and it would be a tournament arc where everybody that I had on would have to vote which of the kids out of the two that were paired up would win in a fight, and then it would just, like, kind of... Yeah, so anyway, I know that sounds insane. 
<laughs> no, that actually sounds like like premium content. Yeah, I, 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 it's whenever I describe it to people, they're like, so you're, you're basically pitting children against each other to see who would win in a fight, theoretically, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yes, but not in like the weird way. <laughs> Like may you maybe know, we can make it so whatever children against each other. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can make it fun in a way that like, like whoever they're dressed up as, they retain the powers of. So yeah. if it's like, if it's like a little baby Iron Man versus little baby Red Power Ranger. <laughs> like, I think Iron I Man think... clutches this one. Yeah, I think. But he what's... also, but also, baby Iron Man kind of looks like he's a little bit of a mama's boy, so uh, he's yeah. like, too scared to fight. Yeah, I think what's needed for this is that you, like, need to come up with, like, backstories and scenarios for these guys, for these true, little fucking true, kids. True, true, true. And then you should, like, like, factor that in into, like, the matchups you make and how they fight against each other, and then you, like, I don't know. <laughs> I I do like Shek's idea, though, because it's like, no, just the children making complete assumptions about their character and who they are. I do like just that, based actually. Just double yeah. alone. <laughs> Like what do you what do you think this character would be like? Yeah. What what do, what do you think this child's deal is? Because like like some of the outfits, some of the kids look way more badass than others. Like I've seen some like like there there's like a child's like Batman outfit and they have to make them pose really cool. So I'm like, okay, so that kid's like badass. He could definitely win against the Iron Man kid. Yeah. <laughs> like Google image costume picture? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And you I know what? Like... I might throw a couple of adults in there too, just for fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just to even it out. Yeah, uh, just to even out the the, the power scaling. And I just power should... scaling random fucking people <laughs> I've never met. I think you should like wait until like October rolls around. That's and, like, what I was thinking. Yeah, that's like premium Halloween yeah, style like, content. Yeah. Like go through like a spirit Halloween catalog <laughs> and pick the best one. Yeah. <laughs> Can we power scale random children? <laughs> oh my god. I picked 50 children to power scale! If, why not use like random uh, JPEGs of kids in Halloween costumes? That feels more ethical than choosing actual kids like Google image costume pictures. That's still gonna be kids. There's still kids in Halloween costumes no matter what you do. I don't know. I. I think, I think, listen, th those kids got paid. If I go to Party City and I see a Halloween costume picture, I know that child got paid for that, so good for them. Yeah. And they will be in my tournament. <laughs> they have no say. I'm like, I'm like a freaking, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh my god. Why am I forgetting this? Uh, uh, who's, uh, Master Roshi. Oh, yeah, I'm just yeah. picking up random kids to put in tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Though I'm imagining this is like less of like a shonen like tournament arc and more like a Mortal Kombat thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a fight to the death. Yeah. By the way, I just want you guys to know, like Derek launched me off under like this like water bridge. Yeah, I now... noticed you haven't respawned. Yeah. yeah, now I'm like just stuck <laughs> under it and my ball is tweaking and I can't move and it won't reset me. So I think I'm just gonna have to time this one out. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is, it I'm... is very funny to watch. I thought that I just lagged out or something, but no, you're just stuck underneath that bridge <laughs> no. permanently. I can't, I'm having a tough time on this one too. Okay, finally, Jesus. There you go. If if you if you complete the course in time, you you'll get to see Austin struggling underneath the yeah, bridge. Yeah, I really want yeah, to. Yeah, you have 15 seconds. Don't disappoint us. I'm, oh, I might disappoint you. Oh no. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay, there you go. I've got like five seconds to walk. <laughs> it's so unfortunate. What is happening <laughs> here? <laughs> Let me see. I have like a I have like a notepad document of like really dumb video ideas. That was one of the top ones. Yeah. I I think you should absolutely do this. I think it's necessary. You okay? There there it goes. I was like wondering when it was going to actually. Yep. Go my over. my balls my balls soul orb finally gave out. <laughs> oh, I found I found out that uh you know the meow mix video. Yeah. The, like yeah. that commercial. I found out that that was used as a torture method in the freaking. <laughs> 
in the CIA. <laughs> so I wanted to do a stream where like every donation it plays that like like three times. <laughs> like you like using CIA torture methods on myself. Yes. <laughs> because I can't it, it's hard because I don't have face cam, so I can't waterboard myself. Right. Uh but like I could do that. No, I think that sounds like you should name it something a la like the Russian sleep experiment. <laughs> So, something I've always wanted to do, I just kind of struggle to figure out exactly how I would edit such a thing, is I wanted to do a YouTube poop tournament arc. That where, like, I, I get a couple of editors together, like, both, you know, big and small. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have, like, source footage that's, like, a minute long. And, like, various little things, like, have at least one sus joke in there or something like that. And then post them on Twitter before the video gets published and have people vote without knowing who made each YouTube poop. So it's completely like, oh, that like would everyone's really on the same, the same, like, uh, the same, uh, level. The only thing is, is I, I just struggle to understand how I would edit something like that to make it like, like entertaining. Mm -hmm. I don't want to Mr. Beastify it or anything. I think but, like. like I'm I'm trying to think of like how you would do this and I kind of think almost like you should do like you know like the game show announcer type thing. Yeah. Yeah, I want to have like my my first idea was like to have a sports commentator sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're like let's get an instant replay on that sus. <laughs> <laughs> but like have like me and like a friend like be like sports commentator like sort of things for that. But even then, I, I just struggle to know how we would keep up that bit for every freaking YouTube poop. Like, obviously, they wouldn't be making full YouTube poops. They'd be making, like, 30-second clips or, like, minute clips or something. But, yeah. Also, like, I'd assume, like, you wouldn't use the same source footage, like, each time. You would, like, yeah, as yeah. the tournament progresses, like, like you like would get, like, harder and harder Yeah, YouTube the poops. final round would be, like like, a Shrek YTP with, like, a very specific, like, like, task that you'd have to do, like, like, I, I obviously haven't worked out the kinks, but. <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> okay, this one's really stupid. Um, I, <laughs> so, you know how, like, you know how, like, gaming YouTubers will have, like, oh, best of 2023 compilation. Uh -huh. I want <laughs> I wanted to put out like a, a salty DK Dan like best of 1994 compilation <laughs> where like it's a bunch of like fake clips and it's like in, it's like a black and white let's play and I'm just, <laughs> or, or something where it's like I'm playing like pong or something I'm like wow this is this really goes hard <laughs> or I something thought, like that. I thought for a second you were gonna be like I, although this was before you were born, but like, I, I was just like thinking it was gonna be a like, oh yeah, best of like 1994, and like pulls up like a thing of like baby photos and videos, and it's just like, oh yeah, that, that's that so crawl, funny. That crawl was pretty good, but I'm gonna have like, to give it a, like a six out of ten. Like I have the ultrasound, <laughs> and I just like put that on screen. Oh my god, that that also is really funny. But the thing is, I inherently could do less with that besides just yeah. using, like, like baby footage or something. Where am I going? Oh, okay. I or I just, like, I just, like, find footage of, like, a sperm cell, like, wiggling. <laughs> hey, guys, what's going on? We're going to be fertilizing the egg today. <laughs> uh, but also, I have donations on, so... You can play YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> Please make sure that, you don't yeah. play any copyrighted music. Yeah. I'm imagining like a Mozart in the womb kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that was way too far. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I've been sucking this round. I I thought I slayed this, this map last time, but apparently not. I think we're all just kind of tired too. Yeah, no, we've yeah. been doing this for like five hours. Has it really been that long? Yeah, it has, yeah. Damn. Time I mean, flies. it was it was fun. Yeah, no, we like I had a great time doing this. Yeah, me too. Uh, Cause uh, 
I don't uh, know if you uh, told him or not. Like, originally we were going to play Monopoly, uh, yes. but we couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm very glad we did mini golf because this is, I think, way more fun than Monopoly would have been. <laughs> I, yeah. You see, I think the reason I wanted to choose Monopoly is because was just he's because, good at Monopoly. Yeah, one, I'm good at it. <laughs> Two, uh, it's just a really long, frustrating game that like brings out the worst in people, and I think that makes for fun, uh, fun content. That is true. Where am I going? Oh, that's where that is. Okay. Wait, I'm looking at the free cam, but like, huh? What? I found it. You have to go to the dock and then go to the left. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess that's what I thought, but I don't know how to survive on the dock. Oh, okay. Uh, it just, it just kind of pushes you. Oh, that, that was, uh, man, this was another thing. I don't think I'll ever do this, uh, at least not soon because of my living situation, but I wanted to do a video like you know how when like a big game comes out and everybody's like reacting to the, tra the trailer or something uh. i wanted to play a guy who just saw his entire family die in front of him like <laughs> reacting to the gta 6 trailer <laughs> so the reaction would just be me screaming and crying on camera like really loud and i wouldn't be reacting to any of the footage at all i would just be like ah, ah! <laughs> I, I don't know. I just thought it would have been funny. <laughs> uh, someone in chat is just, uh, Austin's really coming for the devil's job, isn't he? I'm evil. Like, we've discussed this several times. Oh, yeah. That no. is true, yeah. That's why, you know, every time, like, people make jokes about, like, oh, you know, the, my, like, edgy sonar or whatever, like, if I had, like, a dark applier thing going on or whatever... Uh, and like made up stuff for it in the stream chats, but like Austin, you don't need to do that. He's already like that. No, I, I am a very like morally reprehensible, self serving piece of shit. <laughs> uh, no one should be around me, but uh, I put Marcy in such a situation where she needs me to live. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still looking at my notes for videos, and I think it's really funny that right below the guy whose family died right in front of him reacts to GTA 6 trailer is just Jojo Iceberg Part 4. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like a completely normal, like, note. No, anyway, I, yeah. I don't think it's normal. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you did one was enough. True, true. Oh, you're, no, you're no. so close. Oh. No Mickey Mouse stuff. No we Mickey got Mouse it. Stuff. We Derek, we need a video on those Disney Sonic AMB. Dude, I, Shaq, I completely agree. I completely agree. I just have not figured out a way to do it without muting the audio because it's always copyrighted audio. Well, that actually, I don't know anything about Disney Sonic AMVs, but I do know that Disney AMV rabbit hole, like on YouTube, I, just goes. Oh, I was, yeah. I, yeah, I was talking mainly about the, like the Disney, like, crack ship. Yeah, AMVs. no. Yeah, no. Like, there's very, like, not only just like crack ship, there's very like explicitly sexual like Disney like crack ship AMVs on Disney, YouTube. Just Disney crack ships in general because there's a lot of really like I gotta I gotta commend people who make Disney crack ship AMVs like the rotoscoping, yeah, the editing all of the stuff insane. they have to do. No, yeah, it looks better than some of my edits. I'm like, damn, the commitment. People train for years in bio labs to get editing I, skills like that. But I do believe that the Disney Sonic AMBs I have seen before too, and they were pretty nuts. But yeah. I think like in terms of people who have like insane editing skill for what they do, there's like two paths you can go down. One is the Disney crackship AMBs, and the other is like breaking bad meme edits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same with animators too, because I've I've seen like some amazing animators and like they'll do nsfw content of the most insane ships i've ever seen in my life and it's the most fluidly animated stuff i've ever seen uh what comes to mind is i think there's like a tarzan x guy from atlantis animation oh, that is like yeah it's Milo. literally disney yeah. quality animation and i'm like this is not for me i don't enjoy this but holy shit, this person is so talented. Yeah. 
And it's it's so funny because before the actual NSFW content starts, you can all you you can tell that it's all like if you didn't see a specific aspect of the animation, you would think, oh, this is just like an official Disney thing. Uh, but the fact that Tarzan has like visible and well defined nipples is like the <laughs> it's the indicator that I'm like something's off, something Wait is off a here. Second. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I I got so sad when like that clip from it got super popular, like the welcome to the world of gay sex, because I'm like that was my special little Blorbo animation that was that my I love. <laughs> I I love to show to people and be like, D and they were, there were so many people I I've shown like the intro clip to, and they're just like, I did not know that they had a crossover, and I'm like, yeah, me neither, bro. <laughs> 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 me neither, dude. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no i it's some people out there are so passionate that they make some of the most creative and like well-made stuff i've ever seen in my life i won't watch it but it, it is amazing hold on i'm actually gonna like find one in particular that i like think of a lot i'm not gonna like i don't think we should play this on stream it would be a bad idea but i want yeah. you I, I want marcy and and you to watch it. Listen, uh, I'm interested in looking at anything at this point. Like, yeah, <laughs> other than golf balls. <laughs> yeah, other than golf balls. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can find it. It's like very particular. Sorry, I saw the labor SpongeBob comic again when <laughs> yeah. I scrolled up. And... <laughs> I'm going into labor. <laughs> you can still clutch this. <laughs> Just want to say, really, really glad I came on stream today. This was very, very chill and cool. Yeah. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, I, 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 well, had, I had a great, great time. time. Uh, I've, like, you know, I enjoy streaming and I enjoy, like, reading stuff for my chat and all that. But, like, it, it is just kind of nice to, like, kick back and shoot the shit with people for a while. And we had just the right amount of mind-numbing golf gameplay to really just, like, kind of let my brain run free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was, I was thinking, like, you know, oh, this is, like, a good chill game, and, like, even if it ends up getting, like, irritating, it'll still be, like, funny. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can't find it. I, it might be Lost to Time. No, Lost to uh, Time. Wait! No, lost I found India? it! It's oh. a, no, it's a, it's, one of, it's a short. No wonder I didn't, oh, <laughs> no I wonder see. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, because nobody watches your two shorts. Yeah, hold on. Except for me, because I like the brain rat. I'm so I have, sorry. I have I have curated my YouTube shorts in such a way that it thinks that I am like I think like a an eight year old kid who just discovered YouTube, <laughs> and I'm constantly getting those fake podcast clips of the two dudes talking about oh, video I games. Love and shit. Yeah, the built by gamers. Yeah, yeah, built by gamers, and there's also another uh, these other two dudes that are the both like white dudes with like baseball caps, and they're talking about stuff like. Like, they're just like, did you know there's a new character in Sonic.exe? And the other guy's like, what? No way. It's like, his yeah, name his is... name is Knuckle.exe. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> just so, like, it, it sounds like so innocent when you put it like that. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I, I sent it in the chat. That's a little, that's a little treat for, for you guys for when we end the stream. Oh, oh, oh my boy. god. <laughs> Oh, holy boy. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> what the <laughs> I, I, need, I need you guys to, i need you to know the first time i saw this uh i was at uh i was at uh a, 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 my my friend's house uh in like lower florida to get ready for a con and we got like high and we just like after marathoning like crazy frog music videos we just started putting this shit on just for people who can't watch i'm not really gonna describe the contents i'm just gonna say it's a disney crack ship of a couple of different characters i believe that's jasmine from aladdin uh yeah, there's like John there's like, Smith from John, yeah, white guy from Pocahontas. White guy from Pocahontas and, and guy from uh, Shang. His name is Shang. Shang oh, from, from Mulan, uh, yeah, from Mulan. And I, it's it's like a thruple AMV, and it is <laughs> insane. <laughs> it is insane. Who is making these? 
And why is it so well edited? <laughs> like, it's not just the editing, it's on beat! It, oh my god. I... <laughs> so, I... Listen, I'm all for freedom of expression. What's going on here? <laughs> oh wait, no, this isn't this isn't John White guy from Pocahontas. This is the guy that Els Esmeralda's into from Hunchback and Notre Dame. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, he is. I thought he was. Oh, I thought he was white guy from. Yeah, no, that makes more sense now. I'm looking at him. Yeah, that's definitely him from uh from Hunchback. <sighs> yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm not. Blaze the cat, anyone? Yeah, you guys like are gonna have to search this out on your own. I'm not sending it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I need just. I need to send this to a couple of friends of mine. They yeah, fucking love this please, shit. Please do. Oh my god, I forgot how how amazing like crack ship A and B's are. Man, this is really bringing me back. <laughs> I think I think the first one I ever saw, not to oh my god, not to like completely derail again from like no, us like winding down. We're just winding down, yeah. Yeah, uh, but the first one I ever saw was one between Rapunzel and Mavis from from uh, Hotel Transylvania, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they just yeah, yeah. and it's so clear that it's from like a young gay person, and I think it's so cute, but they accidentally <laughs> use like a derogatory term for lesbians in it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you can tell that it's done completely earnestly. Like they obviously did not realize that it was a derogatory slang. But it's so funny. Oh. God. Just like, are are you gay? And it's like, yes, I am. And it's like, oh cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's so I mean, yeah, I would hope you are. This is a crack ship AMV between the both of us. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Hold on, I th I'm actually gonna send like another one. Uh, it's not. Oh, please uh, do. Yeah, it's not of like the same not safe for work caliber. It's just like very, very strange how like investing. It tells a narrative. There's a narrative in this AMV. I love when they have narratives. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> This the stream wind down is. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to like go through and like see if I can find the exact one. Cause like it's very important. Like I can't just like send one that's similar. It needs to be this particular one. <laughs> Man, the, the, this these sort of A and B's also remind me of that clip where the guy's like, eh, "Room for one more." <laughs> <laughs> oh, where is the Bob Belcher and Saroba A and B? The what? Oh man, I saw I saw a recent one that's been making the rounds where it's uh it's. Fix it, Felix and Mario. Oh yeah, I have seen that one. That one's cute though. I like that one. I don't know why. I just like I, like obviously Fix it, Felix is inspired by Mario, but like maybe it's the contrasting colors that I like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all I need for a ship to work. I'm like, oh, you know, the colors are contrasting. I like that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that's why, like, even though I don't like Sonato, uh, I kind of do like Sonato because of the colors. Mm. No, I, I do, unfortunately. Uh, I, I am invested in that ship. I, I have propaganda, but I... I, I get I'll, that. I'll, I'll refrain. Uh, um, can you guys still hear me, by the way? I think yeah. my fucking headphones almost No, I out. can't it's... still hear you, Austin. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to well, fix your microphone. <laughs> I guess I'll just fucking kill myself. <laughs> Don't do uh, that, no! <laughs> it's just a microphone issue. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't guilt tripping you. I say that all the time. It's fine. <laughs> uh, have you uh, have you seen the Joe Rogan uh, podcast Sonato shirt? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. I love that shirt. 
I thought you were just gonna ask me if I've seen the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, no, 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 no that's no, no, not no, what no, I was no. going to. I was just like, okay, this stream's taking an interesting direction. Let's see where it goes. Okay, I'll also, just so you know, I'm like going down the rabbit hole. Like, I'm, I'm finding a lot of the ones that we watched, but like, I need to find the specific one. Uh... Yeah, because this one's like, this is like Daddy Issues by the Neighborhood. <laughs> oh, God. No, yeah, um, D Austin wore that shirt to the Sonic Symphony concert and, like, got stopped for a picture every, like, two seconds. Yeah, I was, like, the bell of the ball. Uh, <laughs> like, it was really fun. That is so cool. A friend of mine, Mikey, he he dressed up as, uh, as Little Mac uh, one year when Smash Bros. got really big. And dude is, like, literally, like, he is Little Mac. Like, especially mm. at the time, like, he was really, really, like, he was shredded. He was the same size as Little Mac. And uh, he constantly got stopped for pictures. And I was just like, <laughs> he's my friend. That's my friend. I know that guy. That's... I've never my really cosplayed, but I, I would love to at some point. Oh, yeah. I, I used to cosplay a lot more when I was younger, but I just haven't really had the opportunity to between, like, you know, I just haven't been to a convention since before COVID hit, and yeah. also, uh, d cosplaying costs money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I- I also am very big on, like, I think it's so cool, I think everybody should dress as whatever character they want, but if I cosplay as somebody, I would really like to cosplay a JoJo character, mm. and sadly, I'm going to have to become a twink for that to work. I see. Uh, I need to- I need to- <laughs> I don't want to become buff, I just want to become- like a twink so that it works mm -hmm. because i can't play you can't play josuke super duper buff or like you know like super large he's a twink you have to you have to put in the effort <laughs> or at least i want to put in the effort mm -hmm. understandable i just hope i don't like when i get super into going to the gym again i hope i don't accidentally get shredded because that'll ruin <laughs> it and i can't dress up as him i i found it it, it took way too long but i found it <laughs> Oh, this boy. is like, this is like, hold on, how long is this? This is almost like five minutes long. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> oh, I, hmm, this thumbnail, like, has, yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, it, it doesn't get any better when you hold, watch it. Hold on, did this person make all of the main characters, like, siblings by changing their hair color? I believe so, yes. Oh my god, that's kind of genius. But it also kind of leads to problematic things because they're also all like different races. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I, I'm going to need to go down the rabbit hole with these again. Yeah, no. Uh, it's... I'm not going to say it's worth it, but it's definitely uh, an investment you'll be making. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think it's worth it if you get a good chuckle out of it. Yeah, yeah. no, like, like I said, uh, best way to do it, just like, I don't know, get around the couch with, like, your friends. Like, you have to do it, like, on a TV, and you need to start off by watching, like, several Crazy Frog music videos. That creates the vibe. Yeah. Also, uh, Sheck, uh, fuck you for bringing that up. Uh, the Sheck said, what about Mr. Incredible? Because uh, every time somebody has met me at a convention, they've made some sort of comment that I have, like, the jawline of Mr. Incredible. <laughs> and I've never lived that down. <laughs> even fucking Sheck knows about it, and I don't think I met Sheck. I don't so. even know, like, what that means. Like, I I've seen Mr. Incredible. Like, I can make an assumption, but just, like, that is a very specific thing to it's say a, to someone. Yeah, it is. And you know what? You know what? I won't say it's inaccurate, but it is crazy the amount of people that have made that same exact observation that don't know that it's already a thing that has been said to me a bunch of times. Honestly, I only slightly get it. Maybe with the mask. <laughs> Maybe, I guess. I don't know. Sheck, pro mm. Sheck probably has seen my face somewhere. But because I, I do know Sheck a bit. Mm. Uh but yeah, no. Uh, so, S salty. I got the human Shrek, so I feel that. <laughs> I get that too. My my dad looks like a human Shrek. At least I think he looks like human Shrek. 
he argues with me about it. He's like, no, I don't. And I'm like, yes, you fucking do. <laughs> like, you've had multiple discussions about this. Yeah. <laughs> bring, I bring it up all the time. It's like, would you look at that? It's human Shrek. And he's like, I'm never going to visit you ever again. Disowning you. Ugh. Okay, guys. Uh, I think I've sat in this prison cell yeah, with, like, yeah. no air conditioning for long Sorry, enough. Austin. <laughs> no, it's completely fine. I had a fucking uh, fantastic time. I've uh, actually ruined- I've ruined your day by, by enjoying your, your presence and conversation, so <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I know! You're ruining my evil agenda! <laughs> When I like I can't think of like ruining my evil agenda where it's like you know having good time with like making new friends <laughs> without thinking about like Skeletor like I am not nice. <laughs> True, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. We can wrap it. Yeah. Well, I had a great time. We should I've, do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had a fantastic time. Uh, I'm glad that we got to hang out and uh, glad to have streamed it for everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. Uh, I will probably be back doing regular streams either like next week or the week after. I'll figure it out. You'll see it scheduled when I do it. Um, but until then, see y'all later. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.